Welcome to NBA imperialism, and not just any NBA imperialism, the NBA imperialism for all time teams. You'll look at the logos, you got some of the old logos that are from the early 2000s, from the 2010s, from the 90s and 80s and so forth. I just basically picked the ones that I think look the nicest. Now there were a few issues with our last video of NBA all-time teams imperialism. Starting out, there's a few players that are missing from each team. Reggie Miller has not agreed to use his likeness in the game, so we've had to go and use a custom Reggie Miller. And also, MVP, notable personality, Charles Barkley as well, is missing from the Suns and the 76ers. And of course, there is Chris Webber on the Kings, and of course, the Golden State Warriors. So there were a few players that were missing that I wanted to add into this roster. I think there's more that I added, I can't be sure. I also went and retouched up some of the uh, overalls and made sure that Michael Jordan was a Washington Wizard at least one point in this video for NBA imperialism. All that to say, we will be going back and we will be doing NBA imperialism of the all-time teams. And if you don't know how NBA imperialism works, it looks something like this. There's a giant wheel we have here. We spin the wheel, we say, oh, which team do you wanna go on? Oh my God, it looks so much faster now. It's actually working. They must've fixed it in the back end. So you look at a team like the Portland Trailblazers and you go, okay, Portland has a couple options that they can go when you spin the wheel of direction. So if they go north, they can take over the state of Washington. Formerly the Seattle Supersonics used to be here, but now there's nobody there. So if they go there, they will take over the state, add it to the Imperial Army of Portland, and they will get a one overall boost to a player of my choice. Now, if they don't go in this direction and they go, let's say south and take on the Golden State Warriors, they will be a 1v1 winner take all game, just like in March Madness. And whoever wins gets to steal one player from the other team and they get an overall point as well. So they get a little bit of more uh, reward, but at the same time, they have the possibility of being eliminated. So let's say Portland actually loses, then Golden State takes over all of the territory. Portland is eliminated from the imperialism tournament and the Golden State Warriors would grow their army and probably steal somebody like Damien Lillard. If that's too confusing, just stick along. We're gonna have a good time. And we'll go to the wheel to spin it and see who is the first team of NBA imperialism, the first move and that's going to be by the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks are always a fun team to pick because they're in Texas. Three teams are in Texas. There's not really a direction they can go that they can avoid taking on a team. You've got the Oklahoma City Thunder, also formerly known as the Seattle Supersonics, so I kind of merged their logo together. I could have made it look nicer. I'm not very good at Photoshop. You got the Houston Rockets to the south. You got the San Antonio Spurs southeast. You got the Pelicans slash New Orleans Hornets to the east, and you got some empty states. So literally, they could go in any direction. We'll go over to the wheel and we'll say, Dallas, what direction are you gonna go? Spin the wheel, and they are going to go south, but east, southwest? Feels like the Spurs. Feels like the Dallas Mavericks at the San Antonio Spurs. Just the way the arrow works, I could theoretically give them New Mexico, but I think we're gonna go Dallas Mavericks at the San Antonio Spurs. Taking a quick peek at the teams, you have the San Antonio Spurs led by one of the best players in the history, Mr. Fundamentals, Timothy Lee Duncan. You got David Rodman, David Rodman, David Robinson, the Admiral at the center position. Kawhi Leonard, George Gervin was a monster back in his day. Manu Gino Beely, Tony Parker, the two balding Hall of Famers that were in the early 2000s and late teens, or early teens of 2000 as well when they went on those championship runs against the Heat. James Silas, Louis Dampier, Larry Kernan, Sean Elliott, Bruce Bowen, LaMarcus Aldridge, Artis Gilmore, Johnny Moore, and Avery, the coach, Johnson. For the all-time Mavericks team, you've got Dirk Nowitzki, one of the most legendary players in the history of basketball, the best player in the Mavericks organization, and honestly a little underrated, even though he went on and beat the Heat. He's won a championship, he's won an MVP, one of the first stretch bigs in the history of basketball. He got Luka Doncic when I downloaded the roster, I actually had him at a 99 overall. A little ridiculous if you ask me at this point in his career. Rolando Blackman, Kyrie Irving, Mark Aguirre, Derek Harper, Michael Finley, Jim Jackson, I don't know if he's an 87 overall, Jamal Mashburn, an old or young Jason Kidd, take your pick. Same with Steven Nash, Jason Terry, James Donaldson, Brad Davis, and Chris Stops Porzingis. Only an 84 for the Mavericks. His time in the Mavericks was not very glamorous. In the first game of NBA Imperialism 2, the Leaning Towers, the <laughs> They're so tall, their heads are being blocked by all-time team titles. You got Luka Doncic versus Tony Parker, gonna be a good one. Rolando Blackman versus Manu Gino Beely. Mark Aguirre versus Kawhi Leonard. Tim Duncan versus Dirk Nowitzki. And James Donaldson versus David Robinson. Gonna be a fun one. We'll see which team comes out on top. My guess and my money is always going to be on the San Antonio Spurs during these experiments experiments because they just have so much history on their side they had like four hall of famers on the roster playing simultaneously which is why they were such 
a dominant team they could beat a prime LeBron James on the Miami Heat. And Luka Doncic is going to go around, pull up, lay up, easy two-point lead for the Dallas Mavericks. Manu bringing the ball up the other way. Manu is such an underappreciated player. He was just an all-time great. I don't know how else to describe him. He was clutch, solid, smart defender. Y'all remember the block that he got on James Harden in the playoffs from behind? And David Robinson gets his shit rejected. Orlando Blackman coming the other way. What's he going to do with the ball being picked up by Manu? Now Luca has the ball being picked up by the much smaller guard in Tony Parker. Y'all remember Tony went to Charlotte for a season because Kawhi wanted him out? Really weird. And a great pass from Luka Doncic. 4-0 for the underdog Dallas Mavericks. But we'll be hopping into Simcast. We're not going to be watching the entire game. We'll watch the first half of... We'll watch the first few possessions and then we'll watch the last few possessions if it's close. Also, I forgot to mention the team on the attack. The team on the offensive is going to be the away team. The team that's getting attacked will be the home team in NBA imperialism. And this is a complete blowout. Oh my God. Look at the scoreboard. 110 to 90. The Spurs are winning. I thought they were going to win by 40. It's a little bit closer, but I don't think anything good is going to happen here. Spurs up by 20. No need in hopping in. Two minutes left and this game is all but over 143, 122. Disappointing game, but we kind of expected it. For the Mavericks, Luka Doncic had an okay game, 21, 5, and 7. Dirk was close to a triple double. That's a little weird. 21, 9, and 11. Never forget, Rolando Blackman was okay. Jason Kidd, they were solid, but <laughs> the Spurs were just better, man. Manu had 25. David had 25 and 9. Tim Duncan, 26 and 5. Kawhi Leonard, 19, 10, and 5. This was back when he was healthy, back when he was good for about. We'll say two seasons of his prime in San Antonio. George Gervin was good. James Silas, Larry Kernan, and Tony Parker had a really quiet game. Five, two, but 11 assists as the San Antonio Spurs win. And we'll be giving that one overall point to David Robinson as well. He officially joins the 99 overall squad. So you got Tim Duncan, 99, David Robinson, 99. And no surprises, Dirk Nowitzki going to be coming over, but he's not going to be starting. I think he's going to be coming off the bench as the six man, which is bizarre, but that's just how good the front court is for the san antonio spurs and we'll make sure we go over to photoshop i said photoshop and unfortunately dallas after the first game of nba imperialism is gone give san antonio their nice gray give them a logo boost in size as well and only houston is left in the texas area and of course the seattle supersonic thunders are waiting in the wings next team on the wheel is going to be bam spin spin wait i forgot to take it off wait ignore this ignore this nothing is happening i'm sorry i apologize don't it's not the knicks it's not the lakers the dallas mavericks are officially eliminated first team off the wheel as the spinner gets thinner now we will spin the wheel and it looks like the milwaukee bucks are going to be the next team checking out the map and the milwaukee bucks are going to be one of those teams that's also kind of trapped they got the timberwolves to the west they got the bulls to the south they got the pistons to the east Theoretically, the Raptors, I don't think they could fit that, but they could steal this state that certainly is off the top of my head, which is Iowa. Yeah, they could go after Iowa, right? <laughs> anyway, go over to the wheel, spin, spin, spin the win. Which way do you want to go? And it looks like the Milwaukee Bucks are going to be... Uh, that's, that's Detroit, right? Bucks at Pistons, let's do it. Pistons have a long storied history, man. Taking a look at the Pistons roster, they have Isaiah Thomas, and I've played with bringing him down to a 98, but I think just of what he's accomplished, how much of a leader he was for the team, I think you gotta make him a 99 overall. So he's officially part of the 99 overall club. You got Bob Lanier, Joe Dumars, Big Bill Lambeer. They just have such a storied history. Chauncey, Big Game, Billups, Grant Hill, minus the injuries, Ben Wallace, six foot eight center defensive player of the year, Dennis Rodman, Rip Hamilton, Dave Bing, Dave DeBouchier, Jerry Stackhouse, Bailey Howell, Andre Drummond, and Kelly Tripuka as for the Bucks. They're kind of top heavy. You look at the roster. Giannis, of course, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Oscar Robertson, Sidney Moncrief, and then it kind of drops off a little bit. Marquez Johnson, Ray Allen back in his prime, Dot Bob Danrich, Drew Holiday. Who's a 90 overall? I don't know about that roster. Glenn Robinson, Chris Middleton, Michael Red, Terry Cummings is my favorite player. I love Cummings. Vin Baker, Junior Bridgman, Brian Winters. Gonna be a good one here. Oscar Robertson versus Isaiah Thomas, 98 versus 99. Sidney Moncrief versus Joe Dumars, Grant Hill versus Marquez Johnson. Yeah, on his first day to Boucher. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar versus Bob Lanier. Like I said, the Bucks are top heavy. If they can string together a couple wins, they might be able to go on a run here. At the same time, the Pistons have a ton of depth and a ton of history on the side, and they are the home team. Isaiah Thomas bringing the ball up the court, immediately kicks it to Joe Dumars. 
picked up by I think Johnson, pulls up for a midi, misses, and Kareem grabs the rebound. Ton of size there on the Milwaukee Bucks' side. Oscar Robertson playing the point. He's like, what, 6'6", six, 6'5"? Six, six, you got Giannis, you got Kareem. Gonna be a tough team to score on, for, but oh god, Giannis is shooting. Oh no, Giannis can't shoot. Never could, never will. Isaiah Thomas bring the ball up the other way. Gonna run some offense here. Looks like Joe Dumars yet again getting the call. Kicks it to DeBouchier who kicks it to Thomas. Not a lot happening here. Takes the screen, goes and passes it and fumbles the ball. Oscar Robertson bringing the ball up the other way. Still got a zero to zero game. Sidney Moncrief pulls up from, that's not even mid, that's short. And he scores the first points of the bucket. Sidney Moncrief scoring on Joe Dumars. And I think Data Bush here too. Isaiah Thomas bringing the ball up the other way, looking to respond, getting the first points for the Detroit Pistons. Joe Dumars accepts the screen, goes around, and lays it up and misses. I don't know why we're watching this game so long, but Giannis bringing the ball up the other way. Huge size advantage on Isaiah Thomas. If he goes into the post, this is going to be bully ball. This is going to be mismatch, pump fake, pump fake, dribble. Nothing happening. Now he's picked up by the other guy. No, Isaiah Thomas switches back on. Just going to the post, Giannis. Now he gets the ball swatted. Time is running down. Four, three, two, one. And it's Sidney Moncrief has to pull up. Misses. Bob Lanier brings the ball up the other way. But Dumars kicks it to IT once again. The other IT, not that IT. And let's see. Is this play for Grant Hill? Getting a screen there from Lanier. Going to dribble. Going to go around. Going to kick it to the roller. Bob Lanier pump faking, pump faking, laying it up. And he makes it. It is a 2-2 game after... Oof, like two minutes of gameplay. We're going to be hopping into SimCast here. And in the first quarter, the Pistons have a big lead going into the second quarter. A little bit closer of a game back and forth near now into the third quarter. And at the fourth quarter, this might be one of those games that we watch. Bucks versus Pistons. Bucks have a little bit of a lead here. About five minutes left in the game. 97-98. 99-99. Tied up. Back and forth. Tied up. And we'll hop in with about a minute and a half left. 112-107. Why are we looking at Bob Lanier? What did he do? He did this last... <laughs> That was dumb. Ben Wallace on the inbound. Uh, okay. Kicks it to Lanier. There's no shooting on the piston side because all their players were good back in the 90s and early 2000s when the three didn't matter. Ben Wallace definitely cannot shoot. Or dribble, honestly. He was more of the original putback king. I think Robert Williams would be a good player comp. I don't know what this play is. Is it Ben Wallace iso time? Let's go. Ben Wallace pulling up. Shooting the jumper. And of course, he misses. Uh, I don't know who Dandridge is, but he's bringing the ball up the other way. Again, not a historian of the NBA. Just know a little bit about basketball. Try to help spread some knowledge as Oscar Robertson throws it away uselessly. Chauncey Billups bringing the ball up the other way. Crossover, crossing over. Posting up. And he looks like he's going to step out and reset the play. Running a screen. Once again, Ben is Ben playing the small forward or something? Why is he doing so much dribbling? Oh boy, Chauncey has a desperation. Contested three from the corner. Does not make that. Drew Holiday bringing the ball up the court the other way. NBA champion Drew Holiday with Dandridge puts it up. And it is now a seven point game. Desperation time for the Detroit Pistons. Offense has not been smooth. Defense, I don't know what happened there, but Ben Wallace just got caught sleeping. 42 seconds left in this one. Joe Dumars, not Isaiah Thomas is in the game. I don't know why. 99 overall, Isaiah Thomas isn't getting any love, but King Chauncey for three, and he misses. And that is probably going to be game. Buck's just going to dribble out the clock here. Ray Allen with a headband on. Pulls up. Jumper. Misses. Yeah, this one's over. I don't know why I'm watching it still. Let's see what they're going to do. What's the offense? Joe Dumars? Nope. Ben Wallace? Nope. Joe Dumars for three. Bang! It's only a four-point game. That's why we're watching. Now all the starters are officially back in since there's 16 seconds left. And they give it to Giannis for the free throws. Giannis can't shoot. Career what? 60, 70% free throw shooter. And he misses the first one. There's still a chance for this Pistons team. They got the starters back in. Grant Hill. I'm sure Isaiah Thomas, 99 overall, is in the game. And timeout. We'll see what kind of offense the Pistons elect to run here. Isaiah Thomas going to get the ball. This camera angle is terrible. What is happening? I can't see anything. There you go. Debouchier kicks it. Thomas kicks it. Debouchier shoots it. Oh, and he misses. And the Pistons needed that. And that is going to be game. The Detroit Pistons fall 117-113. Isaiah Thomas had a good one. 24 and 12. Chauncey also off the bench. 22 points in 28 minutes. Day Debouchier. 17, 3, and 5. Joe Dumars, not great, not terrible. 16, 7, and 10. And Grant Hill was the only scorer in double 
digits. Just for the Bucks, Ray Allen gave him 19 points, 5 of 8 from the 3-point line. City Moncrief gave you 18. Marquez Johnson gave you 16. Giannis gave you 16, 8, and 5. Bob Danridge, 12, 6, and 6. Oscar, 11, 1, and 10. Bit of a weird stat line for him. And Kareem, only 11 and 10. But they just had a ton of help. Almost everybody scored in double digits as the Bucks do advance. And the young studly Isaiah Thomas is going to be coming over and getting the 99 overall squad growing for this Bucks team. So Giannis is officially 99 overall. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is officially 99 overall. Isaiah Thomas is officially 99 overall. And with the one overall bump, Oscar Robertson, formerly 98, 98 overall, is now part of the 99 overall club as well. Four 99s on this team. I don't know how they're going to make everybody fit. Looks like they want Isaiah Thomas to start and Oscar to come off the bench. A little bit funky. We could theoretically put him in at the shooting guard, but I played with the positions too much in the last one and it kind of messed up some of the results. So we're just going to be keeping that as is. Make sure we go over to the map and tell you that the Milwaukee Bucks advance the Pistons dominated. Get the hell off the wheel. Bam, bam. Milwaukee taking over Northern America. Look at their local grow. They've got the five lakes or four lakes or however many damn lakes are out here in this part of the country. Detroit Pistons gone as the spinner gets thinner. Next team that's going to be on the list. And you know what I forgot to do is take off the teams that have already gone because I don't want to see repeats here in the first round. But we'll do that later as the Denver Nuggets are going to be next on the list. We look at them on the map and we can say, OK, Denver, you are you're kind of in an interesting spot. They get a whole bunch of empty states here that they could take get a free overall point, grow their empire. They got the Jazz immediately to the west of them, got the Sonics Thunder to kind of the southeast of them. We'll see what direction the wheel tells them to go. Go over here, click the wheel and bam. Which way do you want to go? And that looks like it's going to be a free state. That state, yeah, that state is, uh, it's a uh, mm, uh, uh, Kansas. Yeah, totally Kansas. Boom, some like that, some like this. Denver gets a little bit of a logo size bump and make sure that they get their overall point. Just taking a quick peek at their roster. They got Nikola Jokic, 97 overall. Alex English, one of the most underappreciated players in the NBA, 96 overall. Carmelo, I made him a 95 I feel like that's fair because he was so good back in the day in Denver Prime. At the same time, he's not like 99 overall. David Thompson, Dan Isel, Fat Lever, Allen Iverson, an older version of him, Dikembe Matumbo, Byron Beck, Mahmoud, Abdul Raduf, Kiki Vandaway, Antonio McDice. <laughs> I remember him. Chauncey Billups when he was on the Denver Nuggets before he went to New York, right? He was a pack package deal with Carmelo. Jamal Murray, Marcus Camby as well. The one overall boost is going to none other than the two-time, possibly three-time MVP, Nikola Jokic. Next team to go for NBA imperialism taking their turn is the Charlotte Hornets slash Charlotte Bobcats. All right, taking a look at them on the map and their logo. Honestly, I like their Bobcats logo better. I don't know why they went back to the Charlotte Hornets other than history. Bobcats logo was kind of fun. Anyway, talking about their team, they're not very good, but they're going to have uh, what is this, Virginia, they're going to have South Carolina, could take on the Atlanta Hawks, could take on the Vancouver Grizzlies, depending on what way the wheel is going to direct them. Spin, spin, spin the wheel, and they are going, I'll give them South Carolina, that's fine. Like, yes, it's a little boring just filling out the map. The thing is, there's only, what, 30 teams and there's 48 states, so we got to fill in a lot of these empty states give out overall points and then let the players and teams actually play each other so here is charlotte gonna officially unite the carolinas and we'll go over to here and the charlotte hornets take a quick peek at their roster they got kemba walker possibly the best player in the history which is not saying a lot i mean no disrespect to kemba but they just don't have a storied franchise larry johnson was pretty good so was glenn rice and alonzo morning back in his day eddie jones gerald wallace the bobcat legend Derek Coleman, Lamella Ball, already on the list. Muggsy Bogues, all five foot three of him. Baron Davis, Vladi Divac before he, let's see, did he get traded to the Lakers after this? Or the Kings, I forget. Del Curry, father of Steph Curry and Seth Curry. Kendall Gill, PJ Brown, and Steven Jackson. And we'll be giving Kemba Walker that one overall boost. Mr. Smile in 93 overall officially. Pop the Hornets off for round one and let's spin the wheel one more time. Who's going to go next? And it looks like it's the Celtics. Yes. Okay, Celtics often get stuck not being able to play, but they're one of these teams that is in a weird spot because only the Knicks are directly in contact with them. So they got Rhode Island, they got Connecticut, they got Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine that all needs to be filled out. At the same time, they have so much history. They have so much 
talent on their team. Long story short, they don't even need to really play or spin the wheel or get any teams and play any teams and get overall boost because they're already so good. But we'll be spinning the wheel, see which way should they end up. And I don't know if they can go that way, but it's probably just going to end up being Rhode Island here. Small state, but one state equals one state equals one overall point. Boom, boom. The tiniest state in all of America is going to Baston. Hey, park the car. Anyway, going to be giving the one overall boost to somebody. Larry Legend is already 99 overall. No need there. Bill Russell already 99 overall. No need there. So I guess John Havlicek is next up on the list. Going to go up to a 98. Look at the rest of the team. Kevin McHale, the legend himself. Not a great head coach, but a damn good basketball player. Bob Cousy, Kevin Garnett, Jason Tatum somehow made his way onto this team already in 94 overall as well. Bill Sharman, famous for his toilet paper. Dave Cowens, Jojo White, Robert Parrish, Paul Pierce, Kyrie Irving even made his way to this team. Ray Jean Rondo, Jalen Brown, only an 86 overall rounding out the Celtic squad. Okay, spinning the wheel one more time. The next round is going to go to the Brooklyn Nets, also known as the New Jersey Nets. And you go over and look at them on the map. I use their old logo, but they're still in Brooklyn. The Nets are a little bit weird because they're literally a bridge away from the New York Knicks. So I kind of gave them this Southeastern, the main part of New York, if you will. So they're kind of sandwiched. They could take on the Knicks, could take Delaware, could take Connecticut. We'll see which way the arrow wants them to go. Bam. Spin, spin, spin the wheel. Which way do you want to go? And just for the sake of filling out states, I'm going to call that New Hampshire. Nope, New Jersey. I know the East Coast. I'm so smart and intelligent when it comes to East Coastian things. While we're here, let's change up the Brooklyn Nets, like kind of weird off black color to that fun blue that they had back in the New Jersey Nets day. So there you go. New Jersey Nets officially taken back New Jersey. Going to give them an overall boost as well. And Kevin Durant officially joins the 99 overall club with that. Of course, you have Julius serving Dr. J, one of the original Nets. Jason Kidd, when he was still a good basketball player. Brooke Lopez, commonly known as the best Nets player in their short, brief history. Vince Carter was a legend for them. Kyrie Irving, y'all already know. Drazen Petrovic was pretty good. So was Dick Jefferson. Derek Coleman, Kenyon Martin was a beast back in his day. Just a bully. Buck Williams, James Harden didn't really have a great stint out here for the Brooklyn Nets. Kenny the Jet Smith. Nope, that's Kenny Anderson. <laughs> Otis Birdsong and Keith Van Horn rounding them out. Look at that picture. <laughs> I don't know how Keith Van Horn did anything in the NBA list looking at him. All right, pop New Jersey off the wheel and we will be spinning one more time. Next team on the list is going to be the Oklahoma City Thunder slash Seattle Supersonics. Long storied history of their franchise. Go over to them. And we saw them a little bit with the San Antonio Spurs already, but now the Nuggets have taken over north. So if they want to avoid any sort of conflict whatsoever, they got to go east. Otherwise, it's going to be the Spurs or the Nuggets most likely. And we'll spin the wheel, see what is the future of the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I think there's no way around it. That's going to be the Seattle Supersonics slash Oklahoma City Thunder at the San Antonio Spurs. Hey, look at this Oklahoma City Thunder team and you just take the Thunder years, they already have a storied franchise. Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, uh, Serge Ibaka, Steven Adams, Reggie Jackson. You add in that they were the Seattle Supersonics before, Gary Payton, Fred Brown, Ray Allen, Jack Sigma, Sean Klump. There is so much talent on this Thunder squad. Of course, Dennis Johnson, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander, a blooming superstar, Paul George for a season, and now they got all the trade assets that came back for him. Spencer Haywood, Gus Williams, Dale Ellis, James Harden, while he was briefly part of the team, Xavier McDaniel as well, rounding out this Thunder squad. Got a good one here. Gary Payton versus Tony Parker, Ray Allen versus Manu Gino Beely, Kevin Durant versus Kawhi Leonard. Great matchup there. Sean Kemp versus Tim Duncan, Jack Sigma versus David Robinson. Of course, coming off the benches, Dirk Nowitzki and Russell Westbrook. Just a star studded matchup. And this is part of the fun of doing these all time teams, imperialism challenges. But the tip goes to the Admiral, and Tony Parker brings the ball up the other way. The Spurs have a lot less flash to their talent now that they brought in Dirk Nowitzki. He, even he wasn't all that flashy. They're just so solid, fundamentally, of course, having one of the best, if not the best coaches in NBA history in Greg Popovich. Tony Parker going right around David. Robinson draws the foul. I kind of don't want to see this. Just a quick sim cast through the free throws. I want to see this game a little bit more than some of the others. This is just a, a really even matchup. At least it should be in the overalls department. Lots of stars. Ray Allen, 4-3. And he misses. 
Tony Parker bringing the ball up the other way. That would have tied it up here. 11 minutes left in the first quarter. Manu Ginobili takes a funky off-balance layup and he misses. Kevin Durant bringing the ball up the other way. Gary Payton as probably a better point guard than Russell Westbrook was for the Thunder to pair alongside a young Kevin Durant at the time. GP goes right around. Floater misses and Tony Parker brings the ball up the other way. You got Kawhi Leonard, the claw, stepping back. There you go, Kawhi Leonard posting up. Got a Ray Allen on him. That should be a mismatch going to the post. It, I don't know what Tim Duncan is doing. He was just getting in the way. It doesn't matter as Kawhi Leonard hits the fadeaway jumper. Looking a little Michael Jordan-ish there. Kevin Durant bringing the ball up the other way. No stranger to being a stud in the mid-range. Looks like they're just ISO. Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard pulls up for three. Bang! Kevin Durant. And that's why we want to watch these games because the stars come out. But we'll have to hop into Simcast because we are really early into this first round of NBA Imperialism. Got a Taiwan here going into halftime. Just a really close back and forth game. Still back and forth going into the fourth quarter. The Spurs have extended to a little bit of a lead. 30 to 15 third quarter. And now it's a 20 point game. Looks like the Thunder cannot keep up offensively with this fundamentally solid sound San Antonio Spurs squad. Is that enough S's for you as the Spurs do go on to win? David Robinson had a good one, 25 and 11. Tony Parker, 21, 2 and 8. George Gervin gave you 18 and 7. James Silas gave you 14. Ginobili gave you 12, 6 and 9. Nice. Kawhi Leonard, only 12 points, but they did not need all that much help. Tim Duncan, 11 and 9. And of course, Dirk Nowitzki gave you 9 off the bench. As for the losing Thunder, Kevin Durant did okay. 23 points on 18 shots. Not great efficiency, not terrible. Fred Brown was okay. Russell Westbrook gave you 17, 8 and 6 off the bench. Sean Kemp gave you 10, 5, and 5, and the rest of the team just could not compare. Looking at the overalls, I guess Gary Payton is going to go over and be the, I don't know, the backup point guard now for the Spurs. The Spurs are just such a good team already, top to bottom. But Gary Payton, 97 overall, going over, and the one overall boost should go to, we'll give it to Kawhi Leonard. I know Dirk could join the 99 overall squad, but he's kind of a free agent, whereas Kawhi Leonard is homegrown talent up to a 98 Overall, so their squad is starting to look mean. Tim Duncan, David Robinson, Kawhi Leonard, Dirk Nowitzki, Gary Payton, George Gervin, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker. Just a whole bunch of talent on this Spurs team. And they're looking like they're the early favorites for this as well as the Oklahoma City Thunder Sonics are gone. And the Spurs logo continues to grow. Just marching. Houston is the only team left in their way in this southern part of America before San Antonio starts to take over a middle America. And the Oklahoma City Thunder officially eliminated as the spinner gets thinner. Next team that's going to be going in NBA imperialism is the Utah Jazz, it looks like. They really, I try to do some jazz history looking up. They don't have a storied history at all. They kind of have the Stockton Malone days, the Gobert Mitchell days, and then what else do you have? Like Andre Kirilenko, not too much, no offense to the history books and no offense to the Utah Jazz franchise, but we will spin the wheel. Which way are they going to go? They're going directly south. That looks like it's a Jazz Suns matchup. We haven't seen that before. And we'll take our first look at these teams. The Phoenix Suns have Charles Barkley, King Charles, a 98 overall, probably the best player in their franchise history right now. Of course, these NBA finals will probably predict who's going to be a little bit better. Would you take Charles Barkley? Would you take a championship Kevin Durant speaking on Kevin Durant he wasn't in the last roster now he's officially a Phoenix Sun Steven Nash is here 95 overall two-time MVP but honestly a little underappreciated overrated kind of a weird spot where does Steve Nash fall in the pantheons of NBA history Amari Stoudemire was equally a beast back in his day Phoenix especially he was just such a monstrous player his injuries kind of curtailed the end of his career Devin Booker Sean Marion with the greatest jump shot form in the history of basketball Dennis Johnson, Kevin Jansen, Paul Westfall, Walter Davis, Tom Chambers, Jason Kidd, Charlie Scott, Dick Van Arsdale, one of my favorite players in the world. Dick was just so big. He was huge for the teams that he played on. Dan Marjorie as well. Looking at the Jazz roster, they have Carl Malone. Don't let him around your kids. John Stockton, Pistol Pete Maravich, and then more of the more recent players, Donovan Mitchell, Adrian Dantley, Rudy Gobert. A 91 overall. I was interested in kind of playing with that overall but 91 seems about fair he is a multiple time defensive player of the year winner mark eaton andre kirilenko ak-47 carlos boozer gordon hayward one of the more uh weird nba careers we've seen daryl griffith bald as hell deron williams back when he was supposed to be good thurl bailey truck robinson and jeff 
we're gonna check and we got a good one john stockton versus steve nash battle of the white point guards pistol pete maravich versus dem booker adrian daintley versus kevin durant carl malone versus chuck and rudy gobert versus amari stoudemire very similar skill sets talents i don't really know who i would if uh if i had to predict i mean i would take I take the Suns because of Kevin Durant and Charles Barkley, but you cannot sleep on John Stockton and the male man, Adrian Danley, bringing the ball up the court, getting a screen, had an open three, but he's alley-ooping it, sir. Kevin Booker bringing the ball up the other way, kicks it to a Kevin Durant who just goes behind his head and gets the wide open layup for Amari Stoudemire. Quickly a 2-0 lead for the Phoenix Suns. Pistol Pete bringing the ball up the other way, being deed up by Devin Booker, who's no slouch on the defensive end. Grabs the screen, goes around. Is this a layup? It goes, and he misses. Pete Maravich blows the layup, and the Suns bringing the ball up the other way. Charles Barkley doing a little bit of everything. Rebounding, shooting, dribbling, MVP. -E. And Devin Booker going to kick it, and Charles Barkley does get the rebound or the steal or whatever that was. His AK-47 tried to step inside for the pass and missed Pete Maravich bringing the ball up the other way. Nope, not AK-47. That was Pete Maravich. Carl Malone probably has a little bit of a size advantage here in the post. Surprised they're not going to it. John Stockton pulls up for a long two. Not a great shot selection there. Kevin Durant bringing the ball up the other way. Kicks it to Chuck. Who kicks it to Steve Nash? Who kicks it back to Chuck? Barkley too close to the basket. Fades and makes it. And that is a commanding 6-0 lead for the Phoenix Suns. Hopping into Simcast. Holding on to that lead in the first quarter. Got a back and forth game going into the second and the third quarter. Suns still holding on to this lead and they're extending it a little bit. 20 point lead. They dropped 51. They dropped a 51 to 26 third quarter and that'll do it. Doesn't matter how good the Utah Jazz play in the fourth. You can't compete with the 51 point quarter. And balance too. Look at this. Charles Barkley almost had a triple double. 21, 10, and 8. Kevin Durant, 25, 6, and 3 steals. Amari 25 1 1 2 Dennis Johnson 19 and 8 Devin Booker 16 Paul Westfall 16 Kevin Johnson 15 Sean Marion 12 6 and 5 Stevie Nash 11 but then 13 assists every single player on the Suns scored in double figures as for the Jazz Pistol Pete was really good 31 2 and 10 Carl Malone was good 24 7 and 7 John Stockton 22 and 8 and then that's about where the help fell off Carlos Boozer was frying 12 points in 17 minutes Adrian Dantley not too good 10 Four, three, five turnovers. Not good. Rudy Gobert is never good. Donovan Mitchell, six and six. Kind of weird. And AK-47, Mr. Quintuple Five, didn't do all that well. Sad game for the Utah Jazz. And we could take John Stockton or Carl Malone. I'm going to go with the higher overall, 98 John Stockton. I know that he's just going to be end up, he's going to be a backup, but Steve Nash is already here. Is that two overall boost really important? No, I think a little bit of depth would be better it's a tough decision but we're gonna be taking carl malone 98 overall and of course charles barkley sir charles barkley has joined the 99 overall squad with the one overall boost looking like a mean menacing team i don't know i mean they're they're pretty much set like yeah you could get a michael jordan upgrade on a devin booker or a oscar robertson on a steve nash but this this roster has depth size it's competitive i like everything about this phoenix squad so phoenix sun squad wow say that five times fast. phoenix sun squad phoenix sun squad phoenix sun squad. <laughs> <laughs> and utah goes on the offensive and they fall officially eliminated from nba imperialism of the all time teams meanwhile the phoenix suns are starting to grow their empire and like i said suns i mean they're gonna have to compete with the lakers that's always gonna be a problem and the spurs honestly this whole lower west coast part of america is a tough run for teams not named the Lakers, Suns, Spurs. And we'll go ahead and take the Jazz off the wheel. Bam! And the spinner gets thinner. Next team going on the offensive for NBA imperialism is going to be the Chicago Bulls. And I always have problems with the Chicago Bulls in these imperialism videos. I don't know what it is, but 2K Simulation does not love Michael Jordan. And then the rest of their team's history isn't great. You know, Derrick Rose and of course, uh, Dennis Rodman, Scottie Pippen, but... For whatever reason, the Bulls never seem to do all that well in Imperialism. Gonna spin the wheel, and they're going directly east. That looks like a Bulls at Pacers matchup. Looking at these rosters, the Bulls have Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen. I only made him a 97. It's still undecided how great he is comparatively. I mean, his time in Portland wasn't all that good, but his time in Chicago was legendary. Derrick Rose, a prime pre-injury Derrick Rose. 
I think everybody's favorite player when he was playing in the NBA at this time before those injuries just took him out. Artis Gilmore rocking the center position. And of course, Dennis Rodman. No spacing, but no spacing needed. You got Jimmy Buckets coming off the bench. Joe Kim Noah back when he was good. He was an all-star. He was a, I think he may have been a defensive player of the year. Zach Slavine, pretty good player on his own. Jerry Sloan, the coach. Bob Love, Horace Grant, DeMar DeRozan, 89 overall. I mean, he's okay. BJ Armstrong, Tony Kukoc, pivotal to those championship runs. And Reggie Diaz. As for the Pacers, another player who was not in the last video, Reggie Miller. I mean, what he did in the the quality of teams that he carried throughout the playoffs during his tenure going to, I think, Game 7 against Michael Jordan. I mean, Reggie is just one of the greatest players in the history of basketball, the best pacer in the history of basketball, and severely underappreciated because, like Charles Barkley, never won that championship. Paul George is here. He was really good as a pacer, then had that horrible break of his leg and has just never been the same player since then. Jermaine O'Neal was a monster for the Pacers. Not really elsewhere. He was, um, I don't know, he was a bit of a controversial player. Rick Smiths, Mel Daniels, Ron Artest, pre the brawl, pre the malice in the palace, Ron Artest was on the fast track to being a future superstar in this league. George McGinnis, Victor Oladipo might be a bit overrated. Bob Nedelicki, Freddie Lewis, Danny Granger. I remember when it was him versus Paul George. You got Don Busey, Chuck Person, DeMontis Sabonis before the trade, and Roy Hibbert. Theoretically, I think this is a mismatch, but you never know. Derrick Rose versus Don Busey. Michael Jordan versus Reggie Miller going to be a fun one. Scottie Pippen versus Paul George. Also a great matchup of two-way guys. Dennis Rodman versus Jermaine O'Neal and Artis Gilmore versus Rick Smith. A lot of old players, a lot of current players, a lot of legendary players. But here we have it, the all-time teams. Don't know why that took so long to load, but Bulls at the Pacers. NBA imperialism of the all time and the tip goes to Derek Rose bringing the ball up the court and he's being picked up by I forget his name Busey and this is a really slow developing play just purely Derek Rose eye swing stepping back and he makes the first bucket of the game a long two most inefficient shot in the NBA but if it goes in it goes in and we'll see how good Reggie Miller is in Simcast hopefully he can get up a couple shots and there you go. Speak of the devil. Wide open three. And he missed. Wow. Reggie Miller choking on the three-pointer. Hopefully his ratings are okay. Because this is a creative player. It's not the uh, NBA 2K official roster. Because like I said, Reggie Miller not in the game. Derrick Rose just being a complete ball hog. Stepping back. Stepping back. Floater. And missing. Not great offense from the Bulls. As for the Pacers. Got a wide open three-pointer in the corner for that first shot of the game. The best shot in the NBA. I'd love to see Reggie going one-on-one. -on -one. I swing up against Michael Jordan. Don't know what this play is either, but it looks like they're going to Jermaine O'Neal. Got Scotty Pippen d him up. Not a great matchup, if you ask me. And it looks like Busey's going to have to force some up here. One second left on the shot clock. And he misses. No surprises. Scotty Pippen bringing the ball up the other way. Bulls have numbers. Derek Rose kicks it. Jordan says, settle down. I'm going to take PG-13 on my own. Grab the screen. Grab the screen. Grab the screen, grab the other screen, another step back to an MJ, the GOAT, misses his first shot of the game. Kind of a low scoring, ugly game here, but this is what 90s basketball was all about. Ugly, low scoring, long twos, inefficient shot making, and not a lot of player movement. Paul George open for three, and so, oh my gosh, he misses two. I thought he was going to splash that for sure. PG-13, known for his three point prowess. Derrick Rose being picked up by Reggie Miller. Oh my god, shimmy, shake. Nothing going on. Three in the key. Passes to a cutting Dennis Rodman who blows the layup. Still 2-0 to zero here. Two minutes into this one. Going to be a low scoring contest. Paul George bringing the ball up the other way. Being picked up by Michael Jordan. You got Rick Smith on Derrick Rose. Should be a mismatch, but he picks up his dribble. And here we go. Roland Smith and he gets fouled by Derrick Rose. We're not going to be watching free throws. We'll just hop right into Simcast. Battle of the Eastern Conference. Bulls jump out to a huge lead here going into halftime. Not a tremendous lead, 20, 15 points. No lead is safe in NBA 2K23, but it looks like the Bulls are going to continue to stomp and march as the Pacers fall to Goat Jordan and the rest of the Chicago Bulls. Reggie Miller had a good one, 25, 3, and 10. Bob Nedelicki was 16 points in 17 minutes. Paul George gave you 14. Jermaine O'Neal gave you 14. Not enough rebounding, though. And Rick Smith's only with 12 points. Not great from, wow, Ron Artest gave you a big old zero, a nothing burger. That's not going to win you a lot of games. Michael Jordan had a good one. 32 points on 19 shots. High efficiency. Derrick Rose, 19 and 11. Art Gilmore gave you 18 and 12. 
Scotty Pippen, 14, 9, 8, and 5 blocks. Bob Love gave you a 12. Jimmy Buckets gave you a 10, 5, 3, 3, 3. Joakim Noah gave you 8, 2, and 5. Weird stat line from him, but he was Draymond Green before Draymond Green. Zach Levine and Dennis Rodman gave you 0, 2, and 4. Not a great stat line from Dennis Rodman, but a win is a win as the Bulls advance. And Reggie Miller being four overalls higher than the next best player in the Pacers is going to be coming over 98 overall. There's just a lot of logjam at this forward wing position. I guess theoretically you could move Scottie Pippen to the four, play Mike or Reggie at the three, and then Derrick Rose at the two. They need, this is a team that needs, you know, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Oscar Robertson coming over and filling up that point guard and center role respectively. But Michael, Jeffrey Jordan, already a 99 overall. So we'll be giving this one overall boost to Scott. It's now officially a 98 overall. And as always going into Photoshop and saying, thank you, Indiana, for everything that you have done for this team, but you are officially gone. Get off my map. Bulls burnt red continues to spread as their logo gets just a little bit bigger. Gonna try to take over middle America here. And the Pacers officially eliminated off the wheel as the spinner gets thinner. Next team on the list is going to be the Phil. 76ers said that in the most manly way I could and first of all I love the 76er logo just everything about it screams Allen Iverson street ball there was just so much fun and hype around this team made the finals never stood a chance but 76ers always going to be in our memories as one of the best teams in the NBA look at them they're going to have to play a whole bunch of teams thank god they have a ton of good players and this looks to be 76ers at Wizards right Right, because we go to we go here. You could say like right here they could take West Virginia, but Philadelphia is more hereish. Wizards are just kind of waiting. I could fill out what is this Delaware, right? Not looking at a map right now to tell. You. Yeah, Delaware. We could fill out Delaware theoretically, and that's what I'm gonna do. Yep. So Wizards, you need to move a little bit while we fill this out for your Philadelphia 76ers. Like I said, a little bit of busy work. Whenever we do these imperialism videos, we need to just fill out some of these empty states. So Philadelphia still rocking the old blue, gonna be taking over Delaware. You got the Wizards with Michael Jordan and peeking at this Philadelphia 76ers squad, just another team that has no use with all of this talent. There's no need for them to just arbitrarily play other teams when they can get free overall points. Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain, 99 overall, just a generational player, historical player, possibly the best statistical player in the history of basketball. Joe L. Embiid is here, but because he's a center, I'm gonna give the one overall boost to Dr. J, bring him up to a 98 overall just because there's so much big man depth already on this all-time team. Julius Irving now a 98, small forward. Joel Embiid, Moses Malone, Allen, the answer, Iverson, everybody's favorite player, 96 overall. Chuck was in Philly for a few years. Dolph Shays, Hal Greer, Billy Cunningham, great history here. James Harden, somewhat a different version of his Houston Rockets, James Harden self. Bobby Jones, Andre Iguodala, Ben Simmons somehow made his way on this team. George McGinnis and Doug Collins, not the head coach. And just pop the Philadelphia 76ers off this wheel as it looks like we're about halfway through the first round of every team getting their chance in NBA imperialism. The Memphis Grizzlies are going to be next up on the list. Go ahead and take a peek at what the Grizzlies have in store for them. They got the Bobcats to the uh, east of them and then a whole bunch of empty states everywhere could possibly theoretically take on the Atlanta Hawks. Seems unlikely and let's spin the wheel. Spin, spin, spin to win. Which way do you want to go? That is going to be Northwest. I feel like this is a Missouri play, right? Missouri, yeah, that's the one with the funny little tail there. That's a Missouri play, right? Arrow, bam, let's do it. And don't, <laughs> don't worry, the irony is not lost on me that the Vancouver Grizzlies are still in Tennessee. I just love this old Grizzlies logo. There was some, you know, fiery, visceral about the old Grizzlies with the bear and Mike Conley. No, this was uh, Mike Bibby, Jason Williams days. Their logo was just so much fun. Anyway, going to the Grizzlies, Marcus Saul is the highest overall player. They have a bunch of really good grit and grind players, not generational carrying you to a championship team players, but Marcus Saul, best player I would say in the Grizzlies franchise, gonna get the one overall boost. John ja Morant has the potential, but we just need to see consistently and make sure that he stays healthy. Zach Randolph was great for them. Pau Gasol before he got traded to the Lakers. Memphis Mike was just a beast in his day. Tony Allen, probably top five defender of all time. 
as far as the wing sort of guard position is concerned. Sharif Abdul Rahim was great. Shane Battier played in the league forever. Mike Bibby pre Kings days. White Chocolate. Jason Williams, the greatest street ball player ever. Rudy Gay was pretty good. Desmond Bain, going to see where he falls or ends up once his career is over. Bryant Reeves, Mike Miller, Jaron Jackson Jr. as well going to be on this team. Next team going on the offensive spinning is the Minnesota Timberwolves. And they're another team that's one of those small market teams. Not a ton of great players, but of course the great ones you do know. Anthony Edwards looks to be like a future superstar. Kevin Garnett and Kevin Love on the team as well. What direction is Memphis? Nope, Minnesota going to go. They could take on Toronto. They could take on the Bucks, And there's a whole bunch of empty states for them to take as well. And I think I'm going to end up giving them Iowa. Just makes too much sense to me. There's a bunch of empty space there. So fill that out. Bam. Let their logo grow a little bit. The imperialistic empire of Minnesota. Minnesota. Going to get a one overall boost. And we'll be officially bringing Kevin Garnett into the 99 overall club. Looking at their roster. KG was great. Kevin Love. Statistically was great. Impactfully. Not so much. They had a ton of losing seasons with him. Is the blame more on him? Is it on the fact that the team is impossibly poorly constructed ever since they were created? Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, I just moved him back to center position because that was his natural position before Rudy Gobert came over. Speaking of Rudy Gobert, don't know what's wrong with his eye in this picture. Sam Cassell, one of the ugliest men I've ever seen. Wally Zerbiak, uh, Colin Tyrese Halliburton, a scrub. Irony is not lost on me. Tom Gugliotta, Anthony Edwards, just having a great career at this point. Stefan Marbury was super good. Jimmy Butler here for one season. Terrell Brandon, Ricky Rubio, Doug West, Christian Leitner, and of course, former number one overall pick who got traded for Kevin Love and Andrew Wiggins. All right, we're just cruising through the round one here. Only a few games that we played to this point, and we're going to spin the wheel to see that the Los Angeles Clippers are playing, and there's just no way around it for this Clipper squad. They got to go through the Lakers, and there's never a chance that they win in these all-time games. Clippers at Lakers. Taking a peek at these rosters, you got Kawhi Leonard. If only he could stay healthy. When you go in to like the uh, the character creator and you're like, all right, I want to create the best possible player ever. I want him to be locked down on defense, have crazy long arms, have a crazy nice touch, be good from long range, be good from the three, be good from mid, still be athletic. Kawhi Leonard is by all accounts the perfect NBA player. The problem is he just cannot stay healthy. He is the knees of an 80 year old man. He is the knees of Riley Reed. He just cannot keep those boys healthy. You got big, big Bob McAdoo as the starting center. Just one of the better players in the NBA. He's been on a lot of teams, but he's been really good everywhere he went. Cliff Paul had his, uh, I guess, second career in Los Angeles because he had the Hornets. And then he went to the Clippers and then he went to the Rockets. And now he's on the Suns. Had that one season on the Thunder. Cliff Paul kind of been around the league quite a bit. Elton Brand before he became GM of the 76ers. World we'll be free. Blake Griffin. Paul George. Ugh, same issue as Kawhi Leonard. Ron Harper, Danny Manning, DeAndre Jordan. I still remember that Mavericks, I don't even know what you call it, free agency where DJ was supposed to go to the Mavericks and then they locked him in a room and they were like, no, you're not going. And then he signed with the Clippers and then they regretted it. Ugh. The NBA was wild back in the day. Norm Nixon, Chris Kamen, look at his hair. Oh my gosh. Corey Maggetti, haven't heard that name in a while. Trez Harrell and Patrick Beverly rounding it out. I don't think they're, they should be on this list of best all-time Clippers, but they're just really memorable high effort, high energy players. As for the Los Angeles Lakers, this is going to be a blowout. You got Magic Johnson, Irvin Magic, look at his smile, Johnson, Jerry, the logo West, ironically on the Clippers staff nowadays, Kobe Bean Bryant, may he rest in peace, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Shaquille O'Neal, Will Chambers, so many 99 overalls, and then LeBron James. I actually moved him down to a 98 because I don't think he's been a 99 the same way he was in Miami and Cleveland as he has been for the Lakers. That doesn't mean he hasn't been good because he is still probably top five player in the NBA right now. Given his age, Elgin Baylor, James Worthy, the original George Mike. And look at those glasses. Good Lord. He looks like he should be doing TPS reports. Anthony Davis, the brow. If only he could have stayed healthy throughout his career. Jamal Wilkes Booth, Pau Gasol. And then the last two players, they had Austin Reeves here at like an 89 overall. So whoever made this roster is a Laker fan, but I put in the Go Caruso and Austin Reeves to officially cheerlead this Lakers squad. You know your team is too good when guys like Magic Johnson and LeBron James 
are they not starting or coming off the bench or there's six man like where's kareem oh he's behind shack i mean that's how good this lakers historical squad is but you got cliff paul versus jerry west paul george versus kobe bryant Kawhi Leonard versus lebron james elton brand versus anthony davis and big bob mcadoo versus shaquille o'neal i'm expecting a 40 point blowout lakers are the home team lakers are the better team lakers have so many 99 overalls but you never know in 2k simulation tip of course goes to the purple and gold and we'll see what the lakers have in store for the clippers significant size disparity cliff paul versus jerry west not great but uh you know cliff paul is a former defensive player not defensive player of the year but i think he was all defensive first team for the guard position he was a great defender he's solid thick crafty athletic kind of Allen iverson-esque he can just read passing lanes great and he's not gonna back down to nobody and we'll see how this possession plays. Really boring start to this one as Cliff Paul goes around the screen, goes around Anthony Davis and gets two points the easy way. Don't know what happened there. Anthony Davis caught flat footed. Pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty horrible defense from the Los Angeles Lakers to start this one. And this might be one of the few chances that the, uh, that the Lakers have to lose because they don't have anybody from other teams yet. This is the first game. It's a one game winner take all tournament as Jerry West just splashes from three. Just splashing it like it's nothing. If the Clippers can get a little bit lucky here, pull off the upset, that's probably this or the final game of NBA Imperialism are the only chances I see of the Lakers losing this one. Paul George versus Kobe Bryant, definite mismatch. Elton Brand versus Anthony Davis, mismatch. LeBron James versus Kawhi Leonard. About as even as it gets, Kawhi pulls up for a long two, contested, and misses. Anthony Davis rebounds the ball, kicks it up to Jerry West, who's bringing the ball up the other way, kicks it to a LeBron James, being deed up by former defensive stud, former great player. Too bad he's not anymore. Cliff Paul completely lost in this one, and Jerry West pulls up for three, misses, but AD on the glass, puts it back up, and he misses. Just saying, all it takes is a little luck. One game, winner, take all tournament. Cliff Paul being picked up by LeBron James. They're supposed to be friends. Don't know what this possession is. The Clippers' offense is ugly, stagnant. And that's a double dribble, isn't it? Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Cliff Paul passes. Bob McAdoo blocked. Shaquille O'Neal says, get that shit out of here. LeBron James bringing the ball up the other way, being picked up by a nine inches shorter Cliff Paul, and he picks up the foul. We're just going to hop into SimCast, unfortunately, as it looks like the Lakers are actually losing here going into halftime. Got a back and forth, low scoring contest. Clippers have a little bit of a lead here going into the fourth quarter. A lot more competitive than I would have thought, and it looks like the Clippers are leading. Wow, okay. Five point game, two and a half minutes left. Was not expecting this at all. Like I said, you get a little bit lucky in NBA imperialism and you can pull off the upset. We will see how this one plays out. Cliff Paul does get the rebound being picked up by Magic Johnson. Another size mismatch for the Clippers. Bob McAdoo trying to go around Will Chamberlain, not gonna find any space and he's running out of bounds, hitting the invisible wall, plays it up, gets blocked. That was a horrible possession. And just look at the size for the Lakers. They got Kobe Bryant. They got, I don't know who's in the corner there. Kobe just pulling up long two contested misses. Elton Brand kicks it up to Paul George. You got Kareem, you got Wilt, you got Magic, you got Kobe, and you got, I still don't know who number 22 is. Probably one of the famous players that I should know, but don't. Anyway, Paul George uh, had an open lane for a layup and instead he goes up for a jumper. Not great offense from the Clippers. Not great offense from either team. Pulling up for three is Kobe, missing is Kobe. Kobe isn't a great three-point shooter. He's just clutch. He's just MJ-esque. Everybody loves Kobe's game. Not so much if you're playing on his team, but Cliff Paul is open here. Kicks it to a Paul George being picked up by the aforementioned Kobe Bryant. Dribbling, trying to find some space. Goes up, gets the foul, almost hits the and one. And the Clippers looking to extend this lead. I don't know if anybody had this in their bingo cards, but the upset is real. The upset is alive for Clippers, Lakers, NBA all-time imperialism. Look at the size mismatch. And Shaq has the ball, getting the double team. Kawhi Leonard comes over. Don't know what's happening. Shaq gets his shit rejected. Bob McAdoo says, get that shit out of here. Woo! Wow, that might have been a goal 10, but regardless, a block is as a block does. And Shaq on the inbound. Magic Johnson with a huge hide advantage against Cliff Ball, dribbling around him. Another play going into the post for Shaq. Going to try this again. Double comes over from Kawhi Shaq. Puts it up, misses, gets his own rebound, misses again, gets his own rebound. And Elton Brand snags it. Cliff Paul coming the other way. One minute left, seven point game for the Lakers. They need a stop and a score bad. Cliff Paul running the offense. 
trying to pump fake, doesn't have anywhere to go, kicks it out to a Paul George, and it's just ISO PG on Kobe. Seven seconds left on the shot clock, kicks it to a Cliff Paul, says bail me out. Screen gets set, Cliff Paul has a three, didn't take it, now he's got a contested ugly three. That misses, Anthony Davis coming the other way. Magic Johnson running the shock troops, 40 seconds left in this one, seven point deficit still. And Magic tries to alley-oop it in the half court set. The AI for 2K is broken, Paul George going. Being picked up, Kobe play, plays great defense, but time is ticking on this Lakers squad. Kawhi Leonard goes up and misses. Lakers need a score bad. 22 seconds left in this one. Shot clock, game clock, effectively the same. LeBron for three. And LeBron James misses. The LA Clippers stun, upset the Los Angeles Lakers all-time team. Magic, Kareem, Shaq, Wilt, AD, LeBron, Kobe, not enough as the Clippers pull off the huge underdog win. Cliff Paul and the troops upset. What a wild game. Got to look at this. Bob McAdoo had the game of his career. 31-6-7 on Shaq. Two blocks against much better centers in Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. No offense to Bob McAdoo, but he's not Shaq. He's not Kareem. He's not Wilt. Elton Brand as well. 19-13 game for him. Cliff Paul, 16-4-11. Three steals. Danny Manning gave you 16 off the bench in 21 minutes. Kawhi Leonard had a quiet game, 10-7-2. Blake Griffin gave you 10-7. Paul George gave you 9-5. What happened to the Lakers? Nobody came to play. Jerry West gave you a 17, fine and seven. That's good, not good enough. Magic, 17, five and six. Kobe Bryant only gave you 15 on 14 shots. Shaq gave you 14 and 12. Elgin Baylor gave you 12. Anthony Davis, 11 and 10. Everybody across the board disappointed and LeBron didn't even break 10 points. In this one for the first time in his career wilt only gave you eight six and four what are these numbers and i cannot believe i'm saying this but the lakers all-time team is officially losing as the los angeles clippers advance the lakers gone and out from the basement come the la clippers and i did the map first because i don't actually know who should get the overall boost and who should be on this new look team so they don't have a small forward no, they do. Kawhi Leonard. They don't really have a shooting guard and a power forward. Shooting guard, power forward would be what we're looking for from the Lakers. Meanwhile, the Lakers are just stacked and overloaded with 99 overalls. So we could take Kobe. We could take him. I think Anthony Davis or James Worthy would be the power forward. We could take LeBron, bump him up to the power forward. But I think what we're going to do is take Kobe, Bean, Bryant, and put him on the Clippers. I know that sounds blasphemous. That sounds like something made out of a children's book. But Kobe Bryant, officially 99 overall, Los Angeles Clipper. Kawhi Leonard going to get the one overall boost. Looks weird, looks bizarre, but this is your Los Angeles Lakers with Kobe Bryant leading the way. They still need a lot of work. I honestly don't know how they performed that upset, but the Lakers had an off night. And that's what happens in NBA imperialism. One game, winner take all. Anything can happen. Who would have thunk and the Los Angeles Lakers get the hell off my wheel as the spinner gets thinner. Next team on the offensive is going to be the Houston Rockets. And they have a really good team as far as the 2K all-time teams is concerned. Their positioning isn't great. They're going to have to go through the New Orleans Hornet Pelicans. They're going to have to go through the Spurs. And they're going to have to go through the Spurs. <laughs> it's uh, The Spurs are going to... They're going to be a tough matchup. Let's just say that. Spin the wheel, and it's going to be Rockets at the Spurs. No other way around it. Taking a quick peek at this Rockets team. They got Hakeem, the dream, Elijah one. Another guy I played with putting at a 99 overall. I think I settled at a 98. I just don't know if he qualifies with the other 99s. He won that one championship, but he kind of won because Michael Jordan was gone for those years. James Harden, 96 overall. MVP James Harden, 40 points per game. James Harden, foul, Baton, Hayton, James Harden. Moses Malone was great for them as well. And of course, who can forget Yao Ming? Look at that devilish smile. Put some horns on him and he's an evil man. Calvin Murphy was a, a revelation in the all-time imperialism last time. He was just studly for them. Only a 93 overall, but plays great. Tracy McGrady, T-Mac, 13 points in, what, 8 seconds. Clyde, the Glad, Drexler, Rudy Tomjanovich, Cliff Paul, Russell Westbrook, Ralph Sampson, Elvin Hayes, Steve Francis, Kenny Smith, 
Otis Thorpe, they just have so much talent on this squad. Here we are, Rockets at the Spurs. And I think last time the Rockets actually did the upset against the San Antonio Spurs. Spurs are my early season favorites, especially with the fact that the Lakers are gone. But you look at it, Calvin Murphy versus Gary Payton should be a mismatch, but Calvin Murphy played great in simulation. James Harden versus Manu Gino Beely, battle of the left-handeds. Rudy Tomjanovic versus Kawhi Leonard definitely goes to the claw. And then you got the 99 overall, Tim Duncan versus Elvin Hayes. Oof, and Moses Malone versus David Robinson. Not too bad. David Robinson, though, does have a legit seven feet on his size. I think Moses Malone is more 6'10", 6'11". And the tip goes to the home team, San Antonio Spurs. Back for, I guess, their third edition of this game. They've been playing and playing and playing. Manu Ginobili doesn't even have hair at this point and really slow developing play but Tim Duncan gets the ball gonna get it stripped that was embarrassing and that's a good start for the Houston Rockets grab a turnover on the first possession Tomjanovic being picked up by one of the best defenders in the league and here is James Harden being picked up by Manu Ginobili that's just, that's such a fun matchup even when Manu was a million years old when they met officially it's still just a great you know, 1v1 situation there as we do get the miss for the Rockets. Spurs bringing the ball up the other way. And anything good happening? I don't know what that sentence was, but here we have a little bit of a mismatch. Gary Payton, Moses Malone, step back. Ah, misses. Everybody misses. Every time we go into some cast, it's missed. James Harden just jacks up a three for no reason. He was open and he misses. And we got one of those epic 0-0 zero to zero ball games. There's been like five possessions. And now Manu's jacking it and he splashes. He does what James Harden cannot, and that is jack it successfully. But you know what? We're just going to go to Sivgas because of that. And after the first quarter is like a back and forth game here, going into halftime with about a little bit of a lead for the Spurs. Spurs looking to extend this lead. Rockets looking to take it right back going into the fourth. And now the Rockets have a lead. This is going to be one of those games we hop in. Battle of the Texas teams. Battle of, I don't even know who would be considered president or what, what, what else is there? Governors and mayors. Oh, boy. Here we have a five-point lead, 118-113 for the Rockets. And Manu's bringing the ball up. Indeed up by James Harden. Is this an ISO? Gary Payton versus James Harden? Okay, somehow he drew a foul out of that. And the Spurs with a five-point deficit going to the free throw line. Gary Payton, five steals, but only 12 points up to this point. And what a lineup. Moses Malone, Hakeem Olajuwon, Yao Ming. That the Rockets were running too much <laughs> size, not enough. Shooting Dirk is in for Tim Duncan. I'm wondering if Tim Duncan fouled out. And Kawhi Leonard does sub in. James Harden, though, makes an easy two-point jumper in the lane. That'll work. Still a five-point game. 121-15. Two minutes left. Spurs call a timeout. Money on the inbound. Kicks it to Peyton. Being picked up by a significantly smaller Calvin Murphy. I always say he plays better in simulation than he does reflecting his overall. And his size. Dirk with the step back. That should be money. And it is three-point game. Dirk. King of the mid-range originally. His jumpers, those rainbow floaters that he would take, not floaters, but just the jump shots that would launch 30 feet in the air was beautiful. It was precision. The net would always swish. I hated Dirk and I loved Dirk because I had to root against him. My team would always lose to him in the playoffs as James Harden posts up against Manu. Kind of a weird matchup here. I think the AI is broken. Nothing is happening. They're just still stationary. If you don't like this, you don't like NBA basketball. James posting up, jumps, and Manu moves out of the way on a completely stationary offensive player he just said oh please please sir will you have this open jumper back up to a five point lead gary payton looking to run the shot troops and dirk Nowitzki makes it once again this time hand in his face it doesn't matter he's seven feet one and you are cooked well done back to a three point deficit one minute 20 seconds left in this one james harden rocking the point guard position i guess for the rockets being picked up once again by Manu Ginobili. Grabs the screen, steps back, contested, and he misses Dirk with the high-flying rebound. Not really high-flying, more like low jumping, but it doesn't matter. Ed Floater, miss. David Robinson on the glass. Puts it back up, gets fouled, doesn't matter. Puts it back up again, and there you have it. One-point lead. The Spurs are rallying. The Admiral unstoppable on the offensive glass. Alvin Murphy looking to respond, pulling off the second major upset of this one. Kicking it once again to James Harden operating out of the post. Don't like this contested jumper, but it goes in. James Harden is clutch. Confirmed 35 points for this game. I don't know why it says he has three points in the mid-range. That's literally impossible. 
but <laughs> what it 2k is is 2k does going back to dirk out of the post it looks like this is a 1990s matchup and dirk kisses it off the glass he is automatic right now okay well, I assume we'll be watching James Harden go to the post as well because that's where he operates best. And he alley-oops it. Kawhi Leonard sniffs it out. Spurs looking to take the lead. 30 seconds left in this one. One point game. Who are they going to go to? And they go to the Admiral. Who's open? Calvin Murphy. Too little. Too late. Spurs take the one point lead. I don't know what's going on with this fan in the front row, but he was going crazy. 24 seconds left in this one. One point game. Are the Rockets going to dribble out the clock or they're going to try to get their score early? Going to James Harden in the post again. Bad idea. Does it work? Miss. And Dirk once again grabs the rebound. Manu going to the free throw line. And now the Rockets are starting to look a little bit desperate. No timeouts. Going to be down probably by three after these free throws from Manu. Ginobili. And the second one is up. And in three point lead, Spurs fought back. It was kind of what we were expecting. The fact that the Rockets were even leading, let alone close. Rudy Tamjanovic for three. And that's game. Bad possession there to close this one out as the Rockets fall. I was going to say, the fact that the Rockets were even close in this one is a testament to how good or how lucky they were this one. But David Robinson, 25 and 8, 1 1 2 1. Dirk Nowitzki was hugely clutch. The stats don't show it, but he was a monster. Tim Duncan, 19 and 18. Wow. Only four fouls, five fouls. Don't know why he wasn't playing. He's a 99 overall, but it looks like the move paid off for head coach Greg Popovich. George Gervin was okay, 16 and 5. Gary Payton gave you a 15 and 16. Manu gave you 11 and 9. Kawhi gave you 10. Great production from the depth, depth other than James Silas. So As for the Rockets, James Harden was unreal, 35, 6 and 9. Nice. Hakeem, the dream was okay, 18 and 4 for him. Moses Malone gave you a quiet 13 and 10. Clyde Drexler, only 13. Yao Ming, 12. Calvin Murphy, 10, 2, and 9. I talked him up, and he played like trash. 5 of 12 from the field. T-Mac, kind of a, a nothing. Rudy Tomjanovic, 7 and 6. Not a great game from him as well. Good game, but the Rockets ultimately fall. And this is another one of those incidents where the 98 overall, I'm not going to bring over to the new team because James Harden fits a little bit better. So you look at the Spurs roster. They already have De David Robinson. They already have Tim Duncan, who can moonlight as a center. And on top of that, now they have Dirk Nowitzki as well. So let's go ahead and get some guard depth. Not, right now, Manu Ginobili, 94 overall, comes off the bench anyway. And we will flip him out for, I don't know, Bruce Owen. So the Spurs' new roster is going to look like Gary Payton, James Harden, Kawhi Leonard, Tim Duncan, David Robinson, and off the bench, Dirk Nowitzki. They are now the winners of, what, three games in a row. The Spurs are rolling. And like I said, they are my favorites to win this whole damn thing. Rockets, their fun old school logo, gone. And we'll go ahead and give the Spurs a little more. What is this, gray-ish? And they are taking over all of Texas. They're ready to branch out. Are they going to go left? Are they going to go right? Are they going to go east? Are they going to go west? The Spurs are ready to take over America. And with the Lakers gone, honestly, unless there's any major upsets, I would say probably the Celtics are the best team to get in their way. We will go over to the wheel. And unfortunately, who do they play? The Rockets. Get the hell off my wheel as the spinner gets thinner next team in this round one is the sacramento kings the kings are always in a precarious spot when you look at this you go to their map you say all right they got the warriors to basically north or west them you have formerly the lakers now it's the clippers who would have thought to the south and then they have nevada but eventually they got to run into the phoenix suns kings not ideal but let's go ahead and spin the wheel and they are going to nevada easy money gambling is legal brothels are legal and the kings grow look at this logo bump for them officially out of sacramento and the central valley and their overall boost is going to go to um, i mean let's look at this king's team first of all oscar robertson when they were the manchester royals i want to say is their highest overall player and i added chris weber into this lineup because he wasn't in 2k23 i don't know why jerry lucas right behind him 95 overall mitch richmond was really good in his prime tiny nate archibald boogie cousins wayne Embry, and then you have the rest of the 2000 squad vladi divak Peja stoyakovich mike bibby bobby jackson should be in here somewhere otis birdsong the current De'Aaron fox who is having an incredible season so is demonts bonus eddie johnson and doug christie defensive stopper but officially joining the 99 overall squad is Oscar Robertson. Pop the Kings off and there's only a few teams left to close out the first round of NBA imperialism. The other California team, the Golden State Warriors, is going to have a go at it. 
and we go ahead and check them out on the map right next to Sacramento. They're going to take on somebody. They don't have a choice. Best case scenario, they take on the Blazers, but let's see what the Wheel of Fortune has in store for them. Bam. Spin, spin, spin to win. Which way do you want? That's the Kings. Yeah, that's just, that's the Kings. Taking a quick peek at this Warriors roster, and I was an idiot. Thank you guys for pointing that out in the last all-time video for imperialism. Wilt Chamberlain was on the Philadelphia Warriors of these teams in the 50s. I'm not going to remember. I just, I'm sorry. I'm telling you right now, I wasn't born in 1950. You're going to have to live with that. Steph Curry, two-time unanimous MVP, four-time champion. Kevin Durant, I only have as a 97 because of his short tenure with the Warriors. I know he was at this time better than uh, Steph Curry is. I think now you might have an argument for Steph Curry just seeing how he transformed the... Anyway, that's always been a discussion. It'll be a discussion as old as time itself. Rick Barry was a beast in his day. I don't know what this face is. He looks like a like a scary middle-aged housewife. What is going on? Paul Reason, pretty good. And Chris Mullen. Then you have Clay Thompson, Killer Clay, two-way Killer Clay, Nate Thurman, Baron Davis, Draymond Green, only a 91 overall. And a young Chris Webber at this time. That doesn't look like Chris Webber at all. Tim Hardaway. I guess Tim Hardaway Sr. Sleepy Floyd. Jason Richardson in those fun early 2000s days. And Purvis Short. And generally, I would expect that the uh, Warriors should win this one. You know, Steph Curry versus Oscar Robertson. That's about a push. Clay Thompson versus Mitch Richmond. Rick Barry versus Peja. Chris Webber versus Draymond Green is the one aspect where the Kings are definitely better. And then Wilt Chamberlain versus Boogie Cousins. Woof. Like, I know Boogie can put it up offensively, but... Two-way, there's none better than Wilt the Stilt, 99 overall. And the tip does go to the 99 overall Wilt Chamberlain as the Warriors bring the ball up the court. Sacramento is the home team, so you can hang your hat on that. Didn't work out for the Lakers. I, I still can't believe the Lakers lost in round one. Steph Curry almost pulls up for three. Wilt has a little on him. Killer Clay for three. Bang. First three is automatic for Clay Thompson. And the Kings looking to respond the other way. If this is a game of threes, the Warriors are definitely going to win this one. Peja was a kind of sharpshooter back in his day, but you compare him to the shooting splits of, of modern three-way or three and D players, he's nothing. Chris Webber never really had a three. Peja going to jack up a three. Peja going to miss, baby. Anytime it's contested in 2K, it's over. Draymond Green bringing the ball up the other way, kicks it to Steph Curry, who kicks it back to Draymond Green, who's being guarded by Boogie Cousins. That means Wilt the Still Chamberlain has a mismatch on him. But... Hey, this is the battle of Chris Webbers. I forgot. Chris Webber versus Chris Webber. Who you got? I got Steph Curry missing from three. Yeah, I don't know. 2K hates Steph Curry shooting threes in simulation. I, it's just, it's frustrating when you're watching games like this. Steph Curry should go off for 50. Peja for three. Miss. The the three-pointer already doesn't fall. And then when it's moderately contested, it, it the chance it falls is like zero. And what is this shot selection? Steph Curry fading 30-foot three-pointers. That's not the shot that he takes. Come on, game. Clay Thompson, though, makes another one, and it is officially 6-0. to zero. Golden State Warriors ahead. Kings pull away in the first. Going into the second quarter, they have a little bit of lead back and forth game here after the halftime, and we got a really high-scoring contest one, and we got a really good one here as well. About a 9-point, 10-point lead here for the Golden State Warriors. Thought we were going to hop in, but the Warriors are rolling here. 10-point lead, 9-point lead, 1 minute left, 7 points, 9 points, and the Golden State Warriors win by 11, 129, 118. Oscar Robertson did all he could, 29, 5, 11, 5 steals. 10 and 15 from the field. Chris Weber had a good one, 17, 6, and 7. Mitch Richmond was okay, 13 for him. Boogie Cousins just got outworked, 13 points and 4 rebounds. Ain't going to cut it for your starting center. Wayne Embry was okay. Peja gave you 10. Jerry Lucas, Nate Archibald, Vladi gave you 6 and 5. As for the Warriors, Chris Mullen. Give him 19, 1 and 5. This is one of those balance games. Will does still give you 18, 9 and 6. Steph Curry gave you 17. Paula Reason gave you 17 and 9. Clay Thompson gave you 16 and 5. Rick Barry gave you 14, 10 and 4. Nate Thurman gave you 11. Draymond Green gave you the annual, traditional 9, 6 and 8. Kevin Durant only gave you 8 points, but somehow the Warriors prevailed. And while we could bring over Chris Webber to rock a double Chris Webber lineup, I'm going to bring over the 99 overall Oscar Robertson, who just got his final overall boost as well to the Golden State Warriors. How is he going to mesh with Steph Curry? No idea, but their lineup now looks like this Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Oscar Robertson 99 overall coming off the bench. With that as well, Steph Curry going to get the one overall boost, and he is officially a 99 I would think about playing Oscar Robertson at the two. He's got the size. Is uh does he have a secondary boom boom boom? What's it called? Secondary position? Yeah. 
So he could theoretically come in at the two if the, the coach wants to. Otherwise, Clay Thompson is going to be perfectly serviceable, and this team is already good enough. The only position I'd possibly look to upgrade upon may be power forward. Can we say Kevin Durant is a power forward? I'm in on that. Yeah, we'll replace Draymond Green. <laughs> we'll be going over to the Photoshop map, and unfortunately, the fact that the Kings just took over Nevada means nothing but good for the Golden State Warriors, as the Kings are officially gone. Get the hell off my map, as it is blue versus red, red versus blue. That's 11. There is no 11, you fucking whore! Out here in the western part of California, you got Clippers, you got Warriors, you got the Blazers. And nobody has taken Seattle, Washington just yet. Go to the wheel, and we'll spin for the next team. Spin, spin, spin to win. And the Washington Wizards are going to be the next team on the map. We go over and look at them. They are stuck next to, I think, the 76ers and Nets, right? And then the 76ers took Delaware. The Nets have New Jersey. Virginia is wide open, both of the Virginias. So if they go south, they're going to get a free overall point. If they go north, they're probably going to lose to whoever <laughs> they end up playing. But let's spin, and it's going to go west. That wasn't on my bingo card. That will be... Uh, I'm tempted to give them West Virginia just to knock that off the map. So we'll go ahead and give them a free overall point. Boom, 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 boom. That's what the map looks like. Boom, 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 boom. Give them overall points. And taking a quick peek at this Wizards roster, you have Wes Unseld Sr. now being coached by Wes Unseld Jr. Do you love to see that? Elvin Hayes, 93 overall. Gilbert Arenas, Agent Zero, one of my favorite players back in the day. Michael Jeffrey Jordan, 91 overall, 39 years old. Overall is probably a little high, but hey, it's the GOAT. Russell Westbrook, even for the one season, was pretty good here. Jonathan Wall, Bradley Beal, Earl Monroe, Moses Malone, Karan Butler, Phil Shanier, Jeff Ruland, Anton Jameson. Wasn't he a number one overall pick or something? Number four? Who was the number one overall pick that was? Kwame Brown, that's right. Uh, I don't know why that popped in my head. Dan Ole, Bernard King rounding out the rotation. And the one overall boost is going to go to the 95 now overall. Wes Unseld Sr. Rocking the fro. Beast back in his prime. Washington Wizards get the hell off my map as the spinner gets thinner. Though they didn't get eliminated. This is just round one. And the New York Knicks. Finally, New York. Stand up. Going to get their official first time playing spinning. And they usually take on the Brooklyn Nets, but they could take on the Raptors. They could take on the Celtics here, or they could. Nah, they can't get this free uh, uh, Connecticut. That's just not happening. We'll see what is the future for New York. Who are they going to play? And they're going north uh, east ish. That was um, that one state that I totally know that I'm not looking up right now. That is uh, Vermont. Yeah, we can give them Vermont. I'm not opposed to that. Build the state up with New York burnt orange. And this first round is honestly going a little, a little uh, uh, passive, a little friendly, if you will. Most of the time, the, by the first time, or by the time the first round is over, half the teams, if not more, are already gone. But Walt Frazier going to be joining the 99 overall squad with this overall boost. Walt was a all-time great. Patrick Ewing, 97 overall. Willis Reed, Carmelo Anthony, Big Bob McAdoo. Earl Monroe, De Debouchier, Amari Stoudemire before the injuries completely sapped him. Michael Ray Richardson, Allen Houston was a sharpshooter back in his day. You got Richie Gurin, you got Bernard King, you got John Starks, you even have Latrell Sprewell, one, another one of my favorite players from back in the day. And Julius Randle made his way under the all-time team. Kind of curious, I think Jalen Brunson should probably be replacing him, but that is for another day. I just choked on my spit there. Water has been drank, the Knicks have been moved off the spinner, and we're going to spin again. Who's next on the list? The Cleveland Cavaliers, the LeBron Jameses, pretty much. They have they have a few players in their history, but it's really LeBron and then everybody else that helped LeBron. Looking at them, they have one chance to, uh, to avoid playing somebody. Other than that, they're probably going to have to spin and compete Cavaliers at whoever. Spin the wheel, and I think that was the one direction they needed. Yeah, I'll give them, what is that, Kentucky, right? Yeah. I'll give him Kentucky. I'm fine with that. Give him a one overall boost as well. Like I said, this first round of imperialism has been really friendly, really passive. Teams are just kind of doing whatever they want, not really attacking each other, not going on the offensive, just trying to get those one overall boosts. I'm not opposed to it, I guess. LeBron James already 99 overall, already just a monster. He's not going to get any overall boost. Mark Price, I guess, is going to be the next guy on the list. I have Mark Price as a better player than Kyrie Irving just because when Kyrie was here, he was dynamic, he was electric, but he also wasn't the best player on the team. That was clearly LeBron, so he didn't really have that 
load to carry as a number one and we've seen wherever he goes not that great so we'll give mark price the 95 now overall boost donovan mitchell right behind him at 93 overall having a great season one of probably the best players in the nba right now if not underappreciated Kyrie irving 92 brad dowardy zildrunas elgowskis Larry Nance, Kevin Love, only an 87 overall. He wasn't as impressive as you thought it would be when they traded away the number one overall pick Andrew Wiggins for him. Terrell Brandon, World Be Free, Jarrett Allen, Campy Russell, Austin Carr, Darius Garland, and Hot Rod Williams. Rocking the flat top. Pop the calves off the wheel and we got, what, three, six teams left in round one. Who's it gonna be? It's the Orlando Magic. And the Magic and the Heat really have to play each other at some point. The Magic could look to get a little bit better before they actually take on the Heat, or they could try to take on the Hawks. But the Magic and Heat are just sandwiched here with the Hawks. There is whatever the hell this damn state is that they could hypothetically, theoretically take, but I doubt it. The Magic usually end up having to play somebody, but they have a good team. They have a prime, or at least a young Shaq at this point. I don't think you can go that way, Orlando. You're gonna have to spin again. <laughs> And are they going, I said, you can't go that way, Orlando. You're going to have to spin again. And they're just going directly for the Miami Heat. They're going to attack and they're going to take over Florida. Taking a peek at the rosters. And this is always a good matchup. You have a young Shaquille O'Neal already 98 overall already was on. What is it? The NBA 50th best players team, whatever. Tracy McGrady, 96 overall. Dwight Howard, another great center for them. Hoping that they can get Victor Winbanyama maybe and have three great centers in their history. Penny Hardaway, and then there's a little bit of a drop off Grant Hill with the injuries. Horace Grant was great for them in the 90s, carried them to, I think, a conference championship or they lost in the final something, but he's just not a really dynamic player. Nikola Vucevic before he went to the Bulls, Richard Lewis before he got fat. Hito Turkoglu was pretty old at this point. He's good, not great. Steve Francis, Nick Anderson, Scott Skiles, Dennis Scott, Jameer Nelson, and the young Paulo Bancaro they're hoping to be the next franchise cornerstone as for the Miami Heat you have LeBron James and this or that run in Cleveland where they went to the finals four years in a row against the Golden State Warriors is probably the best LeBron James has ever been he was a great shooter from three he was a great shooter out of the post he just developed his offense his defense he was an incredible unstoppable freak of a player and he had Dwayne Wade to carry him and lead him whenever he needed help whenever it was the clutch moments Jimmy Buckets having a really great end of his career but he's starting to hit that point where he's a little too old to carry the team alonzo morning tim hardaway senior and a old shaquille o'neal still good enough to bring a championship alongside Dwayne wade to miami and then chris bosh kind of had to be a lesser version of himself to fit alongside lebron james and Dwayne wade you had glenn rice bam and a bio hassan whiteside when he was a monster ronnie sequely goron jarajic eddie jones steve smith and udonis haslam has to be on every single team labeled miami Got a good one. Penny Hardaway versus Tim Hardaway. Battle of the Hardaways. McGrady versus Wade. Grant Hill versus LeBron James. Horace Grant versus Christopher Bosch. And Shaq versus Alonzo Mourning. I, th I mean, the Heat, you know, they have LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, clearly. But there is a chance that Shaq could carry the team. The Penny Hardaway Shaquille O'Neal connection. Grant Hill was a physical specimen before the injuries tore him up. You know, there's there's a chance. That's all I'm saying. And as we saw with the Lakers elimination, I know I continue to bring it up, but that's just how shocked I am. Every time there's a chance, there's a chance. Penny Hardaway pulls up from the elbow, and he makes it. 2-0 already for the underdog Orlando Magic. And D-Wade pulling up for three. That's not his specialty. He's like a 30% three-point shooter. I looked at uh, Dwayne's career stats, which, by the way, he spells Dwayne Wade so weird as Grant Hill just throws it down over Alonzo Mourning. Look at him. Put a, put that man in a poster. Also, uh, kind of got fouled. Alonzo Mourning's entire body clipped through <laughs> Grant Hill. I was looking up Dwayne Wade's stats, which, by the way, the way he spells Dwayne is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in my life. He's like a 30% three-point shooter. Shot in the 20s a lot. And uh, there's that and the fact that he spells Dwayne D, what is it? D-W-Y-A-N-E. What a freaking nutcase. Anyway, talking about nothing. Grant Hill spinning, trying to go around LeBron James and he's putting up a ridiculous shot. LeBron defensive specialist says, get that shit out of here. Tim Hardaway bring the ball up the other way, pulls up, gets his shit rejected as well. We got a back and forth block contest. T-Mac bringing the ball up. Of course, Orlando Magic T-Mac was one of my favorite players. I have so many favorite players <laughs> I just love basketball, man. I can't 
I don't know how else to explain it. Why else would I be doing an entire YouTube channel dedicated as we get a foul on? I think that was Chris Bosch going into Simcast and the Magic. Nope, the Heat have a lead and they're starting to uh, back and forth. Now in the halftime, 55-53. Not too bad. Going into the fourth quarter, Heat starting to extend their lead a little bit up to 10 points. 12 points. Let's see if the Magic can go on a run. Make this a little more competitive. Otherwise, the game is over. And it's starting to get pretty ugly out here in Miami. The home team really extended this one it was a close kind of hang around game for the entire one but nine points the magic do fall 114 105 chris bosh had a good one 25 6 and 2 and he's capable of this man he was a multiple time all-star lebron james had a weird 17 9 and 14 tim hardaway senior 14 and 7 bam at a bio 14 points in 16 minutes jimmy buckets d wade was really quiet 10 points four rebounds four assists on nine shots not what i was expecting Oh, I thought this was Battle of the Shaquille O'Neal's too. Completely forgot about that. But Shaq gave you 6 and 12. Alonzo gave you 9 and 8. As for the Magic, scoring came tough for them. T-Mac gave you 20 and 10. Shaq gave you 16 and 10. Penny gave you 15 and 9. Grant Hill gave you 15. Dwight Howard, 12. Yeah, the forward depth on the Magic just was not enough. Guys like Richard Lewis need to produce more. Nick Anderson gave you 4 points. Horace Grant, this is what I mean when I'm saying he wasn't dynamic offensively. He gave you 6 points. Three rebounds, three assists. If he plays better, the Magic probably win this. Going to be bringing over a younger Shaquille O'Neal to replace the older Shaquille O'Neal, if that makes sense. So Shaq back on the heat, but now he's much better in his prime Magic days. 98 overall, LeBron 99. And we'll be giving the one overall boost to Dwayne Wade up to a 98 overall. So now they have Shaq, but a better Shaq instead of Alonzo Mourning at the starting center position. Tim Hardaway Sr. at the point guard isn't great. You'd like to improve upon that, but you have LeBron James. You have Dwayne Wade, you have Chris Bosh, and now you have a monstrous Shaquille O'Neal. And we'll go over and make sure that the Orlando Magic officially eliminated from NBA imperialism. The Heat going to take over all of Florida and very proudly say, this is now Heat Burnt Red. Look at the logo. Bam. Florida now belongs to Miami. Make that make sense. Orlando Magic officially gone as the spinner gets thinner. And then there were four. New Orleans Pelicans looking like they're... Yep, they're going to be the next team. Don't ask me what that sound was. And the New Orleans Hornets Pelicans have the Spurs to contend with, which, yikes. Or, more preferably, they'll take on some of these empty states and get a one overall boost because I don't see any chance of them going into San Antonio and winning a close one. Spin, spin, spin the wheel. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Are you sure about this? Taking a quick peek at the Pelican Hornets, and they have basically two players that are going to carry this team, and the rest are going to have to <laughs> kind of overexert themselves, play better than their overall reflex. He got Clifford Paul when he was monstrous back in Charlotte. This was when he was getting traded to the Lakers, and then David Surge said, nah, because Cliff Paul was too good. He was going 1v1 versus Kobe Bryant in the playoffs. Anthony Davis was just an athletic freak back in this time. He's a little bit more polished now, but if you go back and watch old Anthony Davis highlights, he just was special, man. Number one overall pick for a reason. Baron Davis, electric, dynamic, bouncy, explosive player. David West, just a really solid fundamental guy. Went to a bunch of teams and helped them win a lot of basketball games. Jamal Mashburn was pretty good. Zion Williamson. 2K is always trying to make him better than he is. They want him to be a 99 overall. He just can't stay healthy. Brandon Ingram, Drew Holiday, Pretty good player for them. He kind of got a lot better once he went to the Bucks, but PJ Brown was here. Boogie Cousins for that one season. Tried to rock a Twin Towers lineup, and then injuries just derailed his career. Jonas Valanciunas has been pretty good. David Wesley, not to be confused with David West. You got CJ McCollum. He's okay. Julius Randle had one season here, and Peja Stoyakovich. Cliff Paul versus Gary Payton. You got James Harden versus Drew Holiday. That's a mismatch. Jamal Mashburn versus Kawhi Leonard. That's a mismatch. David West versus Tim Duncan. That's a mismatch. And Anthony Davis versus Dave Robinson. That'll be fun, but like I said, unless the two superstars of New Orleans carry this team, they have no chance, and it's going to be a complete blowout. Taking on a complete team like the Spurs, who have 99s in the lineup, 98s, great depth, Great positional flexibility. They have everything that you need to win NBA imperialism, but it is a one game winner take all. Cliff Paul has a headband. That is how young he is back in this day. Kawhi Leonard in the screen from Tim Duncan. Man, that was just something out of a, a fairy tale back when this was actually happening. Of course, the ages didn't really match up, but a Kawhi Leonard Tim Duncan two man game is unstoppable. Speaking of unstoppable, Cliff Paul just pulls up from the free throw line, makes it. 
And the Pelicans have a 2-0 lead here. Two defensive point guard specialists, Cliff Ball and Gary Payton, picking each other up. Kawhi Leonard cutting, kicking it. Tim Duncan shooting. Tim Duncan missing. Still getting zeros for the San Antonio Spurs here. Almost a minute into this one. Cliff Ball now has a mismatch. Dave Robinson, who are they going to go to? Give it to Mashburn. Let him back down Gary Payton, maybe. Or give it to Cliff Ball. Let him go around David Robinson. Or give it to Drew Holiday and do nothing. All right, Anthony Davis going to attack Kawhi Leonard. Not really the best. Oh, wow. Kawhi just picks that man's pocket. Oof, that's almost embarrassing how ugly that was. Kawhi not being picked up by anybody. Now Anthony Davis deeing him up. And the Spurs going to run some offense. That's David Robinson versus Cliff Paul. No chance. David, man, just throw that down. Dunk it, yam it, posterize that man as David Robinson gives the Spurs a 2-2 tie. And we'll be hopping into SimCast here as the Spurs jump out to a lead. And this is going to get ugly. Take your bets, place your picks, who is going to win. And it's actually closer than I would have thought. Eight minutes left in this one, about a 7-5 point game. Eight point game. I would have thought this would be a 30 point game by now. It's about seven, six points, five points, six points, six points again, eight points, five points. Yeah, we'll hop in. I don't mind watching five point games here in imperialism even if it's the spurs at the yeah, pelicans and it looks like dirk is in for the spurs nobody's coming to get the ball gonna have to do a desperation inbound and oof not a great play that could have been a turnover but zion steps out of bounds and the shock troops are coming in for this final run for the pelicans i don't know why the spurs just having trouble running their offense right now Gary Payton, James Harden should all be able to get their own shot. Kawhi Leonard, Tim Duncan, Dirk. And for whatever reason, Dirk is just jacking it from three. And James Harden gets a rebound. And Kawhi Leonard shoots a three. Bang! Up to a nine-point lead for the Spurs. And that was worst-case scenario for the Pelicans. Almost walk away with a turnover. And instead, it's a three-pointer the other way. Anthony Davis way too close to the basket. Gotta make this. Jump hook misses. Ugh. And I think that is going to be game Pelicans having a hard time scoring, haven't scored in 46 minutes. Can you believe it? Kawhi Leonard, dynamic, going to the free throw line. And if he makes these free throws, the game is all but over. First one is up and in. Next one is up and in. Pelicans, two timeouts, but they're now down double digits. They need a three-pointer. They need some something to go their way because right now it looks like it is raining. It is hailing on the New Orleans Pelicans hopes to win this game. Anthony Davis stuck being picked up by a great defender. Jamal Mashburn gets fouled. That could work. The The Pelicans simply cannot let the Spurs score again and they have to make their free throws and they have to make a couple three-pointers to even get this close to a tie. But there's your first two free throws. Now it's down to a single digit nine point game. Spurs gonna run some clock. If they can get a miss here. Get a three. I, I, there's a 0% chance of them actually winning this. Let's see what the play is. Kawhi Leonard. Fading. Tough shot. Misses. Anthony Davis grabs a rebound. The door is a little bit open. Drew Holiday bringing the ball up the other way. Time is not on their side. 50 seconds left. Pulling up for three. Missing. And that is going to be game as it looks like the Spurs win by 12. A little closer than you thought, but David Robinson was good. Kawhi Leonard gave you 18. Tim Duncan gave you 16 and 8. Manu was good. Dirk was good. Even Gary Payton, two points, but 15 assists. That's just too much. As for the Pelicans, 80 was solid, 20 and 10. Zion Williamson gave you 17, 2, 2, and 2. Cliff Paul, 14, 9, but again, not enough help from the rest of the guys. Baron Davis only gave you 12. Brandon Ingram gave you 11 and 19 minutes. That's okay. Jamal Mashburn gave you 9 points. David West gave you 9 as well. Drew Holiday gave you a 7 and 9. Not enough help from the rest of the team. And it was torn between Chris Paul or doing Anthony Davis, but Chris has one overall higher and it's more of a position of need, although at this point, not really Gary Payton, Cliff Paul, and now Tony Parker is way down here as the third string point guard being a 93 overall. As for the one overall boost, I did not mean to change your name, Timmy. I'm sorry. It's going to go to Kawhi Leonard, officially joining the 99 overall club as well. So you got Kawhi Leonard, 99 overall, Tim Duncan, 99 overall, David Robinson, 99 overall, Dirk Nowitzki off the bench, 98 overall. Gary Payton and Cliff Paul, 97. James Harden, 96 with George Gervin. This team is lethal, electric, dynamic. The New Orleans Pelican Hornets fall. Don't know what they were thinking trying to go after San Antonio. Probably the worst decision they could have made, but this is now going to become more San Antonio 
silver. And the Pelicans are officially gone. Three teams left on the wheel. The Toronto Raptors, who normally get picked on pretty early because they share a large border with a lot of teams. You got the Portland Trail Blazers and the Atlanta Hawks. Looks like the Blazers want to be next. Go ahead and peek at them on this map. They could take on the Warriors or they could take two empty states. Really as simple as that. Let's see what the Wheel of Fortune has in store for them. Spin, spin, and they're going after Seattle. I can't blame them. People keep clamoring for the Supersonics to come back. Portland's like, hey, we're still here. Excuse me. Go ahead and fill this up with Portland, burnt, red, bam. Nope. A little something like this. They're going to get a logo boost in size as they've taken over the Pacific Northwest. And that one overall boost is going to go to probably Damian Lillard, right? I'm going the wrong direction. They're not the Blazers. They're the Trail Blazers. Quick look at the team and Clyde Drexler is their highest overall. He's going to go up to a 97 at this point. You got Damian Lillard, 95 overall. Bill Walton, 95 overall as well for that miraculous championship run. Brandon Roy, 91 Mo Lucas, 90, LaMarcus Aldridge, Jeff Petrie. I hate it when people spell their name like this. Also, look at that face. Good Lord, he is terrifying. He looks like he's a, a horror villain, like Psycho or uh, the Bates Hotel. What is that? The Alfred Hitchcock one. You got Terry Porter, Rashid Wallace, Monsters been his prime, Arvidas Sabonis, father of Damonta Sabonis, Jerome Kersey, CJ McCollum was pretty good for them, Kiki Vandaway, Jim Paxson, and Kevin Duck. Worth. Pop the Blazers off the wheel and there's only two teams left who have not gone in this first round of NBA imperialism. You have the legendary, the famous Atlanta Hawks going to be next up and they're kind of cornered in. You could take on this empty state. You could take the Grizzlies. You could take the Hornet Bobcats or you could take on the Miami Heat. Let's see what the wheel has in store for them. Spin, spin, spin to win. And I think that's a free state. You could make an argument that it's Florida. Miami, but we're going to say that this is that free state, which is totally not being looked up by me on the map. Alabama. Totally. I know everything about Alabama. I've been there all the time. They've got football teams, <laughs> college football teams. Anyway, Atlanta going to get a little bit of a logo boost and we'll make sure that they get their one overall boost as well. And we'll take a quick peek at the Atlanta Hawks all time roster, starting with the highest overall Bob Pettit. 97 a little older of a number one overall player for franchise history but he was damn good in his prime so was dominique wilkins just did a video on him cliff hagan lou hudson dikembe mutombo no 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 and trey young rounding out the 90 overalls then you got joe caldwell big al horford paul Millsap, pistol pete maravich kevin willis doc rivers the coach dennis Schroeder. probably should be replaced with jeff teague if we're being honest Josh Smith, Jay Smoove, and Al Horford again, because Al Horford is so good, he needs to be on this roster twice. We'll bring in Jeff Teague. <laughs> yeah, like, I got 90% of this roster good, okay? Sometimes I'll miss, like, one or two things here. Jeff Teague, I would say, is probably a, an 80 or overall. Jeff Teague going to be replacing Al Horford, the second. And the Atlanta Hawks, the last team to pop off the wheel as the Toronto Raptors are now officially going to get their turn. And the Raptors are always in a... A weird situation not really sure how to spin them because toronto is right here all right but they control canada all right they're the canadian raptors they're not just toronto so when i spin i keep that in mind but theoretically we could take some of these empty states over here you could go after maine toronto's kind of a wild card when it comes to these imperialism videos but we'll spin the wheel they're officially the last team to go and you can't go that direction that is northeast there's nobody there for you literally impossibly unless you want to take on the Pacific Ocean, become a naval team in imperialism. You also can't go straight north. This is starting to annoy me. Spin the wheel, give me a real result. East? Uh, we'll do the New York Knicks, right? I think that makes the most sense. Like directly east. I could go after Maine here, but I think we're gonna leave Maine off. We're gonna say Toronto is going bam, like that. Toronto Raptors taking on the New York Knicks. And looking at this Raptor squad, their best player in their history is Kawhi Leonard. Came over for one year, won the championship. It's as simple as that. Then you got Vince Carter, Kyle Lowry, Mr. Toronto. DeMar gave us heart and soul to the team, but he was just not quite the same caliber of player as Kawhi Leonard is. Chris Bosh was really good for them before he left. Damon Stoudemire, Pascal Siakam, Spicy P. Who knows how long he's going to be here. Same thing with Fred Van Fleet. You got a young Tracy McGrady alongside that Vince Carter athletic dynamic duo. Antonio Davis, Morris Peterson. It drops off here. Andre Bargnani, 
Doug Christie and Scott Barnes. They're hoping something comes out of him. And Jonas Valanciunas, a young Jonas at this time, was pretty good. Damon Stoudemire versus Walt Frazier, the 99 overall mismatch. DeMar DeRozan versus Allen Houston, going to be a fun one. Carmelo Anthony versus Vince Carter, also going to be a fun one. Dave Boucher versus Chris Bosh. And Andre Bargnani versus Patrick Ewing, complete and total mismatch. Don't know how Andre Bargnani even made it on this all-times roster, but maybe that is just how shallow the all-time centers are for the Toronto Raptors. They do win the tip, and Damon Stoudemire bringing the ball up the other way as New York is the home team. We're playing in Madison Square Garden. New York stand-up of weird three for Damon Stoudemire, and he makes it. Um, Interesting start to this one. I guess Walt Frazier just decided not to play defense, rocking the short shorts, rocking the uh, mutton chops. That's what they're called. And let's see what the play is here. Might be going to Carmelo Anthony. Nope, they're going to Allen Houston for three. Answers right back. 8% covered. It doesn't matter. We got a 3-3 game. Allen Houston, sharp shooter back in his day. Damon Stoudemire losing, dribbling into a double team. You got DeMar DeRozan. No three-point shooting for him. But if it's anywhere in the mid-range, he will pull up and score. And there is a little bit of a floater. Misses the offensive rebound. And it's Raptors ball. Looks like it was off DeMar, but okay. Y'all know DeMar DeRozan has a Joker tattoo on his shoulder. Damon Sotomayor for three again. Wow. Damon just trying to take this game over. The little man, shortest man on the court, says, I'm going to be the best player on the damn court. And Carmelo pulling up for a fading three here. Bad shot selection from him, and it is a 6-3 to three lead for the city of Canada. The city in Canada, the city for Canada. Chris Bosch puts it up and it is 8-3. New York having a disappointing start to this one. New York was pretty good last time in the all-time imperialism video. And we have a tie game going into halftime. Back and forth game here in the third quarter. New York starting to take a little bit of a lead here. About five, four points in the fourth quarter. And back and forth, five-point game. Might be one of those that we hop in. Tie game, about two minutes left. Yeah, 124-122. Watching a highlight of something that we never saw. Oh no, that was the last highlight I skipped over. New York Knicks inbounding the ball. Walt Frazier, 99 overall, bringing the ball up the court. What is he going to do? What are they going to do? Willis Reed with both legs healthy. Injuries are turned off. Patrick Ewing out of the post going versus Andre Bargnani. Let's see what happens here. Jump hook and in and out. Bob McAdoo, though, on the glass. They have Bob McAdoo, Willis Reed, and Patrick Ewing all on the court at the same time. Can you say rebounding? And Amari Stoudemire. Oh, my gosh. They're rocking a single shooter lineup. If you don't like that, you don't like 1980s basketball. Kyle Lowry being deed up tremendously. Oh, he gets around Wall Frazier. Back to a two-point game, and the Knicks need a time. Out one minute, 34 seconds left. Carmelo Anthony dribbling the ball. Being picked up by Kawhi Leonard, and Kawhi Leonard fouls. In the clutch, four fouls now on Kawhi Leonard. Carmelo Anthony going to the free throw line, looking to make this a two-possession game. First free throw is up, and... And Carmelo, no stranger to the big moments. Honestly, such a question mark why he never won a chip. I know the league went out from under him. He was a mid-range killer. Back to the basket kind of post-score when he was in his heyday. And the league transitioned into three-point motion offenses while he was a black hole. But still, I feel like he was good enough to win a chip if the rosters were well-constructed. Kawhi Leonard hits a dagger, fading mid-range jumper. And we just got back and forth, mano y mano. Carmelo Anthony in his prime versus Kawhi Leonard in his prime. Melo pulls, fading, three, bang! Five-point lead for Carmelo and the New York Knicks. What a huge shot. How are the Raptors going to respond? Kawhi Leonard dribbling the ball, looking for something to set up. He's getting a screen from Chris Bosh. Big, deep drop coverage answered from three, and Kawhi misses. And that is the difference between Carmelo Anthony and Kawhi Leonard is Carmelo hits those shots. We got an alley-oop in the clutch, and the Raptors are going to need a timeout. Willis Reed on the alley from the oop. New York Knicks rolling through Toronto right now. Seven-point game, 44 seconds left. No timeouts being called yet. Kawhi Leonard forcing the issue, putting up a tough two. Gets the putback from Andre Bargnani, who just kind of floated, levitated up there. Full-court press from the Raptors. Giving it to the 99 overall, Walt Frazier. Haven't mentioned his name yet. And Damon Stoudemire, flagrant fouls him. What was that? He just launches him into the stands. First free throw for Walt is up and in. Next one. This is pretty much dagger. The game's over. But what a game. What a couple of shots from Carmelo. What a couple of shots from Kawhi. 
and we'll see if the Raptors have any way to respond. Being picked up by Carmelo Anthony, who's not a great defender, but he is a competitor. Grabbing a screen from Andre Bargnani. Drop coverage again. Kawhi for three. Bang. Exactly what they needed. Knicks need a time out of their own. Walt Frazier going to be getting fouled by Damon Stoudemire. That's his fifth foul. Need to be careful of that. Walt going to the free throw line. Four point game looking to make this a six point game. First free throw is up and in. Thank God they don't show the actual free throw when they're shooting clutch free throws. Why would I want to see if it's a make or a miss? Two for two. Raptors call their last timeout. And what do the Raptors have drawn up? If they can get a three, that's down to a three point game. Let's see. Running, running. Give it to DeMar DeRozan. Okay, now they're going to Damon Stoudemire. Hit two threes early, and he misses this one, and that is going to be game. Knicks going back to the free throw line, and Knicks advancing, taking over Canada. They win 141-34. Really good game, closer than I thought. Carmelo was huge. 25-6-6. Six six. Bob McAdoo, 22-8. Allen Houston gave you 20. Walt Frazier, 19-15. and 15. What a game from him. Patrick Ewing, 12. Amari Stoudemire, 11, 11, 11, 8. Great contributions from the bench and a good game for the Raptors as well. Damon Stoudemire was dynamic. Nine and 11. Never forget three of five from three, 26 points, nine assists. That is a, almost a perfect game for somebody who's like five foot 10. Kawhi Leonard was going back and forth against Carmelo Anthony, ultimately coming up short 24 for him. Vince Carter, 19, eight and five. Chris Bosch, 18 and 11. Andre Bargnani, not bad. 14 and eight. Mr. Toronto gave you 11 and 9. Never forget, DeMar DeRozan gave you 10. And we'll be taking a Kawhi Leonard in, and he's going over to the New York Knicks team now, looking like this. Walt Frazier, Allen Houston, Kawhi Leonard, Dada Bouchier, Patrick Ewing, uh, Carmelo Anthony. I guess we can bump him up to the power forward position. He did play a lot of power forward in his career, so I'm not, I'm not opposed to that as I am opposed to other positional changes. He actually goes up in overall, weirdly enough. And Patrick Ewing... Yeah, we'll give Patrick Ewing the one overall boost. He is now a 98 overall team. Started to look a little spicy. If we can upgrade on Allen Houston, you got 99 overall Walt Frazier. You got 97 overall Carmelo Anthony. Nope, Kawhi Leonard. You got Carmelo 94, and now you have Patrick Ewing 98. Willis Reed, Bob McAdoo, great size off the bench. Need a little more scoring, but this team is looking spicy. Go over to the map and make sure that we let everybody know that Canada has now been taken over by New York. New York stand up. Fill that up with New York burnt orange and the Toronto Raptors gone as New York has officially taken over now. One state and one country. Pretty impressive way to round out the first round of NBA imperialism. Beginning round two of NBA imperialism for all time teams, the Redux, the Redo. And we'll just do a quick recap of how round one looked. The Portland Trail Blazers, they did a fine job staying alive. The Golden State Warriors took out Sacramento. And the big surprise, the big upset, the Los Angeles Clippers upset the Lakers with all the 99 overalls. They are just not good enough. And they got Kobe Bryant. Phoenix is looking pretty good themselves with a Charles Barkley, who was not in the last one. The Denver Nuggets are doing just fine. The Spurs have taken out all of Texas, the Oklahoma City Thunder Supersonics, and the Pelicans. Timberwolves holding steady. Bucks, Knicks have taken over Toronto. The Chicago Bulls and Cavaliers are still alive. It's going to be Battle of the Goats for sure. Down there, Vancouver, Atlanta, Miami took over Florida. The Charlotte Bobcat Hornets are still alive. 76ers took Delaware. Wizards took over West Virginia, Nets, and Celtics. So some of the teams, I'll say close to half, are gone. We will be going on to NBA Imperialism Round 2 and spinning the wheel for the first team to go for Round 2 of NBA Imperialism. And it is those Los Angeles Clippers that did upset the Los Angeles Lakers, taking a quick peek at the map. Clippers are going to have to play somebody. It's going to be the Suns or it's going to be the Warriors. Simple as that. Go ahead and spin the wheel of fortune. What direction do the gods wish the Clippers to go? And you can't really go that way directly south. You just you can't. I'm sorry. You're going to have to spin again. I'm sorry. LA Clippers stands. And it looks like instead of going directly south, now they want to go directly north. And I know the Clippers aren't the 99 overall stacked Los Angeles Lakers, but they do have a good team here. Chris Paul versus Stephanie Curry has always been a great matchup whenever they go and head to head in the Western Conference Finals or the Western. I think the second round was when the Clippers and Warriors really went at it. Kobe Bryant as a Clipper is weird going up against Klay Thompson. Kawhi Leonard versus Rick Barry. Kevin Durant versus Elton Brand. And Big Bob McAdoo versus Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain. If I had to put money on it, I would say in the overalls department, I think the Warriors are the better team. But if you take into account that Kobe Bryant is now a Clipper, that they magically overcame probably the best team in the NBA, I gotta say the Clippers could be a, a sleepy underdog that you might want to look for. Steph Curry almost pulls up a three here. Kevin Durant now being picked up by... Uh, was that Elton Brand? Not going to be a good matchup for him as Kevin 
Durant swishes the two early. Cliff Paul bringing up the troops the other way. And what do the Clippers have in store for their offense? I think it's just go to Kobe Bryant and let him cook. There he is. Almost pulls up three. Clay Thompson guarding him. Going to get a screen. Yes, he does. And he's going to pull for three anyway. And he misses. Yeah, not a great shot for Kobe Bryant. Not known for his three-point shooting because the entire NBA wasn't known for his three-point shooting. You can hit the three to some extent, but for the most part, the mid-range was king. And somehow, Kawhi Leonard picks up a foul on Rick Barry. They're going to go into Simcast. And the Clippers have a lead going into the first, first quarter. Second half, we're about a tie game. High-scoring contest going into the fourth quarter. And we got a back and forth one here. This might be one of those games that we do, in fact, hop in. Uh, the Warriors have a little bit of a lead here. Five points, three points, six minutes left. We'll do a quick simcast. Two minutes left, four-point game. Yeah, we'll hop in to watch this. I don't mind watching good games. Elton Brand, Chris Mullen. Who's this? Paul George, Steph Curry. I don't know who's playing defense for the Warriors here. Uh, is Oscar Robertson in the game? He is. He is a 99 overall. I don't know how they're going to do that. Wilt Chamberlain playing a little defense here. Paul George just gets left wide open. Blows the jumper, though. Paul George is not clutch confirmed and the warriors have not scored in 46 minutes that never gets old uh, it's paula reason never seen his game in my life let's see what he has has a pull of three not really and by three i mean two and bob mcadoo brings the ball the other way the door is open for the clippers and paul george is just jacking floating threes and greening wow terrible shot selection poor shot quality doesn't matter as paul george hits a big three Clippers only down by one. The starters are going to be checking in for the Golden State Warriors. Steph Curry run off a couple screens. Was open for a second. Might be open here. He gives, gives it to Oscar, who's being picked up by Kobe Bryant. Could you imagine Oscar versus Kobe? That just sounds fun. Pull up two. Miss again. The Warriors are struggling to find any offense right now. And Paul George going to be clutch again. Bob McAdoo pretty close to the basket. Being picked up by Wilt. And good contest. Gets his own rebound. Puts it back up. And the Clippers have a lead. 52 seconds left in this one. That is the first lead for the Clippers, even though it wasn't because Simcast. Steph Curry going to be running off some screens here. Doesn't look like he's going to get a shot, does he? No. Being picked up by the much bigger Oscar Robertson. Pump fakes, shoots, and the Warriors getting blanked right now. 34 seconds left in this one. Probably want to call a timeout. Still a one-point game. Paul George operating. Kobe Bryant out of the corner. Dagger misses. Will Chamberlain brings the ball the other way. They're not going to call a timeout. They're just running the offense. Paul Reason bringing the ball up to court. What kind of shot selection are they going to get here? Paul Reason going ISO Oscar Robertson now with Kobe. Dean him up, accepts the screen, pulls up for two, and he makes it. Oscar Robertson was right there. And if he missed, Wilt Chamberlain had perfect positioning to put it back up. So the Golden State Warriors have a one-point lead. 13 seconds left. What do the Clippers have as an answer? Or is their Cinderella run coming to an end? Elton Brand on the inbound. 13.3 seconds going to Paul George. Don't go to Kawhi Leonard for some reason. Don't go to Kobe Bryant. They're going to PG-13. Clock is ticking. Time is running out. Four, three, two, one. Paul George has to put up a three. And he chokes it. He misses. And the Clippers fall by one point to the Golden State Warriors. Wow, that was a close one. Wow, <laughs> Will Chamberlain. 38 points, 10 rebounds on 17 shots. That is, um, wow, he went 10 of 19 for the free throw line as well. <laughs> That's not very good. Rick Barry had a nice game, 21, 6, and 9. Nice. Steph Curry, 16 and 11. Paul Reason, 16. Clay Thompson, 10. Nate Thurman, 10. Kevin Durant, miraculously quiet. Six points in 31 minutes. Bob McAdoo was the best performer on the Clippers yet again. Paul George had a good one. Elton Brand, 17 and 10. Kobe, 16 and 20? Wow. I don't even know how to describe that. Kawhi had a... Really disappointing game. Three points, just had foul trouble, and that was probably the difference in this game. If Kawhi stays in the game, they win. And we'll be sending over a 97 overall Kawhi Leonard to the Golden State Warriors, so now they have a really menacing team. They got Oscar Robertson, 99 overall, Steph Curry, Will Chamberlain, Kevin Durant playing the power forward, 97, Kawhi Leonard, 97, and uh, Clay Thompson is kind of the weak league now at this point, 93 overall. Who's going to be getting the overall boost? So it's not going to be Wilt. He's 99. Not going to be Steph. He's 99. I guess Kevin Durant will be elevated up to the 98 overall club for this Warriors squad. They got a, they have a mean team here. If you can flip out Klay Thompson for like Michael Jordan, this team also could be equally as competitive to those menacing and mean San Antonio Spurs. Go over to the map in Photoshop and say thank you for upsetting the Lakers Clippers, but you are eliminated. And it 
looks like the Golden State Warriors have taken over California. They've won the California tournament. Now let's see if they can win the entire South Midwest, however you describe this part of America. Go over to the wheel and unfortunately, the Clippers have been eliminated. Bam, get the hell off my wheel as the spinner gets thinner. Next team going up in NBA imperialism is going to be the Cleveland Cavaliers. Always a close one there. And let's look at Cleveland. They're going to have to take on Go Jordan at some point with Go James. They got the Grizzlies. Um, they're pretty much landlocked here. So they are going to have to play somebody. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Which way do you want to go? They're going southeast. That looks... Should we give them Virginia? Should we really? Let's, 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 let's peer. I mean, it should be the Wizards, 100%. But... But... Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do Cavs at the Wizards. I was really tempted to give the Cavaliers Virginia or West Virginia, whichever Virginia was available. But whenever you can get a goat on goat situation, you got to take it. And it's, it's the Wizards, Jordan. I get that. But still, Mark Price versus Gilbert Arenas, Agent Zero. Donovan Mitchell versus Michael Jordan, LeBron James versus Karan Butler. Elvin Hayes versus Kevin Love. Brad Dougherty versus Wes Unseld Sr. Let's see. I will say the Cavaliers are probably the favorites in this one. But when the Cavaliers go up against the other Michael Jordan, the Bulls Michael Jordan, I will 100% say Goat Jordan is going to take that one. So, I mean, the, the, you got to take into account. Michael is like 41 years old at this point. And LeBron pulls up for three. Misses. Never been a great three-point shooter. He's been solid. He's, he's one of those streaky guys. He can shoot like nine for 11 as Wes Unseld Sr. grabs the dunk from the three-point line, and then he'll go 0 for 16. He'll just have a horrible game, and he won't stop shooting the three. Really inconsistent. Mark Price pulling up for three. Misses. And the Washington Wizards have a little bit of a lead here. Michael Jordan, the aforementioned, the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan, on the Washington Wizards. Kicks it to Gilbert Arenas, who's just dribbling. Dribbling. Pulls up for three. Little off balance. Doesn't matter, and it is a quick 5-0 lead for the Wizards. They are the home team, so the upset is real going into the second quarter it's a bit of back and forth game third quarter and the cavaliers have a little bit of a lead we'll see if the wizards can do anything really close game here going into the fourth about a five three point game another game that we might actually be hopping in for some reason the games are a lot closer this time around the Cavs about a four point lead six point lead five point lead four point lead if they get within one possession just like that i will hop in and we have a close one here 108 107 one minute 13 seconds left i believe the wizards have the ball John Wall is in for Gilbert Arenas. Looks like Karan Butler, Wes Unseld Sr. is here. Russell Westbrook playing like small forward as John Wall pulls up for three. Not sure how I feel about that. LeBron James bring the ball up the other way. Being picked up by John Wall. Size disparity here. So is Kyrie Irving, who's hugely clutched last time we played. And Kevin Love shoots a three. Misses, but LeBron is on the glass and he puts it right back up. Two points, two easy, three point game. Look at LeBron James hitting the glass, playing aggressively. Having a hand go through his chest. That is just how good Goat James is. Russ bringing the ball up the other way. I guess he's rocking the point guard position. So they're rocking a two point guard lineup, which is kind of weird. Don't have Michael Jordan in. Not a big fan of that. I believe Elvin Hayes sets the screen. Russ pulls up for a long two. Most inefficient shot in the league from one of the worst shooters in the league. Probably not the shot that you want if you're a Washington Wizard fan. And Kyrie Irving was wide open for three there. Does not get it. Russ pulls down the rebound. Still a three-point game. 22 seconds left. Russ goes up. Draws a foul. Does not convert the and one. And we're going to have a foul free throw game after this. Russ's free throws are up. And he greens. Next one, which is not great for him, is up. Oh, and he chokes the other layup. And the Cavs are going to have to hit some free throws. Kyrie Irving going to the free throw line. Kyrie Irving, a much better free throw shooter than Russell Westbrook. It's starting to look a little bit desperate here for the Washington Wizard fans. As if uh, Kyrie hits this one, it is a two-possession game. It's up. And money. Time out. What do the Wizards have here? They got Gilbert Arenas back in. Karan Butler inbounding the ball. Michael Jordan finally gets back onto the court. Number 23 gets the ball. Almost steps into the half court. No offense is being run here. Gilbert Arenas goes around Kyrie Irving, but that is only two points. And now the Cavs call their final timeout. Don't you love timeouts in the NBA? Who's going to get the ball? Kyrie Irving gets it, and immediately he is fouled. Going to the free throw line. He hit his last two. Is he going to hit two more? These are going to be huge. These are going to be clutch. These are going to be two possession free throws. 
Three point game right now. Next free throw is up. And Kyrie Irving, fearless, makes two more. Four point game. I think the Wizards need a three at this point, and it's going to Karan Butler. Which is probably not the shot they drew up, and that is going to be game. Unfortunately, the Wizards do fall to the Cleveland Cavaliers, 116 to 110. Gilbert Arenas was pretty good, 22, 5, and 10. Russ gave you a 15, 2, and 6 on 10 shots, but missing that free throw was ugh, a big struggle. Wes Unsolved was okay, 14 and 11. Elvin Hayes, 13, 12, and 8. Bradley Beal gave you 13. Mike gave you 12, 6, and 4. Just a different version of Michael Jordan, not the one that we're all used to seeing, which is why him being on the Wizards was so. Not sad, but just kind of weird, I guess is the best way to describe it. Karan Butler gave you 10 as for <laughs> the Cavaliers. Just a really balanced game for them. 18, 9, and 9 from Goat James. Kyrie Irving gave you 15, 1, and 4. Donna Mitchell gave you 14, 4, and 6. Brad Dougherty, 14, 14. Terrell Brandon, 13. Mark Price, 12, 3, and 7. And Zildruna Silgowskis, Big Z, gave you 11 and 12. Off the bench, Larry Nance gave you 10. Kev in love only nine and five not a great game from him but they didn't need that Wes Unseld senior gonna be coming over and being the new starting center for the Cleveland Cavaliers and I guess Mark Price is going to be getting this overall point again now up to a 96 overall kind of need some more wing help a shooting guard a power forward whatever you can fill at that point Kevin Love is still the starting center which is not great can anybody can Wes Unseld play theoretically he could play he's six foot seven really yeah, theoretically, he could play the power forward position and then bring in Brad Dougherty to play the starting center. Yeah. Anyway, enough talking about the Cavaliers as they do advance the Washington Wizards. Unfortunately, they fall, gone, eliminated. And this weird stretch of land that we created for them is now going to be part of the Cleveland Cavalier Nation. Fill that up, give them a little bit of a logo boost, and they're going to have to go through the 76ers, through the Bulls, and that's probably it until they reach like the celtics and knicks but we will go over to the wheel and say thank you washington wizards for what you have done but you are officially gone eliminated from the wheel as the spinner gets thinner next team going on the offensive is the golden state warriors again okay i'm not opposed to it i don't hate seeing a team get to uh get to go multiple times in a row that's what imperialism and random wheels are all about looking at the warriors they could take I believe this is Idaho, or it's going to be Phoenix or the Portland Trailblazers. And if it's Portland, I got to say good luck, man. Portland is not in a great spot compared to the Suns. And uh, I think, yeah, we'll give, them, we'll give them Idaho, right? I'm not opposed to that. I like making funny shapes in these imperialism videos. So the Warriors get a little bit bigger. They kind of built a wall that the Suns and the Blazers have to go through now. But... They will get one overall point, and those other teams are still alive. So who is going to get the overall boost? I believe this makes Kevin Durant officially part of the 99 overall club. A little bit of boom, and there you have it. Kevin Durant, now part of the 499 overall squad that you have going on here in Golden State. Next team on the wheel, which is this button, not that button. Bam. Spinning the wheel. Next team is the Nuggets. The Nuggets, just barely. Let me go over to the Nuggets. So there's this big stretch of America that nobody seems to want to take. You know, the Montanas, the Dakotas, and I get that. But the Nuggets are sitting here. I think they want to avoid the, the San Antonio Spurs if they could. So Grizzlies or Suns would be a much better matchup for them. And we'll spin the wheel of fortune. What direction are the Nuggets going to go? And uh, is that the Suns? I believe... Uh, yeah, we can do the Suns. I, I should give them New Mexico, but we can just leave that state for now. Fun one here. Fat Lever versus Steven Nash. Dem Booker versus David Thompson. Carmelo Anthony versus Kevin Durant. Charles Barkley versus Dan Issel. And Nikola Jokic versus Carl Malone. The pickup, not free agent pickup, but the pickup from the Utah Jazz game. And I gotta say, outside of Joker and maybe Melo to a lesser extent, I think the Suns should win this one handily. We'll see how that prediction plays out. We got Steven Nash bringing the ball up the court, running the offense, Devin Booker, offensive stud, having a great postseason, and uh, Charles Barkley going to have the ball here. Don't know what's really happening. He pulls up for a contested two, misses pretty ugly. Looks like Fat Lever bringing the ball up the other way. Nikola Jokic is going to be playing point center for them. Right now we got David Thompson dribbling, dribbling, pulling up. Nope, kicks it. Who Joker kicks, passes up an open shot. Not sure how I feel about that. We have an offensive three-second violation. Really ugly game for the first 31 seconds of this one. And here is D-Book 
dribbling. Kevin Durant going around, gets a screen, and kicks it to a rolling Carl Malone, who throws it down. The mailman receiving passes from Kevin Durant. Kind of funny because Kevin Durant, I think, is taller than Carl Malone. That's just the way the new NBA is. These taller, better, faster, stronger players. And Carmelo pulls up for two, and he splashes right back. Two to two game. Carmelo, king of the mid range. And the Nuggets have a lead here in the first quarter. Going to the second quarter, it's been a back and forth game at halftime. Third quarter, still a back and forth game. Close one into the fourth. The Suns have a little bit of a lead. Let's see if the Nuggets can respond. And they do. Still a really close one possession game going back and forth. Might be a game we hop in. Nuggets have a little bit of lead here. Six point game, nine point game. And it looks like the Nuggets are going to win this one, actually. Five point game, three point game, 37 seconds left. I'm always going to make sure to see what happens. Look at Carmelo shoot the mid range from the first quarter. Wasn't his shot stroke pure and beautiful. 37 seconds left. Phoenix Suns need to stop and a score bad. And they give up a backdoor cut. Oh no, worst case scenario, right out of the inbound play. What are you doing? I don't know who that was. Phil Westfall, what is wrong with you? Carl Malone trying to go around, gets two points, and he does not convert the end one, but he's going to the free throw line. We'll see if the mailman can hit his free throws. Not really a strong suit. He has that weird sort of falling back when he's shooting the free throw animation that kind of that kind of messed it up. But now we are going to be watching a foul game as the Nuggets call their final time out. Desperation time for the Phoenix Suns. They're going to need a foul. They're going to need to score three. Going to need to foul again and probably score another three. But Kevin Durant going to the free throw line. Not the person that you want to foul. KD. No, that's not even KD. <laughs> he looks like Kevin Durant. Well, fat lever making both free throws. And it is a five-point game. Phoenix Suns call their final timeout. Desperation for the Phoenix Suns. And who's going to get the ball? Who's going to get the ball? Who wants the ball? Steve Nash does. Almost pulls up for two. Carl Malone puts up two points, but that's just wasting time. You got to get a steal here. And defense in 2K is kind of dumb because they just let you get wide open. Fat Lever going to the free throw line yet again. Devin Booker picking up his fourth foul. Let's see if he's able to convert both free throws. First one is up and in. Next one for Lever is up. And four for four, just like Kyrie Irving. Lever has no fear of the free throw line. Five point game, 16 seconds left. Timeouts are all gone. Kevin Durant just gonna pull up for three and miss. And that is going to be game. The Nuggets survived the Phoenix Suns in advance. That's an interesting one. Carl Malone had a good one, 38 and six. Kevin Durant had a good one, 28, four and six. How did they lose? Amari was okay, 11 and five. Chuck, 10, five and eight. Kind of a weird stat line for him. Phil Westfall. Not great. Paul Westfall. I don't know why I said Phil. 9, 2, and 8. Steve Nash was really bad. 3 of 8 from the field. 8 points. That's not going to cut it. So was Devin Booker. Yet the depths for the Suns did not prevail in this one. As for the Nuggets, Dave Thompson gave you 30, 4, and 5. Lever gave you 22, 5, and 8. And those clutch free throws. Carmelo gave you a strong 21, 5, and 6. Danny still gave you 15, 5, and 6. Nikola Jokic had a 10, 11, 8, 2, and 1 stat line. No turnovers. Alex English only 10, 6, and 7. And Allen Iverson gave you 10 off the bench as well. I guess a low scoring contest and the Nuggets prevail. We'll be sitting over Charles Barkley, not just because he's a 99 overall, but because he wasn't in the last video and because Charles Barkley's one of, I think, everybody's favorite TV personalities. Nikola Jokic going to be joining the 99 overall squad with one overall boost for their victory. Bam. Two 99s officially on the Denver Nuggets with that surprise upset of the Suns because I had the Suns pegged as one of the teams that are going to last much longer. Alex English, Carmelo Anthony, David Thompson, Dan Issel rounding out their team. And we'll go over and make sure that the Suns have officially been eliminated. Gone as the Utah, nope, as the empire of the Denver Nuggets are making a reverse L right around New Mexico. They're kind of dancing around trying to avoid the San Antonio Spurs. Don't blame them. Warriors Nuggets is going to be good. And then whoever the Spurs end up playing, I'm predicting Spurs Celtics, if I have to guess who is going to be the resulting teams in this imperialism challenge. And the Nuggets have survived. The Suns officially eliminated. Gone as the spinner gets thinner. Next up in the imperialism challenge is going to be the Brooklyn Nets. Didn't want to be the Nuggets again. I'm not going to do teams when they do it twice in a row, but I will let teams be rolled into, if that makes sense. Let's be it doesn't really make sense. Looking at the Nets, they have, uh, I believe that's Connecticut, right? If I look at a map and I go, is that Connecticut? It is Connecticut right here. You got the Boston Celtics-ish. You got the Knicks. You got the 76ers. I don't think they'll be able to take on the Cavaliers because of this little strip of Delaware that they took. But 
what direction does the wheel want them to go? We'll spin, spin, spin to win. And that looks like the Knicks. Jason Kidd versus Walt Frazier. Drazen Petrovic versus Allen Houston. Probably the weakest matchup that we have in this starting lineup. Julie Serving versus Kawhi Leonard. Melo versus KD. Brooke Lopez versus Patrick Ewing. I think... The Knicks should win, but a lot of their players are older. They don't shoot the three as well, and the three is very emphasized in simulation and in the modern NBA. So there's a chance that Brooklyn, with the lesser talented team, could prevail. I gotta put my money in the Knicks. I gotta put it on Walt Frazier rocking the mutton chops. And this play is slowly developing for Carmelo. Gets it stripped, and turnover. First play of the game. Bad sign for the Knicks. Kevin Durant just punked a prime Carmelo Anthony. And New York is going to be inbounding the ball. I love the throw that they put on Dr. J. Kevin Durant rocking the point forward position for them. Jason Kidd is here, uh, but this is just straight ISO. KD versus Carmelo. And KD goes up and puts it in. Punks him. Strips the ball first possession. Scores on him the second possession. Kevin Durant says, you know who I am. Let's see what the second play is. Walt Frazier actually running some offense. Giving it to Melo. Now he's got Jason Kidd on him. Patrick Ewing being picked up by Brooke Lopez. Not really a mismatch. Kind of an ugly shot. Patrick Ewing, though, gets his own rebound. Misses again. Wow. 0 for 2 for Patrick Ewing. Let's see what Kevin Durant has here going around. And Dr. J's open the corner. Doesn't matter. He misses the layup. And we got an ugly one here. 2 to 0. One minute into this contest. Kawhi Leonard being picked up by the smaller Jason Kidd. They don't try to exploit that. And Brooke Lopez says, get that shit out of here. Yeah. <laughs> When 2K plays 2K, it's uh, not a good game. Kevin Durant, oh my god, just goes right around the speed burst, the acceleration. What happened? He just went right around Patrick Ewing, and he did the Statue of Liberty dunk. Because he's in New York, right? Anyway, we're going into Simcast. The Nets have a big lead here in the first quarter, going into the second quarter. And this is what I mean when I was saying that the, the, the Knicks have a better overall team, but their offense is going to be as good. So if this turns into a high-scoring shootout, the Nets might be the upsetting team, and it looks like they will be. Knicks trying to make a little bit of a comeback here. Still a 14-point game, 4 minutes left, 10-point game, 8-point game, 6-point game. Can they get it any closer? 5-point game? I just don't think there's enough time for the Knicks to upset, and they lose 122-127. Patrick Ewing was saw. Look at the depth on this team. Walt Frazier gave you 14-12. Bob McAdoo gave you 17-11. Kawhi gave you 16-4-6. Melo gave you 13. Allen Houston gave you 12, but 0 of 7 from the three-point line. That's brutal. And you look, they just did not have a lot of three-point attempts compared to the Brooklyn Nets. 5 of 10 for Richard Jefferson. Drazen Petrovic gave you 5 of 6 from the three-point line. Kevin Durant gave you 24, 7 and 12, 23, 21. Dr. J, 14, 5 and 8. James Harden even gave you 13, 3, 3, 3. Yeah, good game from the Nets. Walt Frazier going to be coming over, joining the 99 overall club of Kevin Durant on the Brooklyn Nets. And that means Dr. J is going to be getting the overall boost up to a 98 overall. They need an improvement at the shooting guard position. Jason Kidd is officially the shooting guard for them. That's not great. And then maybe the center position over Brooke Lopez. Looking at the map, looking at the map. How we doing looking at the map? Whole lot of area to be picked up here by the Brooklyn Nets. They just took over New York took over Canada they have arrived New Jersey Brooklyn doesn't matter where the Nets from they win look at that blue and the New York Knicks officially gone eliminated pop the Knicks off the wheel as the spinner gets thinner next team up on the imperialism wheel is going to be the Miami Heat right now currently sitting as the Florida Heat since they took out the Orlando Magic they're gonna have to go through the Hawks yeah the, the Heat are in such a precarious spot no matter where they are, they have to go through a couple of teams just to get out from under. And the Hawks are pretty good looking at their franchise history. Tim Hardaway Sr. versus Trey Young. Joe Caldwell versus Dwayne Wade. Dominique Wilkins versus LeBron James. Bob Pettit versus Christopher Bosch. And Shaquille O'Neal versus Dikembe Mutombo. I definitely have the heat in this one. They got the 99 overall. Perfect at this point in his career. LeBron James, who did everything. They have an improved version of Shaq now. Dwayne Wade is inching up to the 99 overall club. I think this heat squad is going to rock and roll and honestly when trey young is on the other team it's a defensive liability every single time don't know what this play is d wade gonna get a screen from shack i suppose he's gonna kick it to the rolling shack and he gets blocked the kembe matumbo says get that shit out of here as he's known to do wiggle wags the finger and trey young being picked up has an open three fading and splashing it doesn't matter trey young is clutch ice trey shakes his shoulders 
LeBron bringing the ball up the other way, being picked up by Dominique. What a great matchup for him. And he's going to get a screen from Chris Bosh, as he did many times in his career. Kicks it to a Chris Bosh, who's kind of open. Didn't really know what to do with the openness. Tim Hardaway being picked up by Trey Young. Gets a screen. And step back to open. Bang. 3-2 to two game. And this might be a good one. Hopping into the simulation. And the Hawks have a lead here in the first quarter. They are the home team going into the second quarter. And the Heat struggling to find offense. Wow, they're being blown out by 25. They're the better team. This is another ridiculous upset. I don't know what is happening, but there are upsets of plenty these days. As, uh, wow. <laughs> Blown out. The Hawks just destroyed the Heat. What happened? Trey Young was incredible. Bob Pettit was incredible. Haven't mentioned his name enough. 32, 9, and 4 for him. Dominique gave you a solid 29. Joel Caldwell gave you 17. Lou Hudson. Cliff Hagan. What happened to the Heat? LeBron had a good one. 33, 3, and 7. D. Wade had a really good one, 16-7, but 14 assists. Chris Bosh was okay. Shaq gave you 14 and only four rebounds. Alonzo gave you 12 and six. I guess the depth just did not show up. Tim Hardaway was the weak link, four, four, and nine. Disappointing end for the Miami Heat. And the Hawks immediately pick up two 99 overalls. Bob Pettit joins the 99 overall squad, joining LeBron James, who's coming over as the free agent acquisition. What a big improvement for these atlanta hawks with that surprise upset all of a sudden turning themselves into contenders as well miami heat has officially been eliminated from the tournament i really was not expecting that i thought of the easter conference the heat were definitely going to be it but for some reason the hawks always seem to do really well in simulation in these tournaments and the hawks have taken over look how big they are growing gonna have to run through the charlotte bobcats pick up a kemba walker and hopefully they get through the grizzlies as well and then it's gonna be hawks spurs nets there's still a lot of teams left it's too early to start making predictions but we do have to say thank you for everything you have done miami but you are gone eliminated as the spinner gets thinner next up on the offensive is the chicago bulls it's the bucks been a while since we saw the bucks looking at them on the map they've only gotten oh they went through uh detroit yeah so they have a nice thousands of uh lakes or whatever is here i don't know <laughs> I'm not a geologist. I'm not a lakeologist, all right? I just spin the wheel and I say, what direction do the Milwaukee Bucks want to go? And that looks like they're going to be immediately taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Well, I think it's going to be a blowout, but you have Isaiah Thomas from the Pistons versus Ricky Rubio, Sidney Moncrie versus Jimmy Buckets, Anthony Edwards versus Marquez Johnson, Giannis versus KG, going to be a fun one, and then Kareem Abdul-Jabbar versus Rudy Gobert. That will be, <laughs> frankly, embarrassing to watch, but... The Minnesota Timberwolves are the home team since the Bucks are on the offensive and the Minnesota Timberwolves win the tip. That's a good sign of things to come as the best starting point guard in the history of Minnesota Timberwolves is Ricky Rubio? If that's true, I guess, what, Sam Cassell, Mike Conley, D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, yeah, that's probably fair. Anthony Edwards open for three in the corner, misses, and Giannis brings the ball up the court the other way. Isaiah Thomas calling for it. Giannis says, I got this. I got size, I got speed, I got strength, and I got Jimmy Butler on me, and I draw the foul and hit the and one. And we won't be watching free throws from Giannis because that will take all day. Hopping into Simcast, Bucks have a big lead here in the first quarter. Going to the second quarter, still holding on to that lead at halftime. Almost a back and forth game, closer than I thought here in the fourth quarter. Only a six point game. We'll continue to Simcast, five point game. Timberwolves just hanging around, and now they have tied it up. Now they've taken a lead. What are these upset? What is happening? It's 115, 116, one minute, 55 seconds left. I will certainly be watching this. Milwaukee Bucks should win. Timberwolves have the lead, have home court. They've been pesky all night. Isaiah Thomas goes right around Ricky Rubio, pulls up for an open two, and the Bucks take a quick lead. 117, 116. There is only one minute, 48 seconds left in this one. What does Ricky Rubio and the Timberwolves have to answer? Feeding the post, feeding Kevin Love. Who's going to take a step back jumper? That's probably not what you want. Carl Towns versus Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's probably not what you want. And charging foul? That was the weakest charging foul I've ever seen in my life. I think the refs have been paid off. They want the Milwaukee Bucks to win. Where is Scott Foster? IT running the offense for the Bucks, looking to extend on their lead. Don't know what this play is. Kareem was open and Kareem throws it down. Rudy Gobert looking silly. Doesn't even look for the ball. Wow, that was weirdly flashy, but I think the ball went through Rudy Gobert there. Anyway, now it's a three-point lead for the Milwaukee Bucks. Looks like as soon as we hopped in, all the shenanigans have stopped. Rick Rubio feeding the post yet again. Kevin Love taking a dirk step back two. That's 
Probably not what you want. And the Bucks now continue continuing to run their offense. Isaiah Thomas misses a contested two. Rubio once again running the offense. And I think you need to figure out a way to get Kevin Garnett on the floor. He's a 99 overall, your best player, and they just don't want to play him. Kevin Love once again operating out of the post. Probably traveling here. <laughs> don't know what happened, but Anthony Edwards just threw the ball away. And Sidney Moncrief bringing the ball up the court. Kicks it to Isaiah Thomas, who kicks it to Kevin Love, who kicks it to Ricky Rubio. Yeah, this is really ugly basketball, but there's only 40 seconds left. And Kevin Love almost throws the ball away. Ricky Rubio picks it back up. Rudy Gobert comes to set the screen. Ricky's open. Kevin Love shoots a three. Missed. Oh, that would have been huge for the Timberwolves. And now there's 28 seconds left. Seven point shot clock differential. And they have to start fouling. This is usually the end of CPU versus CPU games. Is this Sydney? No, this is Isaiah Thomas going to the free throw line, hitting a couple of clutch free throws, and the Timberwolves call a timeout. Minnesota needs a miracle like they did in the NFC Championship game. Camera angle is terrible. Ricky Rubio gets the inbound, and who's going to shoot the three? They throw an alley-oop, and that is game. They have to play the foul game, and I don't know what Ricky Rubio was doing, but he loses 124-0-18. Anthony Edwards had a really good game, 29 points. Not great efficiency, though. Jimmy Buckets gave it 24 Kevin Garnett only played 28 minutes. Don't know why he wasn't in the closing stretch. He had six fouls. Yeah. <laughs> 16, 7, and 8. That all happens when you go up against Giannis. Carl Towns gave you 12 and 8. Wally Zerbiak gave you 12. He's kind of a scrub. Doesn't belong in an all-star game. You know what I mean? Kevin Love only gave you 12, 10, 12, and 8. Kind of a weird stat line. Ricky Rubio gave you a 6, 5, 15 stat line. And Rudy Gobert played 30 minutes. That's all you need to know. Looking at the Bucks, Kareem had an incredible game. 36 and 5. IT 24 and 7. Magic. Nope. Marquez Johnson, 16, 7 to 7. Hey, Giannis, 14, 13, and 8. Good game. Oscar was kind of quiet. Only 5, 3, and 8. But they didn't need any of that help because they walk away victors. Kevin Garnett coming over, and now they're starting to get a little bit of depth. Oscar Robertson is a 99 overall. Giannis Antetokounmpo is a 99 overall. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a 99 overall. Isaiah Thomas is a 99 overall. Kevin Garnett is a 99 overall. And now Sidney Moncrief is officially a 95 overall. I mean, we've gotten to the point where there's too much talent on this Bucks team. If they could pick up maybe two more players to add to their depth, they are set to win this whole damn thing. Make sure we go over to the map and ensure that the Minnesota Timberwolves have been eliminated. Gone. As the Milwaukee Bucksian Empire is starting to grow. I got a little bit scared there when the Timberwolves were, were almost winning that one. But unfortunately, the Timberwolves do fall. They only had like 199 overall. The rest of their team was not very good. I don't know how they did so well. But the Denver Nuggets look like they want to be next. Being a little bit more aggressive here in this second round. Look at the Nuggets. They took out the Phoenix Suns, which is pretty impressive. They have 299 overalls on their team now. Um, they're circling New Mexico, and then they're going to have to go up against the Golden State Warriors at some point. Spin, spin, spin the wheel. Which way are they going to go? They want to go directly north? I will live with that. We'll go ahead and give them Wyoming. Let them expand their empire just a little bit more. Get some of these empty states off of the board, and they get an overall point boost because they are taking over an empty state. Who is going to get that for the team? So you have Nicole Jokic, 99. You have Charles Barkley, 99. Alex English going to be next on this list, up to a 97 overall after that change. And like I said, because this is round two and on of NBA imperialism, they are going to stay on the wheel. They're going to spin again, and it's going to be the Grizzlies. All right, what do the Grizzlies have in store? Rocking the Vancouver Grizzlies logo while they're in Memphis. They took over Missouri. They have LeBron James that they're going to have to go through. They have the Atlanta Hawks, a couple of empty states. A lot of directions for these Grizzlies to go. What direction does the wheels take them? And that is, uh, that's Atlanta. Yep, we got a battle of the undersized guards. John Morant versus Treyeth Young. Two, I guess, six foot one, six foot two-ish guys. Not very stout, if you will, but they go about their games in different ways. Joe Caldwell versus Tony Allen, probably the weakest part of this matchup. Sharif Abdul-Rahim versus LeBron James. Bob Pettit versus Zach Randolph. And Marcus All versus Dikembe Mutombo. I think we all know which way uh, we're leaning as far as the winners of this game. But, hey, one game imperialism, you never know. And the Grizzlies lose the tip. Hawks winning. They have Bob Pett at 99 overall. They have LeBron James, 99 overall. And they have my vote for winning this game, 99 overall, as Trey Young just getting fancy with the little up and under there for no reason in particular. John Morant rocking the troops the other way. I think in an alternate universe, John Morant would be like a 99, 
in NBA all-time imperialism videos, but he is just struggling at this point. His three-point shot has fallen off. He continues to get hurt. He's kind of Derek Rosing it right now. Zach Randolph backing down to the post. Bully ball, grit and grind, pump fakes. Got that man up in the air, jump hook, and he ties the game up. Pretty good uh, post moves there from Zach. I loved watching Zach Randolph in the day. He was just a big old bruiser back when the NBA... It was like more physical, but there were less injuries, if that makes sense. Kind of weird how uh, how everybody's getting injured these days as LeBron James goes up and lays it in. We got a high scoring game here. Everybody seems to be making their shots, which is rare as my voice starts to change for no reason in particular. <laughs> Four to two game, one minute in. This might be one of those fun games that we actually watch all the way through. We're not going to. We're going to go to SimCast. As soon as somebody misses, we'll go to SimCast. Here's John Morant getting the screen from Marcus All. Pulls up from three? Yeah, that's probably not the shot John Morant wants, especially with a broken finger going into SimCast. And the Hawks have a big lead here in the first quarter, going into halftime with about a 20 point lead in the third quarter, just continuing the domination, the route of the Memphis Grizzlies as they are going to be eliminated 143 to 113. Wow, not even close. Trey Young had a really good game 33 2 8, four steals. LeBron 22 6 and 14. <laughs> assists Dominique Wilkins good 29 and 7 Bob Pettit 19 8 and 8 Bill Caldwell gave you 15 Cliff Hagan gave you 13 8 Lou Hudson the campaign Matumbo with a strong 10 and 12 game as for the Grizzlies they just did not have a chance John Murray at 27 and 6 Marcus Gasol 15 1 rebound for somebody who's 6 foot 11 255 pounds that is unacceptable Shane Battier was okay off the bench 15 and 7 Pau Gasol Sharif Abdul Rahim gave you a weird 12, 9, and 8 stat line, and Zach Randolph gave you 11 and 10. Yeah, they just came up short. Wow, Tony Allen gave you three points. You love to see it. Defensive stopper, offensive disaster. I guess Marcus All is the highest overall player from this Grizzly squad, so they'll be going over to the Atlanta Hawks and taking Dikembe Mutombo's base, I guess. And only 91 overall. Hmm, not sure how I feel about that. Marcus All, was he a better player than Dikembe Mutombo? That is an interesting debate, but the one overall point boost is going to go to probably Dominique Wilkins now up to a 97 overall as they have a mean team here imagine if they play like Dominique at the two LeBron at the three Bob Pettit at the four and then they get a better point guard over Trey Young in the center I guess Pau Gasol is good enough maybe they figure out a way to steal a world champion Hawks always are a pretty fun team to watch in these simulations going over to the map and unfortunately the Grizzlies have been eliminated gone we'll be filling this space with nice Atlanta burnt red kind of a little too similar to what the Chicago Bulls look like I wonder should we should we change it to maybe that the yellow that they have on the little claw of this logo I'm in on that it looks hideous but it's the only way to make sure that they don't get confused with the Chicago Bulls so Atlanta's empire is growing as it normally does they have taken over the southern eastern part of america and we will go over to the wheel that's the wrong button go over to the wheel and say thank you memphis vancouver grizzlies but you are gone eliminated as the spinner gets thinner next team on the offensive for nba imperialism is the charlotte hornets all right not too bad not too bad what direction do the hornets want to go they're probably going to get eliminated immediately kimba walker goes to whatever team there is the chance of them taking Virginia if they go directly north but we'll spin the wheel of fortune what direction are they going to go and that looks like the Hawks exactly who we just played yep uh <laughs> good luck Charlotte possible blowout alert Kemba Walker versus Treyeth Young Eddie Jones versus Joe Caldwell Glenn Rice versus LeBron James Larry Jansen versus Bob Pettit and Marcus All versus Alonzo Morning. yes the overalls are possibly comparable but I think <laughs> this is going to be a massive overwhelming blowout the score is going to be 147 to 103 that is my prediction but the underdog team does win the tip Kimba Walker feeds to the post Alonzo Morning versus Marcus All. not much of a mismatch here Zo just trying to go around does not LeBron James grabs the rebound going the other way what does he have in transition being picked up by Eddie Jones I guess and he just passes to a cutting Marcus All. quick easy two points for this Atlanta Hawks squad they're stacked they're loaded and they're ready to win. Their only weak point is Trey Young. And even if they get Kemba Walker, that's still going to be a weak point. They need size at the one. They need size as Kemba pulls up for three. Yeah, that's not a good start for the uh, Charlotte Hornet squad. Kemba is capable of making threes, but you really want him slashing, cutting to the paint, and then maybe doing a drive and kick. Kind of Russell was brooking, honestly. Joe Caldwell from three. Mrs. Baby. 
And Bob Pettit, 99 overall, grabs the rebound. Caldwell pulls up for a long two now, and he splashes. Quick 4-0 lead for the favorites. We'll be hopping into Simcast as it is a blowout. 41 points in the first quarter. Hornets trying to fight back in the second, but good God, look at the score. All right, so I said, what was it? 147-103 was my prediction. We'll see how that plays out. Going to be a little bit off, not 100% right. 138 to 110, but as we expected, domination. Trey Young once again leading the team in scoring, which is bizarre. 28 and 8 for him. LeBron gave you a nice 22, 9 and 13 game. Cliff Hagen, 19, nope, 17, 9 and 6. Bob Pettit, 16, 19 and 9. <laughs> wow. All right, Joe Caldwell gave you 15. Marcus All gave you 15 and 6. Dominique Wilkins off the bench gave you 14, 7 and 5. As for the Hornets, not great. Glenn Rice, 20. Kemba, 19, 5 and 7 is okay. Larry Johnson, 18 and 11 assists. A little more than I was expecting. Gerald Wallace gave you a 17 off the bench, and Eddie Jones was okay 15. Yeah, just not a great game from everybody on the Hornet squad. Looks like Kemba Walker is going to be taking over the starting role for the point guard position over Trey Young because he's, what, two overalls higher, and then Dominique Wilkins continuing to go up in the overalls department as well. He is now a 98 overall. Very impressive, but for whatever reason, they don't want to start him at the two which is bizarre to me because he can play shooting guard, right? Yeah, small forward shooting guard, whatever. I'm not in charge of these decisions. I'm just here to spin the wheel, make sure we go over to the map and tell you that the Charlotte Hornet Bobcats are officially gone, eliminated. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Atlanta's empire continues to grow as they're gonna get a little bit of a logo size boost as well. And you look at the wheel and say, Charlotte, thank you for everything you have done. You are gone, eliminated as the spinner gets thinner. Next team on the offensive is going to be the big favorite San Antonio Spurs who just have so much talent on their team. Looking at them on the map, they are, I think they're going to be picking up a free overall point unless they go directly north to try to take on the Denver Nuggets. And that's fine because they have so much talent already. There's no point in them trying to go in a direction, take out a team with the possibility of losing, heading immediately west. And that is going to be New Mexico, right? Yeah, totally. New Mexico. I know everything about America. As the Spurs silver spreads like an S. TD will be giving them that area, giving them a logo boost, and make sure that they get an overalls boost as well. And who would that be? Dirk? No. Gary Payton? No. Cliff Paul? No. George Gervin? Gonna be next on the list to be getting a nice overall boost because the rest of the guys are not even original Spursonians. <laughs> so they just, they're continuing. They have so much talent. All right, look at, look at, let's look at their roster. So they got Cliff Paul coming in, 97 overall. Gary Payton as the two guard is kind of weird. I don't know why they did that. Kawhi Leonard, 99, Tim Duncan, 99, Dirk, David Robinson, 99, Dirk Nowitzki, 98, and then George Gervin up to a 97. I don't know why they're not playing him at the shooting guard role either. Should I override that? Should I fix that? Maybe in another life, but we will go over to the wheel and say who is next on the list. Who's going to be spinning as the spinner only has about 10, maybe 11 teams left. The Cleveland Cavaliers with the 99 overall Goat James, the next team. And they got a funny looking shape here. They also should probably try to go after this Virginia State, but they could do goat on goat crimes. You could take on the 76ers. You could even take on the Nets and possibly go after all of Canada. Going to be an interesting spot for these Cavaliers. And what direction do the Cavs want to go? They want to go southwest. Can they go southwest? Do they want to take on the Hawks too? Everybody wants to play the Hawks. I think we got a LeBron versus LeBron crime here. Mark Price versus Kemba Walker gonna be fun. Donovan Mitchell versus Dominique Wilkins. LeBron James versus LeBron James. Battle of the Goats. Who do you like more? Because I like LeBron personally, but I think LeBron James may have a chance here. Kevin Love versus Bob Pettit and Wes Unsell Sr. versus Marcus Gasol. It's gonna be a fun one. Now, I don't really know who is the advantage here. Uh, if, the, if the Cavs win, they're gonna take Bob Pettit. But if the, uh, if the Hawks win, you can't have two LeBrons on your team. Can you? I feel like that's not fair. So we'd have to take over Mark Price or something. I don't know. Definitely going to be a good one. LeBron James goes right around former teammate Kevin Love and yams it on him. Throws it on him. Kevin Love's going to try to tackle him because he's so mad. Mark Price bring the ball up the other way for the Cavaliers. I just love the LeBron versus LeBron matchup. And what is the play here? It's to do nothing and give it to Wes Unseld Sr.? Nope, now we got a dribble handoff for Goat James being picked up by Goat James. It feels like those, uh, you ever play like a, a game with the all-time teams? Ooh, miss layup there. And so the announcers have to use those stock generic voices and they're like, Michael Jordan scores the ball on. Michael Jordan, pull up two misses and Marcus Gasol is there on the glass once. Unselled senior, only six foot seven, 
not big enough. LeBron bringing the ball up the other way. What do the Cavs have in it store to answer? They are down 4-0. LeBron James being deed up by LeBron James pulls a kind of a fading long two. Zeros across the board right now for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Bob Pettit pulls up for a long two of his own and he splashes 6-0 lead for these Hawks. We'll see what Simcast has in store as the Cavs are losing in the first. Look at this ridiculous score. 49-43 in the first quarter. Teams used to not score that by like the third quarter sometimes. Boy, have the times changed. And we are in the fourth quarter now. About a 12-15 point game. I think the Hawks are a better team top to bottom. But I think the Cleveland Cavaliers LeBron James is better than the Miami Heat LeBron James by a little bit. But it's not going to be enough as the Cavaliers do fall 125-152. to ridiculous numbers and nobody even had a breakout game they just all played well lebron 23 2 11 3 steals kemba walker 22 4 and 11 in his debut dominique wilkins 21 4 4 marcus Gasol 21 7 and 6 bob pettit 20 11 and 6 lou hudson 19 off the bench cliff hagan 13 and dikembe mutombo gave you 8 and 5 as for the losing lebron james he had a great one 32 2 and 7 donovan mitchell gave you 19 1 5 1 mark price gave you 17 and 10 not great. Kyrie Irving, 4-10-7. Yeah, Cavaliers just come up short. So I said I wasn't going to do it, but LeBron James is the best player on the Cleveland Cavaliers, and they have two separate pictures anyway. So this is the Cleveland LeBron James now coming over. A little older, a little wiser, a few championships under his belt. Learned how to play the game from Dwayne Wade, whereas the Miami Heat LeBron James is still figuring this out, and he still wears a headband. You know, his hairline isn't completely on the top of his head like Stephen A. Smith. And then the one overall boost is going to go to Dominique Wilkins. So not your conventional roster when you have four 99 overalls, but three of them are small forwards. One of them is a power forward and two of them are LeBron James and LeBron James. I mean, <laughs> fun team for sure, but the Cavaliers do fall. Make sure we eliminate them off the map. And the Atlanta Hawks have this weird kind of global, globally, globally goop shape going on here i don't even know how to describe it but the chicago bulls are definitely gonna have to go through the hawks if they want any chance of winning unfortunately cleveland cavaliers have been eliminated gone as the spinner gets thinner we're coming down to the home stretch as the denver nuggets look to be the next team on the offensive forward this year's imperialism and what direction do the nuggets want to go they're gonna have to go through the spurs uh the empty state of new mexico has already been taken there's a couple of free states up here to the north but we'll see what the Wheel of Fortune directs them to do. Spin, spin, spin the wheel. Which way are they going to go? I think that is the Warriors. I don't know if I can mold this to be a, a Montana play. Yeah. And a bunch of really good players in this matchup. Fat Lever versus Stephanie Curry. Oscar Robertson. I moved him to the starting lineup. I didn't do a position change, though. Versus Alex English, who's a 97 overall. Carmelo Anthony versus Kawhi Leonard. Kevin Durant versus Charles Barkley. Nikola Jokic versus Will Chamberlain. So many 99s, 98s, 97s in this game. This is going to be a fun one. The only reason I'm saying the Warriors win is because they're the home team. Other than that, this is about as push as you can get. Also, Steph Curry in simulation sucks as i struggle to say the word simulation oscar robertson operating out of the post being picked up by a bigger alex english i think maybe oscar back to the basket jump hook gonna miss this because that was a bad shot nikola Jokic bringing the ball up the other way joker does have some versatility on the offensive end that wilt is gonna struggle with as chuck puts up a horrible shot but at the same time joker can't play defense kevin durant bringing the ball up the other way being picked up by a much shorter charles barkley and steph misses a wide open three ugh I hate <laughs> so much how disrespectful 2K and the 2K gods are to Steph Curry when he plays. He just, he makes shots that he shouldn't. And 2K, the formula that calculates if a shot should go in or not, does not know how to deal with that. Oscar being deed up by Charles Barkley. Sir Charles Barkley. And Kawhi Leonard. He's going to accept the screen. Take a long two. And misses. Ooh, Wilt on the rebound. But he misses because that was a weird shot. Charles Barkley grabs the rebound of his own now he's bringing the ball up the other way has Steph Curry guarding him and does he just go right to the post no he does not we're going to Fat Lever who's being picked up by the best defender on the other team Kawhi Leonard and now there you go go to the post with Chuck goes right around Steph Curry and he throws it down the reverse dunk Sir Charles Barkley gets the elevation that's uh I mean yeah that's exactly what you call for I don't know if Chuck could dunk like that in his heyday but uh especially not when he was fat Hopping into the Simcast and the Nuggets have a little bit of lead back and forth game here going into halftime. Now the Warriors have a small lead. 
kind of a lower scoring contest than you'd expect. Still a small lead, and this is definitely one of those games that we're going to have to hop in. I say that, and the Warriors are extending their lead. Look at this 10 point game, five minutes left, 14 point game. The Nuggets are stuck at 19 points. Finally, get some scores in the fourth quarter, but they just completely collapsed out here in the fourth quarter as they fall 115 101. Steph was really good, 19 5 and 9. Kevin Durant gave you 19 5 and 6. Rick Berry, 19 6 and 5. Wilt. Gave you 17 and 13, and Oscar gave you 14 and 11 as for the Nuggets. Alex English was incredible, 26 points for him. David Thompson off the bench gave you 20, but the starters did not produce. Nikola Jokic only 13, 12, and 6. Charles Barkley only 11 and 9. Dane Isol 11 off the bench. Carmelo only gave you 9 points, 3 of 12 shooting. That hurts, and Fat Lever gave you a big old 0. 11 assists is fine, 6 rebounds is fine, but 0 of 10 from the field, 0 of 5 from 3. Probably why they lost the game. Going to be sending over Nikola Jokic, who's a 99 overall, but he's going to be coming off the bench as the seventh man because Oscar Robertson is here. So a 99 overall, seventh man. Kevin Durant, I'm, I don't even know who to give this one overall boost to. So Steph is already 99. Kevin's already 99. Wilt's already 99. Oscar's already 99. Joker's already 99. Kawhi Leonard is a free agent. So I guess Rick Barry is the next Golden State Warrior up to a 97 Overall, there is a lot of talent on this Warriors team, and there is also a lot of color of Warriors on this map. Denver Nuggets eliminated, gone, as the Golden State Warriors logo grow, and they're going to have a head-to-head -head coming up with the Spurs in the very short future. Go over to the wheel and make sure you say thank you, Denver, for everything that you have done, but you are gone as the spinner gets thinner. Next team on the offensive is going to be the aforementioned Golden State Warriors. I'm not opposed to them going immediately after another team invades their territory. It's fine. Normally, I hate back-to-backs, but it wasn't their fault. Looking at the map, they're going to take some empty states. Portland is effectively trapped. Going to be a fun one. Let's see what direction the Wheel of Fortune has in store for your Golden State Warriors. And I don't think they can go that way. That's, of all the directions, that's literally the one that they cannot go. They want to go that way? Yeah, northeast. Is this a Montana play or some of those empty states? You know, because I like making funny shapes for these teams i'm gonna give them this one which i'm totally not making up right now is south dakota not everything needs to be logical and perfect so the warriors have taken over south dakota why because i said so and we'll give them another overall boost as well going to rick barry now he's a 98 overall and he's the six man right or are they gonna start him oh they just want rick barry to start over Kawhi leonard that'll work yeah so Kawhi leonard is now the eighth man off the bench there's just so much talent on this team Okay, next team on the offensive, and I'm going to shake up the wheel a little bit if we do like this. Oh my god, the wheel looks so much different now. Spinning, spinning, spinning to winning. Who's going to go next? And those aforementioned San Antonio Spurs look like they want to go on the offensive. What direction can the Spurs go? They got to take the Warriors on, and then they got a couple of free points. A small smidge of a chance that they could take on the Atlanta Hawks as well. But we will spin, spin, spin to win. Which way do you want to go? Is that... Yeah, we'll give them a, 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 a state that I know is Arkansas, yeah. San Antonio Silver spreading, and I just want to get some of these empty states off. That way, in the finale, we can just have teams take on teams, take on teams. Go over to those aforementioned San Antonio Spurs. That's the wrong button. Hold on, press this, and boom, boom, boom. And who's going to get the overall bump from them? So they got 399 overalls homegrown. You got Dirk. I guess George Gervin is going to now be a 98 overall, which is absolutely ridiculous. So they got 99, 99, 99, 98, 98, 97, 97, 96, 90. I'm just, it's so funny seeing how good these teams get as we round out NBA imperialism. Spinning the wheel, we're spinning the wheel. Now who's going to go with next? And it looks like the Boston Celtics in the, in the Northeastern there. I don't know why I use Canadian accent is going to be going. So they have taken one state the smallest state in america they have some maine new hampshire connecticut or the brooklyn new jersey nets they'll be having to take on we'll spin the wheel and what direction do the gods have in store for your celtics directly south that will be i guess we'll give them connecticut right that's fine just a small boom for them not really a logo growth and that's why it's kind of hard for the celtics to get to, to, to go anywhere until the end of the game rolls around but they will get a one overall boost because one state equals one state, just like in the Senate. And John Havlicek now joining the 99 overall squad. Some more homegrown talent for them. John Havlicek, 99. Larry Legend, 99. And Bill Russell. Mr. Bill Russell is a 99 overall as well. The next team that's going to be spinning, the next team that's on the offensive, 
is the 76ers. Not bad, not bad. They've only had one go, apparently. Normally, the Sixers get a lot of run just because of where they are. They're going to have to take on the Hawks or the Nets. Really as simple as that. We're going to have a fun matchup. Spin this wheel. And what direction are the Sixers going to go on the offensive? They are taking on the Brooklyn, New Jersey Nets. Allen Iverson versus a 99 overall. Walt Frazier. Drazen Petrovic versus Hal Greer. Julius Serving versus Julius Serving. Kevin Durant versus Charles Barkley. And Wilt Chamberlain versus Brooke Lopez gonna be an interesting one i think hmm i'm not even sure who i would take also i love that dr j has the exact same model for both teams uh i will say the 76ers win because i like alan iverson <laughs> that's really it there's no other logic behind it will chamberlain uh giving to a post up for dr j who posts up on dr j and he hits the shot over dr j dr j with the j <laughs> 2-0 lead for the road Philadelphia 76ers on the offensive, on the attack. AI picks up Wall Frazier. And what kind of play do we have going here? We got Kevin Durant on Charles Barkley. Could be a mismatch in the size department. And it is as Kevin Durant almost hits the end one. And we're going to the free throw line. Not going to be watching any free throws because I hate watching free throws as we go into Simcast. Back and forth game here into the first quarter. Going into halftime. Still a back and forth game. Going into the third quarter. Still a back and forth game. High scoring gods. It's 99, 117, 105. 76ers have a little bit of a lead here. If the Nets can make a little bit of a run. Ooh, looks like they're getting smacked. They're getting blown out. It is a 15, 20 point victory as the fourth quarter was dominated by the Philadelphia 76ers on the offensive, on the attack, and on the victory. Julie Serving was really good. 26, 2, and 5 in a losing effort. Kevin Durant gave you 21, 5, and 7. That's okay, not great. Razan Petrovic, 18 points. Brooke Lopez, okay. Walt Frazier did not do much. 13, 3, and 8. For a 99 overall. Not sure how I feel about that. The rest of the team was not good for the Nets. As for the 76ers, AI 28, 3, and 6. Joe L MB 25 off the bench. Moses Malone 24 off the bench. Too many good centers. Charles Barkley gave you 17. Will Chamberlain gave you 15 and 11. Dr. J gave you 13, 7, and 12 on Dr. J. I wish we could have saw the Dr. J matchup, but it looks like Julie Serving wins. Kevin Durant going to be coming over from the Nets as a 99 overall. Will Chamberlain is already a 99 overall and Julius Serving with the one overall boost is going to be a 99 overall. So the 76ers with that one victory go from one to three 99 overalls in one fell swoop. And then off the bench, we're going to have Joel Embiid, Moses Malone, Allen Iverson, Charles Barkley only in 96, but the 76ers, <laughs> 76ers uh, have a pretty good team of their own. Make sure we go over and fix the map, update it, because the 76ers have taken out all of this land that the Nets have. It appears that taking over Canada does absolutely nothing for these victorious teams as 76er Blue takes over and the Nets officially gone. Give the 76ers a bit of a logo boost and the teams are starting to run out. We're coming into the home stretch here. Take a quick peek at the wheel. How many teams are left because it was the Brooklyn Nets gone so we have one two three four five six seven eight teams left in nba imperialism all times updated and the milwaukee bucks are going to be the next team on the offensive go ahead and look at them so they got the bulls they got the sixers and a couple of empty states and the hawks as well they could really theoretically do almost anything we'll spin the wheel of fortune determine which direction do the bucks want to go and that is going to be North Dakota and City Moncrief given that one overall boost now a 96 overall not too bad filling out these empty states normally what I have to do once we get to this point is is forcefully assign states we've done a pretty good job at filling these states out so we're gonna spin the wheel again and who wants to be next on the wheel the Atlanta Hawks who seem to be the busiest most active team in this next round of imperialism are going Again, what direction are the Hawks going to go? There are so many directions, so many possibilities, so many empty states, and maybe even the Chicago Bulls or the Bucks or the 76ers or the Spurs. Uh, they could really do anything. We'll spin the wheel. See you where it's going to take them. And that is a Northwest result. I, just for the sake of giving funny shapes, am going to give them, going to give them Nebraska. Filling out a, probably one of the final few states that are left the final few overall points that are available. So the Atlanta Hawks have this really bizarre looking stretch of land, but that is the empire 
of Atlanta. And who's going to get the one overall boost? Dominique's already 99. You got Bob Pettit, 99. LeBron James, 99. LeBron James, 99. Marcus Saul, not part of the team. So I guess Cliff Hagen is going to be jumping up to a 94 overall. Not really the most flashy or tantalizing name, but 99s are good enough for good enough. And the goal, the Spurs are on the offensive. Been a while since we saw them. One team that we are not seeing whatsoever is the Bulls. Kind of disappointed, but we'll look at the Spurs. There's one empty state, then it could be Warriors or Hawks. Not too many options are left as we spin the wheel. What direction do the San Antonio Spurs want to go? And is that going to be the final state? That should be the Hawks. But you know what? For the sake of me, we're going to give them the final state that is... Mississippi. Just clear off this final state here. Make sure that everybody is doing what they should. A little bit of a logo boost. San Antonio is taking over the southern part of America. And M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I is officially part of the San Antonio Spurs Silvers. And I believe that makes George Gervin joining the 99 overall squad, pairing him up with the other homegrown talents, Duncan Robinson, nope, David Robinson, Tim Duncan, and Kawhi Leonard, who's going to go on the offensive next as we spin the wheel, eight teams left, somebody's gonna have to play somebody at some point, and the Chicago Bulls finally get a go. Unfortunately for the Bulls, they have no empty states, they're gonna have to play somebody, it's gonna be the Hawks, or gonna be the Bucks. Yeah, that's it, they can't play the 76ers, they... The Hawks have taken over this really bizarre stretch of land, so they're going to have to go through Atlanta to the south, Milwaukee to the north. Let's see what the wheel determines, and that's Milwaukee. Definitely a tough matchup for Goat Jordan, but I have full faith in him. Derrick Rose versus Isaiah Thomas, but Michael Jordan versus Oscar Robertson. Everybody 99 overalls there. Scottie Pippen versus Giannis. Dennis Robin versus Kevin Garnett, and Artis Gilmore versus Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. If you remember, the Bulls have Reggie Miller. I played with going a little bit small. I just think that Dennis Rodman is needed for defensive purposes. Giannis is too tall. Kevin Garnett is too tall. So these are the lineups that we're going to be rocking. Standard issue as Michael Jordan is going to get the first possession of the game. The first play run for him. Looks like Derrick Rose getting a couple of Iverson cuts. Passes. Open for three. Can he shoot? He cannot. Wide open and he chokes. And the Bulls probably are the underdogs if we're being completely honest here. I mean, there's just so many 99s on the Bucks, but then again, the Bucks don't have much depth. Also, the Bulls don't have a lot of great shooting. Looks like Giannis is just going right into the paint, throwing it down. Don't know what happened to the defense. They fell asleep. And we'll see how Michael Jeffrey Jordan can respond. He's going to take 8,000 shots and miss 8,000 shots, but he will hit his 8,000 and first as the pass to Artis Gilmore, to Jordan in the post, to a jump hook. Kind of weird offense being run here for the Chicago Bulls to start out this one. Kevin Garnett bringing the ball up the court, being picked up by Michael Jordan. Weird mismatch there. And we got a post up for Kareem on Gilmore. Look at the froze, look at the hair, look at the facial hair, look at the mutton chops, and Kareem hits the sky hook. Most unstoppable shot in the NBA. Hopping into Simcast, and the Bulls have a lead here, but it's a back and forth game going into halftime. Now the Bucks have a little bit of a lead here. Nine points, eight points. Pretty close, not gonna call this one just yet. Low scoring contest, six minutes left. Now the Bulls have a lead, and this is definitely going to be one of those games that we watch as they close out. Two minutes, 10 seconds left. Bulls have a 106-103 lead. We're watching highlights of stuff that happened in the first quarter. You'll love to see it. Isaiah Thomas being picked up by, I think, is that Ron Harper? Wide open for three. IT cannot hit, and Scottie Pippen brings the ball the other way. I don't see Michael Jordan. That's Reggie Miller. <laughs> I forget they didn't have Reggie face scan, so he just looks funny. Reggie getting a screen from Michael Jordan. Never thought you'd say that. Michael Jordan kind of open for three. Doesn't take it. Oscar picking him up. And now they're kicking to Zach Levine. And now it's a dribble handoff. And Michael's kicking it to a wide open Reggie Miller for three. Bang! Big shot from Reggie. Reggie in a Bulls uniform does not look right. But that three-point stroke does. As there is a six-point lead now for the Chicago Bulls. Looking to most likely upset. I don't know how you would describe it any other way. These Bucks. And we got Dennis Rodman, Von Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Size, problem. Defense, not. As look at that tough shot, but Kareem does get it up and over. 109, 105, 1 minute, 28 seconds left in this one. Scotty Pippen on the inbound, kicks it to a point guard, Derek Rose, in his prime pre-injuries. And the crowd is just hyped. This is such an electric matchup. Dennis sets the screen. A three for Derek Rose. Probably not the shot that they drew up in the after time out. Also, they subbed out Michael Jordan. Coach, 
Coach, why would you sub out Michael Jordan? I know Reggie Miller's good as he comes over for a double team. Doesn't really work. Leaving a wide open Sidney Moncrief in the corner. And he misses. And Kevin Garnett grabs the rebound over Scottie Pippen. Uh, I can't root for Michael Jordan if he's not in the game. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? Whatever. 2K is as 2K does and Derrick Rose pulls up for a long two and he misses. That's an ugly shot. If only Michael Jordan took that shot. Isaiah Thomas bringing the ball up the other way. Still down by four. Two possession game for the Bucks. They're going to need to run some offense, get some defensive stops. Giannis cutting, kicks it to an open Sidney Moncrief again. Hand in his face. He misses. Giannis on the offensive glass, kicks it to Isaiah Thomas, who drives on the closeout defender, gets his shit rejected, but there is Kareem who misses. Oh, the Bucks cannot buy a bucket. Yeah, that's probably the smart thing to do. Reggie Miller does get the ball, and he's going to the free throw line. Going to clutch this one out as it looks like the, bull, the Bulls, in spite of not playing Michael Jordan, win this one. Whoever made this character model of Reggie Miller was not very talented because, good lord, that looks nothing like the man. Just going to watch the final possession of this one as the Bucks are probably going to run some horrible play because the CPU doesn't know how to play itself in 2K23. Neither does the camera, for whatever reason. Here's Giannis on the inbound, just drives hard, kicks it. City Moncrief gonna shoot. There it is. And he misses. And the Bulls do, in fact, win this one. The Bucks still try to play the foul game, but they come up six points short. Great defense from the Bucks. Giannis had a good one, 25, 11, and 5. Isaiah Thomas was pretty good, 21, 1, and 6. Oscar gave you 13. Marquez Johnson gave you 13. Kareem gave you 12 and 13. Had to be a little bit more impactful. Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen were okay. As for the Bulls, Michael Jordan, they just subbed him out. He was their best performer. He wasn't in foul trouble. They just said, you know what? We want Reggie Miller instead of a 28-4 and 9 with three steals. Michael, Jeffrey Jordan, Derrick Rose was pretty good. 23-3 and 7. Reggie Miller gave you 13 and 6. Jimmy buckets off the bench. 13 and 22. Playoff Jimmy is real. Scotty Pippen gave you a 12, 7, 8, and Art Gilmer gave you 10 and 12. So we can pick any of three people. We got Oscar Robertson. He could take over Derrick Rose's spot. You have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He could take over Art Gilmer's spot. Or we have Giannis who can take over all the other spots. And I think I'm going to go with Giannis so we can take over for Scotty Pippen a little more offensive versatility while still providing that same defensive intensity. Because Art Gilmer, I mean, he's a center. Centers aren't that impactful in simulation. Also, look how blurry this picture is. Giannis is a 99 overall, then Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, and then theoretically we could find a point guard replacement for Derrick Rose as well. So I'm just going to rock with this choice. Giannis into the Kupo, 99 overall. Michael Jordan, of course, already a 99 overall. And Scottie Pippen is now joining the 99 overall squad. Bulls starting to get pretty good here, all thanks to Michael Jeffrey Jordan Jr. the third going over to Photoshop and the Milwaukee Bucks officially gone as the bulls get off to a late start in their seek and quest for empire imperialism domination but they do have a large swath of land there and go over to the wheel thank you milwaukee for what you have done but you are officially eliminated gone as the spinner gets thinner and then there were seven and the fast and celtics are going to be next on the list a couple of storied franchises going back to back what direction do the celtics want to go they have three states they got the 76ers, or they could take out another state. <laughs> kind of funny spots that they're always in, but we'll spin the Wheel of Fortune. What direction does NBA imperialism want them to go? And I think that's directly taken on the Philadelphia 76ers. Bob Cousy versus Allen Iverson. John Havlicek versus a 99 overall Julie Serving. Kevin Durant versus Larry Bird. Gonna be a great one. Kevin Garnett versus Charles Barkley. And Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain versus Bill Russell, who Bill frequently got the upper hand on, even though Wilt Chamberlain's statistical numbers are unprecedented. Here we are in Philadelphia as the Celtics win the tip. They are the offensive team. And they are looking to take out Philadelphia. That John Havlicek being picked up by Dr. J. And uh, okay, going to the post. Havlicek with a kind of a weird fading <laughs> jumper that he runs into another player. Not sure what that position was, but Charles Barkley gives it. Talon Iverson, they're going the other way. AI, mean, crossover, lethal. But that's not going to show up in this game because 2K does not do fun dribble moves. Kevin Durant pulls up for a long two, being guarded by Larry Bird. It doesn't matter. Kevin Durant, so smooth. Larry Bird, not a, he's a, a questionable defender. He's one of those like Nikola Jokic's smart, but not very athletic when it comes to the defensive end. Bob Cousy now going back to the post for John Havlicek. Don't know why they keep trying to attack this quote unquote mismatch. He misses, gets his rebound, misses again. Great defense from Dr. J and he's running the other way. Let's see what Dr. J can do, baby. 
And they kick it to Allen Iverson for a long two. Not a great shot there. I mean, if it's at least a three, you're going to get that one extra point if you make it. The point per possessions really matter when it comes to uh, uh, analytics, which I'm sure everybody loves. Got another ISO for John Havlicek here. Larry Bird grabs the three. Misses. Everybody's missing this one. It is still a two. Zero game, almost 90 seconds into the contest. Dr. J gives up the pass, and Allen Iverson is going to run the offense. Who is this going to go to? It looks like Charles Barkley going to get an open shot. Isoing up on Kevin Garnett, spinning for no reason, and he goes to the free throw line, and we are not going to be watching that. Hopping into Simcast, 76ers have a little bit of a lead here going into the second quarter. Still a lead at halftime, but a close enough game that we may hop in, and the Celtics now have taken the lead. Now they've got a 10-point lead. Wow, look at this fourth quarter. Might be close. 76ers need to go on a little bit of a run. 10-point game, 11-point game. It's close, but it's not close enough. 8-point game, 5-point game, 1 minute left. 8-point game, 5-point game, 7-point game, 4-point game. They keep fighting. Here we go. 3-point game, 139, 136, 45 seconds left. 76ers need to stop bad here. Larry calling for it. Kuzi calling for it. And Larry does get the ball. He just immediately pulls up. No hesitation. They didn't even try to waste some clock. And the 76ers are coming the other way. Dr. J with the dribble moves. Down by three. They need a score. Camera man is drunk. Here's Allen Iverson once again for a long two. And he misses. Bill Russell grabs the ball and they're not fouling. There's only a seven second clock differential. And now they do foul because the CPU is dumb. We got Bob Cousy going to go to the free throw line. Make this a two possession game. And the Philadelphia 76ers are going to call a timeout. Right after the make. 76ers need a score bad. And what do they have in store for your team? Here's AI with the ball. Dribbling. Joel Embiid going to come set a screen on the wrong side of Bob Cousy. Nothing is happening here. Kicks it to a long two for Dr. J. Wide open and he misses. And that is going to be game. The Boston Celtics look like they are going to advance. 144, 136. High scoring contest. But the 76ers do fall. Will Chamberlain was okay. 23, 10, and 9. Almost a triple double for him. Allen Iverson as well. 21, 1 and 13. Dr. J was ugh, serviceable, 17, 8 and 5 on 16 shots. Kevin Durant was pretty quiet. Charles Barkley only gave you 16. Joel Embiid, they just couldn't play defense when it mattered most. Jason Tatum, 24 points in 22 minutes. Bill Russell once again gets the upper hand of Wilt Chamberlain. Might have had the better team. Bob Cousy was really good, 26 and 10. Bill Sharman off the bench, 20 points for him. John Havlicek, 17 and 9. Kevin McGill was good. Kevin Garnett. Larry Bird, though, hugely disappointing. Only 8 points in 33 minutes but 15 assists so we'll be sending over dr julie is serving to the celtics finally add a little color to their team <laughs> he will take over i guess jalen brown's spot and then they'll look something like bob Cousy, i guess john havlicek at the two dr j at the three larry bird at the four bill russell at the five that's a pretty mean lineup and the one overall boost is going to go to i guess kevin McHale off the bench because everybody else is already a 99 overall there's someone to damn 99 overalls. Actually, we'll give it to Bob Cousy because it looks like he's going to end up being the starting point guard for them. Anyway, now up to a 95 overall. But the Celtics have a mean, lean team that's full of piss and green. I'm telling you, man, whichever team takes over Canada inevitably loses. I think it's just bad luck. And the Celtics beginning to take over their stretch of America. We have what? One, two, three, four, five teams left. And the Portland Trailblazers, if they ever get a turn, are going to lose immediately to the Warriors or the Celtics, respectively. But thank you, Philadelphia, for being part of NBA imperialism. You are gone. Eliminated. And the spinner gets thinner. And then there were six. And speaking of the Portland Trail Blazers, looks like they are next on the wheel. So <laughs> their directions are as such. You go north, you take the Celtics. You go any other direction, you take the Warriors. You can't go to the west. Simple as that. What direction does the wheel want to take them? And that looks, I mean, oh boy. It's about as, uh indecisive as you can get here i'm gonna say it's the warriors just because we literally just did the celtics five seconds ago damian lillard versus stephanie curry brandon roy versus oscar robertson brick berry versus Clyde drexler rashid wallace versus kevin durant and will chamberlain versus bill walton i think this is going to be a beat down smack down blowout but you never know the lakers did lose to the clippers this is a one game winner take all nba imperialism experience and the tip goes to the home team Golden State Warriors. Stephanie Curry bringing the ball up the other way. And what do the Warriors have in store for their first play of the game? Going to Kevin Durant being picked up by Rasheed Wallace. Definitely a good mismatch there on the defensive end because Sheed was a monster in his prime. Can he keep up, I guess, athletically with Kevin Durant? 
Probably not. And the Warriors do miss their first shot of the game. Damian Lillard being picked up by Kevin Durant. Six foot one versus seven feet tall. And Dane pulls up and does miss. But that is a wide open shot. He probably should make that if they're looking to pull off the upset. Not a good start for the Trailblazers. Steph Curry goes right around Dame. Gets him shook. Doesn't take advantage. We have a mismatch. Double comes over. Kevin Durant takes the contested three. And he misses. But there's Wilt on the glass. And he gets his shit rejected. But he gets the ball back. Wow. Wild first quarter. Wild first minute. Steph goes right around and goes to the free throw line. And we are going to be hopping into Simcast. Mostly because this is not going to be a good game. Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo. What's happening? <laughs> the Trailblazers are winning here in the first quarter. Now it's a back and forth game at halftime. That was probably about as close as you get to an upset because now the Warriors are starting to rock and roll game is it's out of hand. It's over. It's still a nine point game, but I mean, the Blazers fought. You got to give them credit. You got to give them a plus for effort. They only lose by 17 as this one closes out ugly. First quarter was good. Kawhi Leonard, 24 points in 25 minutes. Rick Barry, 22, four and eight. Steph Curry gave you 18. Kevin Durant, 17 and Wilt the Stilt, 13 and 13. As for the Blazers, Brandon Leroy came out to play. So did Dame. Clyde was okay, just not enough help from the rest of the team. Rasheed Wallace gave you five points in 32 minutes. Going to be sitting over Clyde Drexler, and maybe he takes over his starting shooting guard over uh, Oscar and Klay Thompson. So Clyde Drexler, 97 overall. And Rick Barry looks like he's going to be joining the 99 overall squad as well for the Golden State Warriors. Not too bad of a victory if I do say so myself. Make sure we go to the map. Say thank you, everything, but Portland, you are gone. Eliminated as this all becomes part of the nation, the imperial world of the Golden State Warriors. They've officially dominated the West Coast of America. Now they want to spread their wings into Montana. Take the trailblazers off the wheel. Bam, gone as the spinner gets thinner. And then there were five. Only five teams left on the wheel as the Boston Celtics, who have been fairly active recently, Look like they're going to go on the offensive. We look at them on the wheel. There's Montana, there's Maine, there's New Hampshire, and then Virginia way down here is the only other possible state for teams to go after before it is only team versus team, nation versus nation left. So we'll spin the wheel, see where the Celtics want to go. Do they want to get a free overall point or do they want to go to the South and take on the Hawks? You know what I'm going to do? I don't think you're going to... I don't think y'all are going to like this, but what I'm going to do is say you look at the wheel and let's just imagine that the Celtics are part of Canada and they're going to march into Montana. All right. Just so we can start to empty out this map. This is probably one of those. Nobody was a fan of that moments, the walking dead and whatever, but we're just doing it because we need to get this off. Montana, officially a state of the Celtic empire. Bob Cousy, the point guard going up to a 96 overall. And who's going to be next on the wheel? Celtics went last, five teams left, and the Golden State Warriors again? Ooh, okay. That's what I get for trying to be a little cheeky. All right, so the Warriors have a massive empire of land here. They could take on the Celtics, could take on the Bulls, could take on the Hawks, or could take on the Spurs. We'll go ahead and spin the wheel and determine what direction are your Golden State Warriors going to go. And you can't, <laughs> that's the one direction you can't go. You literally can't go that way. Try again, Golden State. What direction are you... you what direction are they going to go? And we'll spin and... Oh, boy. I'm going to say that is Atlanta. Yeah. It could be the Spurs. I get that. I think the Spurs are more south than they are east. So let's do, let's do Warriors at the Hawks. Steph Curry versus Kemba Walker going to be a mismatch, but the rest of this is pretty good. Clyde Drexler versus Dominique Wilkins, LeBron James versus Rick Barry, Kevin Durant versus Bob Pettit, and Wilt Chamberlain versus Marc Gasol. Probably the only other significant mismatch for the Hawks, but there are two LeBron Jameses out there for the Hawks to rock and roll, and we will see how this one plays out as the Golden State Warriors do, in fact, win the tip. Steph Curry brings the ball up the other way. Now, what is the first play going to be run this one? A long 30-foot three for Kevin Durant? Not sure if that's what they intended to draw up. Dominique Wilkins coming the other way. Now, Kimball Walker being picked up by Stephanie Curry with the dribble handoff. And going to get a screen for Bob Pettit. Goes right around. Goes right into the body, into the chest of Kevin Durant. And we get an and one for Bob Pettit. All right. Okay, all right, not a bad start to this one. We're going to watch a little bit of the free throw because it's only one, and Bob Pettit does convert for a quick 3-0 lead for the home team, Atlanta Hawks. Warriors on the offensive, that means they are the away team. 
And what does Wilt Chamberlain have in store for this? Rick Barry going into the post, being deed up by LeBron James. Not much of a mismatch there. 99 versus 99. Seth Curry running off screens. Contested three misses. Marcus All grabs the rebound. And the Hawks looking to advance their lead. Up three points right now. Another screen from Bob Pettit. The slashing Kemba Walker comes. Passes it off. Bob Pettit gets a contested shot. Great defense from Kevin Durant. Who is a great weak side defender in his prime. He's kind of starting to hit the downside of his prime. So he's not quite the defender that he used to be. Rick Barry being picked up by LeBron James. Now we have Clyde Drexler versus Dominique Wilkins. Fun matchup there for sure. And a big long setback to misses Wilt Chamberlain on the glass. And he throws it down. And that is how you score your first two points of the game. Hopping into Simcast. Got a back and forth one here in the first quarter. Still a back and forth game going into halftime. Warriors have a little bit of a lead here now. Eight points, nine points going into the fourth quarter. We'll see if the Hawks can figure out a way to respond. It looks like this one might be getting away from them though. Nine point game, five point game, nine point game. It's close. Oh, it's a one point game now. Three minutes left. Back and forth game. And we'll hop in with about two. One minute, 56 seconds left is good enough for me. Here's Will Chamberlain ducking the ball back in the fourth quarter. Even though it's the fourth quarter now, don't you want to see highlights from the first quarter? That's the way God intended. Inbounding the ball for the Hawks. One point deficit. One minute, 56 seconds left. LeBron James being picked up by Clyde Drexler. LeBron James being picked up by Kevin Durant. <laughs> it's, I, I don't know why we put two LeBrons on the same team that are 99 overalls. But here's a, wow, perfect pass to the rolling Marcus Gasol. Defensive breakdown there as Joker was not able to defend both people. And I think that was Clyde Drexler who did not tag the roller. Uh, game? I'm not controlling anything, right? Game? 2K broke again, didn't it? Oh, no, they're inbounding now. All right, cool. Yeah, they just decided to inbound. <laughs> I love this game. Steph Curry just pulls up for a long three and misses. I love this game. Don't you? LeBron James bringing the ball up the other way. Being picked up by nobody at this point. No look pass to Steph Curry's uh, not able to block Dominique Wilkins. And the Hawks are starting to roll here. LeBron, no look. Steph Curry, useless. Dominique gets fouled, it looks like. And the help defense did not come by quick enough. Steph Curry now bringing the ball up the other way. No Kemba Walker. Steph Curry going to take another three and miss, right? Yeah. Nikola Jokic on the offensive glass, so puts it back up. Only a one-point deficit, 143-144. Really high-scoring contest yet again. We'll see what the Hawks have in store on their side. Steph Curry is ice cold. He continues to miss long, difficult threes. Kind of doubling LeBron James here. Nothing comes out of it. LeBron now going right into the body of Nikola Jokic, who stands up. But the putback is there for Dominique Wilkins. 146-143. Only one minute left in this one. How are the Warriors going to respond? Is Steph Curry going to take another unnecessary three? Looks like he might be open. Kicks it to the post. We got Nikola Jokic versus Marcus Gasol, who alley oops it to a backdoor cutting Clyde Drexler. Dominique, nope. LeBron James, for some reason, was out of bounds on that. Just got completely lost. Good response, and 2K is broken again. So, uh, how are you guys doing? How's the weather there? You, uh, you enjoying this part of the month that you're watching this video? The week? The day? Oh, the inbound is in! Okay, LeBron James bringing the ball up the other way. <laughs> uh, is uh, being picked up. Oh, wow, just another perfect backdoor cut. The LeBron to LeBron connection is real. Look at LeBron here. Make eye contact with LeBron and say, I got you. <laughs> and uh, maybe LeBron and LeBron being on the same team is a glitch. Here are the Warriors coming back the other way. And Nikola Jokic gets the ball, shoots it, misses. Three-point deficit now, only a 12-second differential between shot clock and game clock. LeBron being doubled, takes a long two, and he makes it! He converts. The Warriors call their final timeout, and it is desperation time for the advancing, attacking Golden State Warriors. Who are they going to go to? How are they going to respond? They got all the talent in the world, but they cannot get their shots to go in. Steph Curry has been subbed out. Inbound is in, and Clyde Drexler gets the ball. Is he going to pull up? Nope. Kevin Durant way deep in the post, kicks it, and Oscar doesn't know what he's doing. Now Kevin Durant doesn't know what he's doing. Now Oscar doesn't know what he's doing, and he pulls up for a long contested two-hand in his face, and he misses. Terrible offense for the Golden State Warriors, and for whatever reason, they A, did not go for a three, B, did not go for a quick shot, and C, end up with a contested long two from Oscar Robertson to try and close out the game, and it looks like the Golden State Warriors are going to fall. And that might be the final West Coast team that we have besides the Spurs. 
interesting result as LeBron James misses a couple of free throws because he is not clutch. The door is still open. Somebody needs to make a three. Here's Kevin Durant. Bang! Exactly what the doctor ordered. Hawks call their final timeout. Two point deficit, 7.9 seconds left. And here's the inbound. The only thing I can say is don't give it to LeBron and they do give it to LeBron. Missed two clutch free throws just before. Let's see what he does here. The first one is up and oh, LeBron is choking. Miami Heat could never shoot. Greg Popovich is waving off the defenders. Back off. He goes over for two again. The door is still open. Five seconds left. What do the Warriors have in response? Oscar bringing the ball up the other way. He goes up for a contested shot. Misses. And that is how the Warriors season ends in tragic fashion. Two terrible shots from Oscar Robertson and the Golden State Warriors fall to the Atlanta Hawks in a sad fashion. 150 to 148. Marcus Saul had himself a game. 31, 4, and 3. LeBron was good. 29, 9, and 10. Dominique was good, 24, 6, and 6. Bob Pettit gave you 24, 12, and 7. Great contributions from the depth of the Hawks. As for the Warriors, they just were a little bit lesser. Oscar Robertson kind of choked in the final stretch. So did LeBron, but Oscar Robertson's misses were more impactful. 24, 8, and 8. Clyde was okay, 23, 5, 5. Rick Barry, 21. Wilt, 20. Steph Curry gave you 18, 4, and 11, but was subbed out. Weirdly, in the final stretches, Kevin Durant gave you a 17, 8, 9. The Joker off the bench gave you 11, 4, and 6. So instead of Steph Curry, I'm going to be sending over Wilt Chamberlain to take over the starting center role from Marcus Gasol. I feel like LeBron James, if we really need to, could sub him in at the point guard position. He's going to be an automatic mismatch no matter who he guards, as you saw in the final stretches of those minutes. And who's going to get the final overall boost here? Got too many 99 overalls. I think Cliff Hagen is going to be accepting, receiving now a 95 overall unfortunate end for the Golden State Warriors took over all of the California and the West Coast but eventually they do fall and Atlanta forming a weird coast to coast thing going on here and the final West Coast team is San Antonio have three states left to fill out uh yeah so we'll just keep spinning the wheel go over here say thank you Golden State for being competitive but you are gone eliminated and then there were four so we'll try to keep the Spurs alive. Looks like the Chicago Bulls want to be next. That is perfectly acceptable for me. Go ahead and check them out on the wheel. They're going to have to take on the Celtics or the Hawks, North or South. And we'll spin the Wheel of Fortune. What direction do Michael Jordan and the Bulls want to go? They want to go Southeast. That looks like the Hawks again. It seems like everybody just wants to play the Hawks. Derrick Rose versus Kemba Walker, Battle of the Smiles. Michael Jordan versus Dominique Wilkins has been a great matchup throughout the annals of history. Scottie Pippen versus LeBron James, comparable talents. Giannis versus Bob Pettit and Art Gilmore versus Will, the still Chamberlain. And I think the Hawks should win this one. The Hawks are starting to come out as the favorites. I, They just, they continue to win all of their games. But at the same time, if you got Michael Jordan, you have a chance. Kemba Walker bringing the ball all the other way. Now LeBron going to run the first play for the offense being picked up by Scottith Pippen. And what is Bron going to do here? Avoids the foul, avoids the block, and floats it up and in. Difficult shot, but Goat James gets it to convert. What does Michael Jordan and the Bulls have in store on the other side? Play is going to be run here for Derrick Rose. He just pulls up and he gets fouled, and I guess we'll be hopping in his simcast. Kind of quicker than I expected, but 2-2 two to two to start this game out. Into the second quarter, the Hawks have a bit of a lead. They are the home team. They are dominating. They're bullying the Bulls, weirdly enough. Okay, 12-point game, 9-point game now. Starting to make a little bit more competitive. We'll see if the Bulls can go on a run. They've lost the first half, and they've won the second half handily. Now we got a close one. Competitive 5-point game, 3-point game. We'll be hopping in with about 2 minutes left. And that, oh my god. What happened? The Hawks just dominated the fourth quarter. Wow, 13-point game, and the Bulls fall. Okay, it was starting to get close, and then it stopped. Seven-point game, and the Bulls ultimately fall to the Atlanta Hawks, 123-133. Dominique was great, 29-1-3. LeBron, 29-7-9. Bob Pettit gave you 22. Kemba gave you 19. Wilt gave you 12. As for the Bulls, Scottie Pippen. Wow, where did Michael Jordan go? 15 shots, 17 points, 1-6 from three. That's frankly embarrassing from the GOAT. Scottie Pippen was the high scorer. Jimmy Butler off the bench gave you 19-19. and Art Gilmore gave you 18-4. Derrick Rose, 17. Reggie Miller was bad. Giannis was bad. Kind of a sad game and a sad end to the Bulls. Quest for imperialism dominance. Okay. Clearly, Michael Jordan has to come over from the Bulls. Greatest player of all time. Greatest player on the Chicago Bulls. And now the greatest player on the Hawks. But now there's another GOAT in LeBron James. There's another GOAT in LeBron James. And wherever you see Will Chamberlain, there's another GOAT 
also. So there's a whole bunch of goats now on this team, not even homegrown talent. Everybody has been brought in. You got Kemba, you got Jordan, you got Wilkins, you got Pettit, you got Chamberlain, you got LeBron, you got LeBron. Fun squad here with the one overall boost to, uh, what was it, Cliff Hagen? Now up to a 96 overall. Sure, enjoy, my friend. And we'll make sure that the Chicago Bulls have been officially eliminated, gone from NBA imperialism, sad end to the reign of Michael Jordan. And because we always do this, there is three states left and there's three teams left. So what we're gonna do is have, we'll do something like this. So Atlanta is gonna take over this state. I believe it is Virginia. Give them the nice little orange. They're gonna get a one overall boost. We will give Boston this, uh, I think it's New Hampshire. It could be Vermont. I don't really know much about the Eastern coast, especially when there's no sports towns. And then what we're gonna do is say that the, the San Antonio Spurs as I'm moving the map, they kind of go around and then they come up here to take over Maine. So that is how they're going to get this final state of Spur Silver. So all the states that are in play have been taken over. Each team going to get a one overall boost for the Hawks. That means Cliff Haken is now a 97 overall. Or the Celtics, that means Bob Cousy is now a 97 overall. And for the Spurs, uh, who's not originally on this team i guess that means manu ginobili is now a 95 overall unfortunately still bald okay we will see who's going to go on the offensive once the chicago bulls gone eliminated and the spinner gets thinner and then there were three and the boston celtics are going to be the next team on the attack and i believe if we look at the map the only possible team they could take on is the Atlanta hawks I guess theoretically they could take on the Spurs of Maine, but <laughs> the, the the chances of that happening are basically slim to none. Yep, south-ish, that is Atlanta, Boston Celtics at the Atlanta Hawks, and then it's going to be Spurs, Hawks, Celtics winner for the championship of NBA imperialism. Celtics at the Hawks, Bob Cousy versus Kemba Walker is a mismatch, but then John Havlicek versus Michael Jordan, Julie Serving versus Dominic Wilkins again, Larry Bird versus Bob Pettit and Bill Russell versus Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain. Again, a lot of repeats in these names and teams, but it's the Celtics, it's the Hawks, it's the second to last game scene. Who's going to take on the Spurs for the NBA Imperialism Championship? Bob Cousy and the Celtics bring the ball up the other way for the first possession of the game. And we got a backdoor screen for Russell. Going to a screen for Larry Bird, who's open for three. And he misses. Okay, good start to this one for the Celtics as Kemba brings the ball up the other way. He's got Dominique Wilkins now going around Dr. J and he just slices, but he blows the layup. Not a good start for either team as Larry Legend kicks it to Kuzi who kicks it to... I thought he was going to go to Dr. J in the corner. Doesn't. Havlicek gets the Bill Russell screen and he's going to try to shoot on Will Chamberlain. Does in fact nail the free throw line jumper 2-0 lead for the Baston Celtics. And if I remember correctly, Boston won last time. So I'm going to be rooting for these Hawks who seem to continue to upgrade and improve their team every single game. Don't know why Kemba Walker is taking long fading threes there. But Bob Cousy is bringing the ball up the other way for these Atlanta Hawks. Weird defensive stance for number nine, Bob Pettit. As Larry Bird has a size mismatch here on Kemba. Goes right through him and he puts it up for a quick 4-0 lead for the away team. Hopping into Simcast, and we got a close one here. Back and forth game in the first quarter. Celtics have a little bit, little bit of a lead, but now the Hawks do going into the third quarter. 11-point lead for the Hawks. Really interesting. The Hawks are completely dominating the Celtics. Wow, it's a 15-point game here. Five minutes left in this one. I think there's not enough time to make a competitive game out of this. 126-104, and that's going to do it. The Hawks, the surprise team of NBA imperialism, not only win, but dominate the Celtics and Kemba. Almost put up a triple-double, 30 points, 28 shots, 9 rebounds, 9 assists, 2 steals, and a block. Will Chamberlain gave you 22, 6, and 4. Michael Jordan gave you 18, 3, and 7. LeBron James gave you 15, 6, and 8. Bob Pettit, 12. Marcus all 10 off the bench. As for the Celtics, don't know what happened. John Avlicek was pretty good, 23, 4, and 7. Larry Bird only 21, 4, and 10. KG gave you 13. Charmin only gave you 11. Bob Cousy only gave you 10, 5, and 8. Julius Irving only gave you 10. And Bill Russell got outplayed officially. By the wilt the stilt chamberlain i wasn't sure who to take the theoretical weak point of this hawk squad is kimba walker but bob Cousy was only a 96 overall so i ended up putting larry bird larry legend 99 overall on the team and there's just so many 99 overalls at this point for the atlanta hawks and then cliff hagan gonna get another overall boost 
now up to 890. Eight overall. And the Atlanta Hawks continuing their dominance. They are taking over all of America. The only team left standing in the way of the Hawks is the aforementioned San Antonio Spurs. Look at Atlanta's disgusting yellow grow. Celtics gone. Eliminated. And we are down to two teams left of NBA imperialism all time. Thank you, Boston, for everything that you have tried to do. But you got eliminated. There are two teams left on the wheel. So the winner of this spin is the team that goes on the offensive effectively the loser is going to be the home team looking to defend america final battle and the atlanta hawks interestingly enough are going to be the attacking team san antonio is the home team it's time the finale of nba imperialism for all time teams you got the hawks at the spurs and let me just say these teams look unrecognizable so lebron james is going to be playing the point guard position against clifford paul i feel like the overalls make sense there Michael Jordan versus George Gervin, Kawhi Leonard versus Larry Bird, Bob Pettit versus Tim Duncan, and Wilt Chamberlain versus David Robinson. The Spurs still look marginally similar to what they were at the beginning of this whole experience. They have David Robinson, they have Tim Duncan, George Gervin, Kawhi Leonard, both homegrown talents, and then Cliff Paul and some of their bench depth like Dirk is, uh, is not part of the original Spurs team, whereas the Hawks are unrecognizable. They have LeBron James, they have LeBron James, they have Michael Jordan, and David Robinson is attacking the glass right now. Gets two offensive rebounds. Misses three shots in a row. Tough start for the San Antonio Spurs and the Hall of Famer. Now you have a size mismatch. LeBron versus Cliff Paul. Going to be a problem as Larry Bird just looks away from the three. And he misses. Zero to zero game. Epic back and forth here for game seven of the NBA Finals. Winner go home. I made the I always make the final game of NBA Imperialism Game 7 of the NBA Finals. I feel like it just adds a little bit of more drama to this whole experience. Kawhi Leonard with the fadeaway on Larry Bird does miss. Still got a 0-0 game almost a minute into this. Larry Bird bringing the ball up the other way. Now Michael Jordan gets his pocket stripped. Okay, Kawhi Leonard pulling up. Tim Duncan in position for the offensive rebound, but Kawhi does make the two. First points of the game is a transition bucket for the claw. And we'll see how Cliff Paul is going to deal with LeBron James playing the point guard position. Size mismatch goes for a steal. Gets a screen and just a perfect roll for Will Chamberlain. LeBron James finds him with the accuracy. LeBron James might be the most gifted passer in the history of basketball. Putting it on display right there. Tim Duncan with the inbound. We got an epic 2-2 two to two game here. We're going to sit by and watch in Simcast a little longer than we do normally just because... It's NBA imperialism. It's the final game, and we have Kawhi Leonard stepping back from the free throw line, and he hits yet again. First four points for the Spurs is all Kawhi Leonard mid-range jumpers. We'll see how Go Jordan is able to respond here. He doesn't really get a lot of play in these imperialism videos. I'm not sure why. He gets subbed out on his own team. He doesn't take over the teams that he plays on. I feel like 2K disrespects Michael Jordan. Speaking of disrespect, Bob Pettit looking silly. Liv Paul going to bring the ball the other way and step back. And try to shoot over LeBron. Does not end well for him. 2-4. to four, Really high scoring contest here. As Jordan is bringing the ball up the other way. Being picked up by George Gervin. What does Jordan have in store? Going to the post for Bob Pettit. Being picked up by Mr. Fundamentals. And LeBron getting the dribble handoff. Stepping up for three. And he misses. But there's Will Chamberlain on the glass. And we got a tie game. 4-2-4. Four, four. Uh, CPU versus CPU games are always troublesome. I've taken it off of Hall of Fame mode. I have it on Pro. I could even put it on a rookie. I just wish that the CPU know how to, knew how to play anything at all. The AI would be better. And here's a rolling Timothy Lee Duncan. Nice dunk for him and great pass from CP3. We'll see if CP3 can... Oh my God, is this broken again? No, okay. Inbound is in to LeBron James. We'll see how CP3 can work. Michael Jordan, not a great three-point shooter at this point. In fact, nobody was a great three-point shooter, but the mid-range is his, and he's going to the free throw line. Draws a foul on David Robinson. That's something to look out for. His foul trouble for the big men. Jordan, free throw, good. And Jordan goes two for two from the free throw line as the Atlanta Hawks tie this game up. I know San Antonio is the home team, but I got to say Atlanta has been surprising throughout this entire video. I think Atlanta might win this whole damn thing. Speaking of, Cliff Paul gets wide open. Gets his shit rejected, and then David Robinson hits a mid-range jumper? Okay. I can be honest, I didn't even know David Robinson could shoot, let alone the fact that he was left-handed. Here's MJ kicking it to LeBron James. And the ball gets stripped. CP3 with the clever, crafty steal. And how are the Spurs going to respond? 
8 to 6 up by 2. George Gervin with the high socks kicks it to a rolling cliff ball, but he doesn't have size. By Leonard click it, kicks it to Gervin. Nothing doing. Tries to put up a shot. Gets that shit rejected pathetically, and there's only 5 seconds left on the shot clock. Big man in the middle. Will Chamberlain won't let you get anything easy. By Leonard. On the inbound, gives it to Paul, who's trying to spin. One second left on the clock. Mr. Fundamentals takes the shot and misses. And we'll probably hop into Simcast by the time the next shot goes in. Larry Legend being picked up by Kawhi. Wow, LeBron just pulls up for three. Walks away like he makes it, but that's the second time in a row the Hawks have looked cocky and missed a three-point shot. Eight to six still. Cliff Paul takes a long two, and he misses. Not good offense being run here as the Hawks come the other way. Jordan has the ball, going to run the offense. Who's his play going to go to? It looks like it's just a clear ISO dribble handoff for Bob Pettit. Uh, don't know what this play is. Nothing's happening. Weird cut for Larry Bird, and he puts it up, and he puts it in, and it's a tie game, 8-8. Eight to eight. We'll be hopping into Simcast here, back and forth game in the first quarter. Hopefully it's good because I love seeing these final epic finishes as we go into the fourth quarter. Got a close one here going into halftime. Spurs have a lead. Hawks have a lead. Spurs have a lead here in the third quarter. Now the Hawks have a lead. And we're into the fourth quarter. We'll hop in with about five minutes left or so. 103.99. Really good. Really high scoring contest as well. And we'll hop in right about now. Four minutes. Four seconds. 111. 112. Manu Gino Beely on the inbound with LeBron picking him up. As goes to Clifford Paul. Looks like Kemba Walker found his way into the game. It's, uh, I thought that was Boogie Cousins. No, that's just another LeBron James. Always funny seeing two LeBrons out here. Dirk takes a shot. Nope, James Harden does, and he misses the three. Tip from LeBron to LeBron. One point deficit for these Atlanta Hawks. We'll see how they're able to win. They're the away team. They got to get clutch. They got to get cooking. And here's LeBron just sprinting around everybody, passing, but he throws it away. James Harden with a defensive play? Was not expecting that. Here's James Harden now. Looking to extend on this lead, being picked up by... Miami Heat LeBron, which is defensive player of the year caliber LeBron. And he gets a screen from Dirk. Pulls up for a long two. Contested hand in his face. And that's another miss. Zeros across the board as the clutch is starting to happen. People's backsides are tightening. That means buttholes for politically correct. Dirk trying to D up LeBron. Does not do a good job. And LeBron takes a one point lead. Dirk Nowitzki is a defensive liability. So is James Harden. So is Cliff Paul. So the defense out here is not very good for the Spurs. James Harden trying to take on, I think that's Bob Pettit. Nope, that's Cliff Hagen, and he just gets stripped again. In the transition, LeBron trying to shoot, trying to score on Manu. Finds an open corner. Kemba doesn't take the three, though. Cliff Hagen being picked up by the beard. LeBron being picked up by Manu. And it looks like LeBron's going to get a nice, easy shot up, and the Spurs should probably call a timeout. Three-point lead now for the Hawks, as Manu is just not strong enough, just not big enough to stay in front of Goat James. Cliff Paul rocking the ball the other way, and there's the timeout. Inbound and three-point deficit. The Spurs have not scored a single point ever since we hopped into this one. Kawhi Leonard's going to be open, takes a jump hook, and there's the first points back to a one-point game. Uh, Manu calling for a foul, calling for an and one, as Kawhi Leonard seems to be the only one who's scoring at this point. Once again, has three points out of the mid-range, which is physically impossible. I think that statistic means he's made three mid-range shots. Regardless, whoever drew up that graphic is dumb. Hawks have a one-point lead. Hawks have the inbound. Two minutes, 15 seconds left in this one. Going to come down to the wire. Going to come down to a buzzer beater. I wonder who's going to get it as Bob Pettit throws the alley-oop. LeBron James hangs on the hoop. Whoo! Kawhi just not quick enough to play defense there. And it's back up to a three-point lead for the Atlanta Hawks. The upstart Hawks. This Hawks team has chemistry. I don't know what it is, but everything's clicking for them. Kawhi Leonard once again in the paint, being picked up by Wilt Chamberlain. Probably don't want to take a shot here. He's going to go at it. Nope, he doesn't. Dirk kind of open for three. Not really. Passes it up now. Kawhi Leonard's being picked up. And he's just kicking it to Cliff Paul for three in the corner. And that's a miss. That would have tied the game up. Spurs could have used that. Jordan bring the ball up the other way. Now LeBron James is bringing the ball up the other way. Got a huge size mismatch here. Going to Wilt Chamberlain out of the post, being deed up by 99 overall, David Robinson. And David's looking silly. What are you doing on defense? But Wilt, afraid to put up a shot. And we have an offensive three seconds. Wilt had three opportunities there to put in a basket, but the AI just said, I'm going to be goofy. Don't know what happened there to Wilt Chamberlain. He just went brain dead. Tragic Johnson, more like tragic Chamberlain. And the Spurs, once again, door is left wide open for them to respond. How are they going to answer 
as David Robinson is here in the post. Pump faking, pump faking. He's going to get a three seconds in the key here. Dirk takes a contested three, and he splashes. Tie game from Dirk. Wow, hand in his face. You can't get more contested than that. Honestly, that could have been a foul. But Dirk Nowitzki, once again, is coming up huge. We'll see how the Hawks can respond. And LeBron throws it away mindlessly, brainlessly, stupidly. Flip ball going to run the offense for the Spurs. And who's going to get this ball? Wow, Cliff just takes it himself. I don't know what he was thinking there. He got a little bit selfish, and now he's going to have to try to deal with LeBron James in the transition, and he just fouls LeBron. But LeBron has been struggling from the free throw line. We'll see how Cleveland Braun can be clutch here. First one is up, and he chokes again. LeBron cannot hit a free throw to save his life in the fourth quarter. 47 seconds left. Just one free throw to take the lead. We have a tie game. Next one does go in. 46 seconds left. One point game. How are the Spurs going to find some offense here? Kawhi Leonard and Dirk Nowitzki have been traditionally worked for them. Going to David Robinson in the post. Probably not what I would have drawn up. Trying to score on Will Chamberlain. He's stymied. He's stuffed. He gets his shit rejected. And LeBron takes the ball the other way. Nine point shot differential here. Jordan pulls up for the dagger. And he missed. Oh, the door is so wide open for these Spurs. But can they find some offense? Go to Dirk in the post. Don't go to Cliff Paul. Cliff dribbling. Selfish. Trying to find his own shot. Kicks it to David Robinson at the three-point line. Not good offense. Kawhi Leonard now. Going to grab a screen. Has Jordan on him. Kicks it to a rolling Rodman. Robinson. And he makes it the go-ahead bucket for David Rod Robinson. I don't know why he keeps trying to say Rodman. The Admiral takes the lead for the Spurs. And it is a 119-118 game. Six seconds left. What do the Hawks have drawn up? Is there a Jimmy Butler play here? Six, five, four. Jordan for the win. Goes and he throws it down. Ooh. Talk about impact. Jordan, quiet the entire fourth quarter. Quiet the entire video. Just makes the most impressive, impactful bucket of the video. And he doesn't even shoot it. He yams it over three San Antonio Spurs. There's only one second left. Who's the shot going to go to? Gervin for the win, in and out. Oh, the Atlanta Hawks are champions and victors. Michael Jordan comes up clutch to win it all as the Spurs fall an in and out three pointer away from winning themselves. Dirk Nowitzki is in disbelief and the entire Spurs nation says what happened. The Atlanta Hawks are your NBA imperialism champions. That was a hugely clutch fourth quarter there. I can't believe how good that game was. And look at the Hawks cheer. Larry Bird, Marcus Gasol, Dominique Wilkins, LeBron James, LeBron James. Kemba Walker is cheering. And Michael Jordan. It's, it's of course fitting that the final bucket is a Michael Jordan dunk all over the San Antonio Spurs for the victory. So uh, I just want to point out that the trophy celebration is totally broken because there's no other fitting way to show how great 2K23 is of a game than finishing off like this. But these are the fans that were watching. If you wanted to watch the actual championship celebration, uh, you're shit out of luck. But the Atlanta Hawks do win NBA imperialism. Look at all these fans in disbelief. Look at some of the fans wearing Hawks jerseys. LeBron James hit a few clutch baskets and have missed a few clutch free throws. Jordan dunks it. It looks like it was over David Robinson and over George Gervin. And that is probably the most famous dunk in the history of the NBA. And just to put a little icing on the cake, we will make sure that Atlanta gets their share of the map, takes over all the territory that was claimed by the once San Antonio Spurs silver. Bam, something like that. And the San Antonio Spurs, the last team, Eliminated. The Atlanta Hawks are your NBA imperialism champions. That is going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching this long venture, and I will catch you in the next one.